my lovely, lovely imps. Today, we are going to be watching a debate about Christian nationalism. And before we watch that debate, I wanted to talk a little bit about Christian nationalism. Uh, it's a topic that I've talked about a lot on my channel, and it's one that I'm going to talk about a lot in the future. It's a movement that many people would be able to identify if I described it to them, but they don't know the term Christian nationalism. There's another term that this movement goes by, which is called Christian Dominionism. And it is slightly distinct from Christian Fundamentalism, but most fundamentalists are also Dominionists and or Nationalists. Christian Nationalism is a rising movement in the United States especially. Uh, it's not new, but it's had a resurgence as of late. And the basic idea behind Christian nationalism is the idea that America is a Christian nation, that it was uh, founded on Christian principles. And even if it wasn't founded on Christian principles, because that is a more complicated thing than, than anybody likes to admit, um, then it should be. It should be run on Christian principles. Christian nationalism claims that we should build our laws and our morality off of the Christian faith as they interpret it, and that's very key, as they interpret it. And uh, it is a highly, highly conservative movement. And I mean that, you know, that, that like in the traditional meaning of conservatism, it is a, uh, a, a movement that is resistant to uh, highly resistant to progress, political progress and change to social change. It wants to preserve an order that they believe existed. Now, of course, there's a whole lot of issues, even fundamentally in the conceptualization of that type of conservatism. But we're not going to talk about that quite yet. Christian nationalism has had a massive upsurge in recent years. And uh, a lot of it coincides with the rise of the MAGA movement, the, you know, the Donald Trump uh, 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 surge, which is very strange because, you know, Donald Trump is not a very religious guy. Um, and a lot of his followers seem to kind of like uh, the fact that he's not really a religious guy, that he's kind of a dirty, you know, uh, dirty, perverted, uh, you know, dirtbag kind of guy. Um, and yet, the MAGA movement is absolutely full of Christian nationalists. And a lot of Trump's biggest cheerleaders are Christian nationalists. And they seem to just kind of look the other way, um, you know, when, when people point out the fact that, like, hey, Donald Trump doesn't really seem to share a lot of your religious values. Why are you so gung-ho? And, of course, the answer is that um, they don't actually really care that much about an individual candidate following their beliefs or being a genuine Christian or anything like that because they're fixated on the nationalism part. The, they want to make sure that they can get control of the nation to therefore, to from that position, hopefully in their minds, impose their views on everybody else. Um, oh yeah, uh, some Killjoy is bringing up seven the Seven Mountains mandate, which is one form of Christian nationalism. Um, the Seven Mountains mandate is is basically a outright manifesto for Christian authoritarian control of America. There are many brands of Christian nationalism, but it is increasingly popular um, among Christians in the United States. And Christian nationalism. Uh, is is a in my opinion a a a pretty uh a, a pretty terrible movement, and I don't even mean that just that like I disagree with it. I do vehemently disagree with basically everything that Christian nationalists put forward as their core principles. Uh, uh vehemently, but um I think it's a bad movement in that uh it 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 lies about what it actually is. Um, it is misleading. 
and it does not serve the interests of any of the people that it is advertising itself to with a very very uh, a, a, a very very thin um exception to that rule which is of course the leaders of the movement are going to be ben are going to be benefiting quite a bit christian nationalism uh like i mentioned before is uh in my opinion a nationalist idolatry it ta it preys upon the genuinely held beliefs of christians to convince them uh to essentially worship a totalitarian state that promises to uh to deliver their vision for the world but of course it never can uh uh do so because it isn't it isn't living up to anything that anybody would recognize as christianity it is raw power it is a incredibly greedy movement uh they are uh, the christian nationalist movement is obsessed with money it is a it is obsessed with power consolidation it is obsessed with wealth um all of these things are in direct conflict uh with christian values of basically any interpretation of christianity um and of course on top of that it is a very hateful movement uh, a lot of Christian nationalism is fundamentally built off of uh, off of spreading a narrative that um, that that Christians have been aggrieved, that the world has been stolen from Christians who deserve to have control. Um, and you'll notice if you listen to Christian nationalists a lot that they invoke God a lot but always as a, uh, a sort of justification for their actions. Um, they don't trust God at all. No, they are the weapons and the vehicles of God. And it just so happened that God needs to put them personally in power in order to have his vision of the world, in order to have kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven on earth, needs to be done by, you know, empowering the Christian nationalist leader, the strong man, the father of the house. Apparently God isn't good enough to do it on his own. Um, it's a very aggressive and very hateful move. And of course, um, part of it's uh, like many nationalist movements, a lot of it's, uh, uh, a lot of its foundations are built off of needing an, a, a perpetual, uh, sense of fear a perpetual sense of an enemy that needs to be defeated that hatred needs to be there for people to feel strong enough that they need to get involved with this cause to take over the nation for god and um the christian nationalist movement um as it stands right now uh is 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 an enemy of liberty they are truly, and I'm, and I mean, they don't even, they don't even pretend most of the time. If they're called on the spot in public, they'll always be like, "I believe in freedom," but if you actually look at their beliefs, you'll find very quickly that uh, they are obsessed with speech, uh, with 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 restricting speech. They believe that you shouldn't be able to say bad things about God. They believe that you shouldn't be able to critique certain forms of religion. They believe that, um, you know, that gay people shouldn't have the right to express themselves. They believe that uh, women shouldn't be able to wear men's clothes and men shouldn't be able to wear women's clothes. Like there's some kind of like God given uh, 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 determination of whether a pair of jeans is for a man or for a woman. They're extremely restrictive on free speech and expression. Um, they, they don't believe uh, in allowing other people to practice other religions. They're hyper-evangelical. Uh, they often believe in conversion by, if not explicit force, implicit force. That uh, if you if you practice another religion, you essentially shouldn't be allowed to be in this country. That this country is for Christians only. And if you do believe in another religion, then you need to practice Christianity while you live here. Uh, they they have no they have they they if you actually listen to their beliefs, they don't give a shit about freedom. They don't give a shit about liberty. They are the enemies of liberation. Um, it, it's it's incredible. Uh, Christian nationalism is is such a deranged movement. And I want to make something very clear, which is that it is not just dangerous to 
everyone else out there, uh, you know, who isn't a Christian or who isn't, you know, uh, super Christian, they're dangerous to other Christians as well. Uh, Christian nationalists, you never, never, <laughs> if you ever happen to run into a Christian nationalist, uh, especially a Protestant Christian nationalist, never ask them their opinions on, uh, on Catholics. Never ask them their opinions on the sect of the church down the street, because what you hear will be something like this. That's basically what you're going to get back if you ask them uh, their opinion on any other type of Christian. Uh, it's actually wild. And you might be asking, well, Demon Mama, how do you know this? Well, my fans will know this, but people who are new to me might not. I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian cult that has very, very much gotten on board with the Christian nationalist movement. Uh, so I'm very familiar with what they say with, uh, in their own churches. I'm very familiar with what they teach. Uh, and I'm very familiar with the way that the fundamentalist movement has rolled into the nationalist movement. It's, uh, yeah, it's not good. Christian nationalism is, uh, they're not going to just, they're not going to be happy just going after gay people and just going after immigrants. That's bad enough as it is and should motivate you to think twice uh, about whether or not Christian nationalism is a, is a threat in this country. But the reality is that they are not okay coexisting with Christians who disagree with them. If you are a Christian who isn't 100% on board with Donald Trump, for example, who is their representative, their, he is, Donald Trump is, is their vehicle in their minds. They believe that Donald Trump is the guy who's essentially going to set T things up for them to turn this into a Christian nation. If you don't agree with him, you're out. You're an enemy. They will they will do whatever they can to restrict you, to punish you, to harm you, to take away your rights, to restrict your your speech, to uh, make your beliefs illegal. And they've done it before. Again, Christian nationalism isn't a new concept. It's existed at multiple times in the past, and it always brings with it atrocities. Christian nationalism is a hyper, hyper puritanistic uh, viewpoint. They, they, it, it needs to continually, uh, 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 you know, police its membership. And you'll notice, like I said, the leaders always get to get away with all kinds of garbage because they're on top. But for everybody else, they're going to push you around. They're going to do whatever they can to ruin your life if you don't fall in line. Almost like it's Christian laundered fascism. You know, a lot of them will openly accept that. A lot of them are totally fine with that. Christian nationalism is a, a topic that I've been trying to bring to people's attention for a long time. And it's difficult because a lot of people don't see it. They, Like I said, you recognize it when I describe the shape of it. But people don't know it by name. And they don't always catch when when political actors are supporting that worldview because they don't recognize uh they don't recognize it out of its normal element um you know people can easily recognize christian nationalism when i turn on a sermon and there's a guy standing up at a pulpit going the 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 these this this rainbow pride bullshit is bringing down Western civilization before our very eyes. People will go, oh yeah, okay, I can see that. But they don't recognize it when those same people get a, uh, a politician or a judge into a position of power who then, you know, rolls back trans rights or, you know, finds a way to restrict abortion or you know, passes a law that, that makes it uh, uh, punishable by law to wear clothes of the opposite gender, whether or not that's actually legally enforceable or not. They don't always recognize it in that form. And I want people to be able to recognize that. And I want us to become equipped to be able to fight back against this worldview because it is dangerous for so, so many things. 
uh, to, to so many things. It is dangerous to so many things. It is... Uh, Christian nationalism is... Christianity is in a weird place in America on a, uh, on a large level. Um, because, of course, we are at a point in history where less people are religious than ever before. We have had a massive surge in people who have abandoned religious belief or at the very least are not comfortable, you know, pledging themselves to a specific religion. And I think that's a good thing. I mean that. I think it's a good thing that we live in a period of time where people feel free enough to explore beliefs, to think about the world and to come to their own conclusions instead of simply inheriting the beliefs of their parents. Uh, I think that's a better world to live in. Um, and, uh, uh, but at the same time, the Christians that do exist, um, some of them have become threatened by a world that isn't as ubiquitously uh, identifiable to their worldview and have essentially uh, found themselves in a position of believing that they need to change that, that they need to rewind back time. They need to find a way to basically force the world to match their worldview. And again, one of the things that's so strange about Christian nationalism uh, is is uh, how little they actually seem to spend, like how little time they actually seem to spend thinking about the teachings of their own religion um, and how their leaders uh, fixate on a handful of uh, moral issues that they can police others on while completely flaunting the core teachings of their supposed savior. That, you know, Christianity is named after Christ and Jesus Christ was not a nationalist. Jesus Christ was not a, uh, you know, a general. He wasn't a warrior savior, Messiah. Um, yeah, some people will say, you know, I, you know, will cite Jesus saying, you know, I come, I, I come, you know, to bring a sword. But what he meant by that was that he was going to divide people in that some people were not going to accept his teaching, you know, um, <laughs> It, they didn't he didn't mean that he was coming as a uh, as a conqueror you know it's uh you know Jesus taught people to uh, uh to have like aggressive pacifistic approach to basically be so willing to prove your confidence and faith in God that you would allow other people to strike you that you would be willing to be a martyr to prove your faith in God to other people. That was what he taught. He taught poverty. He told people explicitly, go sell your house, sell everything that you own to prove to the world that you believe in God, there are poor people who need to be fed, and that you are willing to prove with your own actions uh, that God will take care of you, that God will put food into your mouth, and that you should do your part to make sure that other people are fed. And yet now we have, we listen to um, Christian nationalist speakers here in America and you have them literal generals, like former military generals talking about how we need to build up a plan to have Christian militias. That's like the state of the movement. It's just flagrantly in opposition to the, the core teachings of their book. And, uh, What I'm trying to say with this part is that uh, even Christians should be very suspect of this movement and should be ready to defend themselves against it because it is a movement that aims to uh, take advantage of their genuine belief. It is a movement that aims to manipulate uh, various people who have fairly genuinely held beliefs into becoming pawns in someone else's power play often or i should say i shouldn't even say often right now the power play being donald trump that's who they that's who wants to use it and there are other there are other aspiring leaders but no one has taken over ron DeSantis loves appealing to christian nationalists he loves appealing to um radical hyper christian fundamentalists but he hasn't taken over he hasn't been able to 
the the strong man who is at the seat of the 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 of power in this movement is Donald Trump. And I don't know. To me, that sounds like a form of idolatry. That sounds like genuine Christians should be opposed to this. It sounds like a movement that wa that doesn't trust God at all, that wants to uh, uh, essentially make the church the world, uh, entirely transform the church into an institution of man-made governance. And of course, for all of us out there who are not Christians, a, a movement that, it, that insists that an entire landmass the size of America must be under Christian rule is a horrible nightmare. Um, no, no one should be forced to follow your religious teaching. And we should be ready and able to resist such a takeover. I don't want to live in a world where uh, Donald Trump's loyal followers get to decide what, uh, uh, what clothes I can wear, uh, what type of sex I can have, what type of partners I can fall in love with. I don't think that that is a good state to be in. I think it will result in violence. I think that it will result in a disgusting level of, uh, of, uh, of social repression. I think it will result in a world that most people will find sickening. And we should be real ready and willing to oppose it. So today we're going to be listening to a debate about Christian nationalism. And we're going to get to hear some of the arguments directly from the mouth of a, of a, so, a self-admitted Christian nationalist. But I wanted to make sure I gave my opinion of Christian nationalism before we jumped into the debate. Because, uh, like I said, I think a lot of people don't really know exactly what it is that we're dealing with. Um... Yeah. Anyway, let's get into the debate, shall we? The debate that we are going to be watching is a debate between President Sunday, who many of you are familiar with. Some of you may be members of President Sunday's community. Hello to the, to the squids. And a guy whose name is now Andrew from the Crucible. Andrew from the Crucible was formerly known as Big Papa Fascist. But as you can probably imagine, the Big Papa Fascist name was, uh, was uh, not exactly getting him a lot of clicks and was having a lot of people ask him questions um, that were answered by his name. And he, per, you know, presumably that name was not, was not flying so well or getting him invites to places. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're going to be listening to the Christian nationalist formerly known as Big Papa Fascist today. Um, and that will be a very interesting ride. He did do a rebrand. Yes, he did do a rebrand. Um, the Crucible, which, lo which logo is a hanging tree? The Crucible? Yes, that Crucible. Uh, the Christian nationalist, his current show, is, uh, his current show uh, icon is a lynching tree. Not even joking with so yeah that's the that's that's the one that's the one um and and yeah uh, i mean let's just get into it let's get into it i've made my i've said my piece on why christian nationalism should be uh opposed by both christians and non-christians and as this debate goes on i'm gonna have a lot more to say so before we jump directly into the debate if you enjoyed the little opening, and if you're interested for more, please make sure that you press subscribe. I talk about atheism, Christianity, queer issues, video games, media, all that kind of stuff on my channel. So if any of those things sound interesting to you, I would love to have you as one of my imps. So press subscribe down below, and don't forget to press like. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's go. Oh yeah. Oh look, he simplified it. It's just it's just a noose now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Crucible. I'm your host, Zen Shapiro. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Very excited. We've got another great debate lined up for you. President Sunday making his Crucible debate debut to take on Andrew Wilson. 
on the topic of Christian populism. So uh, should be a lot of fun. Should be a high octane debate. Hope you're all excited. Same. I know we're running a little late, so we'll make the intro quick. We'll do the shilling quick, the shameless shilling, but we got to do it one way or another. Make sure to do all the YouTube shit, like, share, subscribe, uh, send in those super chats either on you. Okay, this is a really small thing. Hold on, let me see. He's got some inconsistent branding going on. So his intro icon shows the crucible with the noose, but his crucible here has two two sledgehammers. Kind of weird. Either on YouTube or the dono chat, uh, which is pinned in the top of the live chat. Uh, and so we appreciate your support very much. Send in those super chats. We'll get to all of your questions uh, and all, all that good shit. Um, best way to support us, become a channel member, uh, gift those channel memberships. Um, so we appreciate it very much. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be right back with both of our debaters. <laughs> oh my god. What a cut! <laughs> ah! And we're back. We've got President Sunday on the right, Andrew Wilson on the left. Thank you guys for being here. Before we get into it, President Sunday, take a second, shot yourself. <laughs> Big Papa fascist already, already slamming down a Miller High Life fucking 40. Ah, uh, yes. God's, God's warrior on earth. Fucking pounding a 40. So much for that Christian sobriety out tell everybody where they can find you uh thank you very much you can find me on uh, president sunday spelled exactly how it sounds on youtube and uh twitter but who the hell cares about twitter all right and andrew wilson shout yourself out tell everybody where they can find you yeah my name is andrew wilson i'm the host of the one and only crucible i debate a bit on the channel and also host a ton of other content as well and we host debates i appreciate president sunday being here for this debate and I appreciate Zen Shapiro and the audience for showing up for it. All right. And reminder, the topic tonight is Christian populism. Uh, Andrew Wilson defending the affirmative. President Sunday defending the negative. Before we get into it, one last reminder. Please oh, is that the new term they're using now? Christian populism? That's a weird one. Damn, that's a really, that's a really weird one to use. That's a weird pivot. They they do this all the time. Like I said, Christian, it was it used to be called, uh, oh, God, what do they call it? Oh, my God. I mean, obviously, fundamentalism was a popular one for a while. That's kind of rolled into nationalism. They called it dominionism for a while. They have a whole bunch of different names for their movement. Now they're trying to do Christian populism, but that doesn't really land very well because the reality is um, Christians aren't the majority. Christians who want a Christian nation aren't the popular majority, not even close. So it's even worse. It's even less accurate than any other terms that they use. That shit ain't popular at all. Oh, whatever. Let's continue. Hit the like, share, subscribe button. Send in those super chats. I know we got a few already. I'll be showing them on screen or on screen as we go through and we'll actually read and address all of them at the end of the debate. And if you want to call in and ask a question directly, get the stream link from the mods in the discord. You can call in, ask your question directly to either debater. Make sure to get in there quick because sometimes the queue fills up and we just run out of time. So um, that being said, we're going to get right into it. We did. Al Alzaz gives some valuable information. Uh, Alzaz says they explicitly said they did, didn't say nationalism for monetization reasons to Sunday before the stream. Huh. Monetization, huh? Is, 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 is that like a not liked term on YouTube? We're still monetized. Maybe, maybe, maybe it gets deboosted in the algorithm. Maybe I should change the title. Here, I'll change it. Christian debate review. There we go. We'll see. Maybe we'll see if that does better in the algorithm. Let's continue. Uh, brief backstage, and we agreed that Andrew will be going first. Both of you will get seven minutes for your opening statement. If uh, Andrew, if Andrew wants to take his time, I'm actually going to wave. Um, I'm I'm keen to get into the back and forth. 
Okay. Um, well, Andrew, whenever you're ready, uh, you got seven minutes on the clock for your opener. Well, um, here's to hoping that this is a good contentious debate. Can you guys still hear me okay? It's crystal yep, you're clear good. compared to Perfect. before. Perfect, okay. I uh, made sure to write this in such a way that there's plenty of meat on the bone for President Sunday to come after because I also am eager to get into it. So let me just start off with, uh, with the opener here. Humanity is a culmination of tribes. The most basic being, of course, the family and then outwardly the village to the state and then to the nation. The culmination of stupid left-wing thinkers have tried their best to convince the world that this isn't true. We aren't tribal. In fact, that we are all interchangeable widgets. That with simply material changes, uh, we will end with the same results everywhere on planet Earth between tribes. So they have tried their damnedest to eliminate nations and eliminate family units and eliminate all traditional ways of living altogether. An interesting result has happened from this leftist experiment that they likely couldn't predict because, of course, they are so smart and educated that they were able to educate themselves right out of seeing reality. A bold play. Uh, a, bo a bold start. Uh, this is, this is a, oh, look, he still uses the big papa fascist um, shorthand sometimes. Interesting. It's such a weird start. That's it, like like being like, oh, leftists are dumb and postmodernist and don't even like families is like a weird start because this is about this debate's about Christian nationalism. It's not about it's not even about leftists. It, it's kind of weird. But OK, I guess it just kind of it kind of gives away the uh, brain worms that are squiggling around in there. Right. The world is currently just as tribal as it's ever been. It's going to keep being tribal, and leftists are going to keep failing in their path to utopia because they're unable to adjust to this truth. The truth is that absent religion, secularists, and progressive leftists don't have anything to offer you except materialism. Ultimately, this leads to a death sentence for their cult. They got nothing to offer except materialism. <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry, but materialism as a as a philosophical principle has been it's it's been you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie it's been doing a pretty damn good job it's put up a good fight I don't know uh, being able to offer material analysis being able to offer mat a materialist worldview has been uh, I don't know it seems to have been pretty popular in fact it seems to be what you're struggling against right now so it's kind of strange to be like that's all they have to offer when materialism. I mean, of course, I think what um, when Big Papa Fascist says materialism, I think he means like, I'm a material girl in a material world. You know, he, I think he means that kind of thing. I think that's what he's thinking of. I don't think he's actually like engaging with uh, the, the philosophical, you know, school of thought that is referred to as materialism. I, I, I don't think he's really engaging with that because, of course, like. There is nothing, um, there's nothing, like, there are, there are high, there are people who would otherwise agree with his tribal world analysis who consider themselves materialists. It's, it's a very weird, it's a very weird approach. Cultures, which seem to barely ever be able to get off the ground before they completely eradicate themselves. We see this with communism and the destruction of the church. We see it in Western nations embracing secular policies, being unable to reproduce themselves, and having to rely on immigrants from mostly theist nations, and we see it now right here in the United States. Christianity isn't cherished by the left, but instead it's ridiculed for the universalism which God demands of his ethical codes to humanity. Well, as you can imagine, this creates even more tribalism left in response to this tends to pervert in order to reduce the numbers of the opposing tribe they take christianity and christian churches and they move an enlightenment egalitarian message into them using leftist outreach programs this has done a pretty good job of destroying protestantism in the united states but it's had an unintended consequence which is that protestants were the more easygoing of the christian sects 
And as you can see, as their numbers diminish over time, the core church's power is growing. Catholicism, orthodoxy, growing worldwide. And they're going to continue to do so. As Protestant churches succumb to a leftist perverse message. Is that true? I don't think that's true, man. The people move to an even more. I don't think, I don't think orthodoxy is, is, a. Uh, I don't think the, is the orthodox? Let's find out. Eastern Orthodoxy gate. Well, I don't know. Maybe it has been. Mm, uh oh, I don't know. I don't know. Hold on a second. I don't know, man. I don't see it. I I wonder if he's citing this this um this Wall Street Journal article. There's a Wall Street Journal article that says there has been gains new followers in america but that doesn't actually mean that the church is growing because just gaining new followers doesn't necessarily mean that you're growing because you might be losing old followers either from old people dying off and their kids not following or from people leaving the church entirely so i don't know man i can't find anything that says that orthodoxy is growing that would surprise me I mean, maybe if you go on like a long enough timeline simply because the world population has increased, but I but I I can't imagine that as a percentage of the world that orthodoxy is growing. Like obviously the um the population of the world is huge now. Also, what I, I, is he not a, is he like a tradcath or is he an orthodox? What is his position? It's weird. Anyway, let's continue. I don't want to get hung up on random stupid claims. He's going to make 100,000 unverified claims, I'm sure. Of what the left might consider a radical Christian message and institution. They haven't stopped tribalism with secular thought, just exactly. He's Eastern Orthodox? Really? Is he actually Eastern Orthodox? He's Orthodox, but not really. Is he a convert? Surveyed it, ultimately. Every philosopher who has ever tried to replace theism with anything other than theism has come up short. This is because ethical universals require justification. The left can't give those to you, at least not in a way that doesn't require years of indoctrination and training to understand, and even then they tend to fall apart at the slightest scrutiny. The goal of Christian nationalism or Christian populism or Christian futurism, these are all essentially the same, I Killjoy says, I think he's a, a Vatican II tradcath who converted to Eastern Orthodox. Holy shit! That is a hell... If that's true, I don't know how we would verify this, and I don't really care, but if so, that is the funniest conversion to make. That is so fucking funny to me. When you... When you... <laughs> Being a Vatican II, being a Vatican II to Eastern Orthodox conversion is like doing an Elden Ring run where you're like, where you, you're, you're playing all the way through a pure faith build using like, using like a golden order fundamentalism. But then at the very tail end of the game, you realize you need the achievement for the frenzied flame. And so you jump down to the bottom of the map and you get the burn from the three fingers right at the tail end just before you sit on the throne. Like, <laughs> like straight up, it is. It's like I see the will of the two fingers. Actually, the three fingers. I need that achievement. <laughs> oh my god! Is to take the largest global tribe in existence, which is Christians, and tell them that it's okay to have power, that their morality is actually superior to sex. Somniostatic says, wasn't Doe reading his wife's book? Um, yeah, uh, my partner got a copy of, uh, because of this debate, my partner, uh, was reading, um, some of his wife's book, and I'm, look, I don't want, I don't know his wife, I don't want to rag on his wife a whole bunch, I think he plugs the book at some point during this debate, but, um, the book is really funny, okay? It's super, super funny. It is a book about how, um, feminism is actually like a secret occult religion uh and it is uh i i listen look i think 
maybe we'll talk about that more. It made me laugh, okay? It made me laugh a lot. I'll just say that, okay? We'll get there. We'll get there. morality and that people actually thrive better and do better under rulers who have ethical standards. Also, since we have the biggest tribe, frankly, who gives a shit what the other tribes who aren't as big as us think about that? Symphonia is what this is called. The church and state working in tandem for the good of the people they rule. You see, the progressive left currently... Uh, dude, I hate to tell you this, but uh, Christianity might have the, the largest technical number of adherents. But uh, first of all, Islam's catching up real quick. I mean, real fast. Islam's like right on the tail of Christianity. And... Uh, Christians don't exactly, uh, Christians sort of notoriously have a gigantic split, um, a, a huge schism, okay? And they don't exactly see eye to eye on basically anything at all. So you, you don't actually have the biggest one. And um, I actually, even if you consider the schism within Christianity between just the Catholics and the Protestants alone, not to mention all the other schisms, I wonder if either side of Christianity even has enough to match the other world religions. I wonder, I wonder, we could probably get hard numbers on how many Catholics are, are there are worldwide. So I, I think he should, he should probably be a little careful about that. Um, he should probably be just a, a, a tiny bit careful about claiming that you got the biggest tribe. Uh, especially when, you know, half of the world, uh, uh, half of the Christians in the world would, uh, kick your ass for smoking and drinking, uh, while claiming to be orthodox, you know. Okay, so let's see. According to the Pontifical Yearbook of 2023, 1.37, uh, total baptized Catholics in 2021. Now, of course, Catholics baptize when you're a baby. So that means that the number is w significantly smaller when we consider um, uh, 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 practicing Catholics, which means, my man, I don't know, dude. I don't know if your tribe is going to win the number count. It's getting, it's getting real iffy. And if we want to talk about Eastern Orthodox, hold on, let's see. worldwide. Ooh, there's not many in America. Ooh, listen to this. Oh my man, in North America, estimates of the number of Eastern Orthodox is 3 to 6 million maximum. Those are like that's like the that's like if you if you max the numbers out, you get somewhere in the ballpark of 3 to 6 million. Ooh, boy, you're getting mega outnumbered, dude. Your tribe is not even coming close. Now, somebody said they thought he might be Anglican, which would be even fucking weirder. Can anybody confirm what religion uh, for sure, which, which, uh, which flavor of Christianity uh, Big Papa Fascist subscribes to? I would love, let's see, let's find out just to be sure. Let's be, let's be safe. He has Catholic vibes. He talks about Eastern Orthodox. Okay, so he's Eastern Orthodox. Okay, good. So I was going to say, if he's Anglican, there's only 127,000 Anglicans in America. Dude, your goose is cooked. That's... <laughs> oh, man. Oh. We have the numbers, man. Oh, all right. All right. We got to get back to this. We got to get back to this. This is funny. Has a false sense of security. This is due to their ideology being materialistic and ultimately short-sighted because of their materialism. They think that because they have control in the smallest and least populated centers of the world, that they are themselves demigods. Yet they have a population problem and they are going to continue to import their undoing from theist nations that ultimately are much more lenient towards church authority. Christian huh? futurism, nationalism, is about... I'm sorry, can we hear that again real quick, huh? Sorry. Any gods. Yet they have a popular their materialism. They think that because they have control in the smallest and least populated centers of the world, that they are themselves demigods. 
yet they have a population problem and they are going to continue to import their undoing from theist nations that ultimately are much more lenient towards church authority. That's a weird thing to say because um, because um, most most immigrants who come to the U.S., even theistic immigrants, um, tend to have a more liberal worldview. And also, um, most of the immigrants that are coming to the U.S. Um, are certainly not on board for a fucking ether Eastern Orthodox ethnostate a religio state, theocracy, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's kind of a weird thing to say. Does, is anybody getting some like serious, uh, like fantasy fiction vibes coming off of um, Big Papa fascist here? Because um, I'm definitely getting those vibes. Uh, it definitely, it kind of sounds to me like he's talking about his D and D campaign. Uh, basically nothing that he's said so far seems to have any grounding whatsoever in reality. Like, this is something we run into with, like, extremely far-right individuals where they, like, they've tunneled themselves into a bubble that's so deep um, that they don't even know, like, what's going on outside their own house anymore. But this is particularly bad. Like, he's not even, um, he's not even just kind of making, like, the... The, oh, the immigrants are getting rid of our American values. He's trying to say that, like, atheist, materialist communists or postmodernist materialists who control the least dense population centers in the world are importing Christian nationalists from abroad. Where And I'm just like, so are you pro-immigration now, then? I just, wow, just wow. Christian futurism, nationalism, is about this. It's about us taking advantage over a few generations. Somewhat damaged says, Demon Mama, he debated Vosh a couple of months ago, and Vosh asked him why he now switched from Catholic to Eastern Orthodox and to explain the difference between the two, and he couldn't name a single thing. <laughs> Convert moment. Convert moment! ...to position ourselves to take power away from the left and put it back in the hand of the Christian. Alright, is that your... Open <laughs> power move! President Sunday opening a chocolate bar into the microphone at the end of Big Papa Fascist statement is a power move. Okay, I'm sorry, that was really fucking funny. It's like statement. I hope. All right. Thank you for that opening statement, Andrew. And Sunday, given what Andrew said, do you still want to waive your opening statement, or do you want to exercise it? I do indeed. I I suppose there's a a number of points that I want I want to interrogate here. Um, well, do you hang on? Do you want to do you want an opening statement, or do you want to go straight to the back and forth? If it's all right, straight to the back and forth. All right, then, gentlemen, the floor is open. Uh, before we get into it. I want to remind you guys one last time, send in those super chats. I'll show them on screen as we go, and we'll actually read and address all of them at the end. And if you want to call in, ask a question directly to either debater, get the stream link from the mods in the Discord, and you can call in and ask a question directly. Uh, that being said, gentlemen, the floor is open. We're going to do roughly an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, I don't, uh, uh, not an Android says, I don't think he should have waived his opening statement. There's like, what, what type of, I, I, I honestly, I don't disagree with his tactic here. I don't know what type of an opening statement you could make in response to that uh, other than basically just denouncing Christian nationalism broadly. But I think that uh, I think that Sunday is kind of right in wanting to dig into the details here. But I can understand where you're coming from. Of open dialogue. <laughs> so I guess there are roughly uh, th three types of points that you brought up in that, Andrew. The first is you, you gave a statement about the essentiality of sort of the hierarchy of tribe village state and nation the second one was you uh you suggested that uh, god demands if i'm misquoting you uh, by all means please correct me i was running pretty quickly uh, god demands universalism and then at the end you said the goal of christian nationalism was to take the largest global tribe um 
which is Christians, and tell them it's okay to have power. Um, which one would you prefer to dig into first? It doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to you. How about that first one? Uh, let's let's talk about that. So, this tribe, village, state, nation, sort of set of tiers that you've. I think I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. Uh, how's the audio levels? Is it, President Sunday seems a little low, right? Can anybody verify? I feel like he's a little low. All right, I'm going to boost his audio just a tiny bit. By that, I mean quite a bit. Hopefully, this will be better. You've outlined. Can, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so it's uh, my... Bl uh, they're both really quiet. Uh, the, the host is, like, really loud. We might have to just turn it down whenever that guy's talking. Leaf and it's the Christian belief as well that uh, humanity is set up into a section of tribes. It seems to be obvious to everybody who looks at it. I don't think you would dispute that, would you? That it's obvious <laughs> in uh, Christian doctrine that humanity is distinguished into separate tribes. I mean, there's dis descriptions of tribes in the Bible, certainly, but I don't know if there's a claim that these are that these have essential properties as such. I mean, well, certainly if you're talking Christianity about... Christianity like, is trying to make one tribe Christians. Uh, Our job is to make a single tribe, which is Christians, out of all nations. Uh, I don't know where he's pulling that from. I, I don't know where I don't know where he's pulling that from. Like at least, I mean, that could that, that sounds like an interpretation of a lot of things, but I, I really don't believe that's like what is what what the Bible how that's not how the Bible characterizes it at all. In fact, the Bible still acknowledges the various tribes of Judah, which are separate tribes, but uh, united in being God's people, but they're separate tribes. They're like acknowledged, you know, or like, yeah, the the, 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 the separate tribes, like, I, I don't know what he's, I don't know what he's, I don't know, I don't know. This is weird. Fair enough. And so like, there's obviously this stratification between different subgroups of humanity. There are different like worships. Yeah. There are different. Like... Okay, another board person says, "I am now mostly sure that he's Eastern Orthodox. He has a lot of Orthodox debaters on the Crucible show, and he had an Orthodox versus Orthodox debate on the Hypostatic Union." Good to know. So let's just let's just go. the The core claim here of this guy's entire argument is that he has the numbers, and therefore he should be in control. It's a fundamental might versus right argument. And he is making that argument as a as a member of a religion that has at most six million members in the entire United States. Uh, he loses. He's already lost the argument. He's lost his own argument on his own grounds. His tribe is not the biggest. His tribe will not win. His tribe does not deserve to win as it is not the largest. Over. What else do we have to say? Congratulations to President Sunday, uh, Big Papa Fascist like most fascists, took himself out uh, by his own hand. Incredible. Even ethnicities or whatever, and the goal of Christianity, of course, is to fold all of these into one church that sort of covers, covers the equivalent. One tribe. Okay. All right, so when, when uh, for example, you say that leftists uh, characterize these as being essentially non-existent, um, in a sense, you actually more or less agree with them because they're less real than, of course, the church body that would uh, come Sorry, to Sorry, I misspoke. I realized I misspoke before. I said the tribes of Judah. I meant the tribes of Israel, of one of which is the tribe of Judah. There are 12 tribes of Israel. Anyway, that was just a small misbeak. Sure, this sort of global conversion has taken place. Yes? Because no, presumably, presumably, like, this would tribal exist, existence they, wouldn't persist past, like, the, the unification of mankind. They would exist within Symphonia. Within Symphonia. We, we don't, yeah, we don't, we don't eliminate the tribe. We give unification through Christendom. That's the point. Okay, but it's so a, if you're it's Greek, a, you get to stay Greek, yeah. right? Nobody's saying that you can't stay Greek. That's why if you look at the Orthodox Church, you look at the Catholic, Catholic Churches, they do the same thing. They usually will add their ethnicity in with the Church. So they'll mm. say, this is the Greek Catholic Church, Roman Catholic Church. This is the Greek... Uh, or Roman Orthodox Church, this type of thing. The tribe is as we all as we all know. Uh, when you get to heaven and you're a spirit, God will remember the random geographic section of the planet Earth that no longer exists. Um, he'll remember that because it totally matters where random fucking bureaucrats drew lines on a map. You know, 
that's super important to God. He's really he's really uh, picky about those details. Able to stay intact. It just has a unification of glue, a universal glue, and the universalism is the moral ethical system. So what we're what we're trying to accommodate here is universalism through ethics. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so the because uh, Christ is pretty explicit that in in heaven there is no uh, there is no, for example, marriage bond, or I think even male or female, um, but tribe persists even even into the thousand year reign on earth. Well, okay. Well, you're, you're talking, are you talking about eschatology here? What do you mean? I suppose in a sense, like when we're talking about like whether something is real, we're talking about something, whether we're talking about whether something persists beyond convention, right? We're talking about whether it exists beyond simply how people behave and act. Like if you, an alien were to come to earth, they would find these distinctions themselves in exactly the same way. That's how the, the contours of these things sort of, yeah, it is kind of funny. Yeah, exactly. Mayfleet brings up uh, Galatians 3.28, which says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I mentioned this in my intro, talking about uh, Christian nationalism, which is that uh, they are always nationalists first. And the Christian stuff is just the uh, it's just the leverage that they use to get people, uh, you know, to, to 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 leverage their worldview over others. They they worship the nation and they worship the political power that comes with the nation. They um, they 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 basically spit in the face of Christ. Um, people like Andrew Wilson, if uh, if Christianity is it turns out to by a, a miracle margin somehow turns out to be true. Uh, Andrew Wilson uh, is the type of person that God would literally slam dunk directly into hell. It's it's incredible. Like, just the amount of, like, I'm spitting on the teachings of Jesus Christ. I'm spitting on the teachings of his of His chosen disciples. Anyway, not to get too off topic, I just want to, I, I like to take a little bit of time to point out uh, just how bullshit all of his beliefs really are. From, like, the bottom up. That at the end of the day, Big Papa Fascist is a fascist more than anything else. He'll switch flavors of Christianity at, at a whim. Uh, you know, his re reverence for God uh, is is next to nothing. Uh, but his reverence for the the boot is uh, like like it's like his entire soul reverberates at the sight of a leather boot. It persists. At least that's how I would think about it. Okay. Yeah. But what's your what's your kind of driving point here? So I mean, do you dispute that the entirety of human existence is essentially a makeup of tribes and nations and that the universals are what keep those tribes together, generally theism? I probably have some quibbles about what comprises these things and and what sense they have an existence as like a a stable constitutive mesh, I guess, that makes up mankind. Um as far as the universals are concerned, I mean, that, that begs a whole ton of questions, but I think the basic point about there being groups making up mankind, I think that's tr trivially obvious. Um, I suppose the reason why I'm asking... But don't you want to eliminate the nation, Sunday? Do I want to eliminate the nation? Mm -hmm. um, I would like to eliminate uh, arbitrary divisions between people that uh, have their own interests that can conflict, for example, with the interest of mankind. I would say also <laughs> that this is probably... Uh, dovetails well with your notion of symphonia where um... well, what does that mean what does that mean though the what are the arbitrary notions which hinder us from are you talking about unification are you talking about like unification or global unification well let's talk in the context of of this symphonia you described um for different groups to serve less than one master in some sense their identity has to be put beneath that of of the collectivity so obviously for example there will always be ways in which you can categorize people Wait, hang on back up, back up i want to make sure i clarify this sure please. sorry i don't mean to cut you off I just not at all clarify uh what's the order of operations how you just described it well if you're talking if if the goal of christianity and of christian nationalism is the ultimate unification of all mankind right well, the unification of all mankind is going to be predicated on the interest of its parts, not superseding the interest of the whole. Or put another way, um, the uh, 
the veneration of the part is going to be under the veneration of the global church and of God, presumably. And so while, like, it may be the case, there's still Greeks and their food and their culture and their whatever and so on and so forth and, and uh, just whoever else exists, um, they're not going to exist in the sense that we talk about the nation as the be-all, end-all of one's existence, you know, the whole Propatia Mori shit, right? Like, that's, that's obviously going to fall away at some, to some degree. Why? It hasn't in the entire history of Christianity. It seems that these nations remain fully... In oh! Oh, Big Papa Fascist trying to make a fucking historical materialist argument in the face of fucking divine declaration. God says there will be no nation, there will be no division between my faithful. And then Big Papa Fascist says, well, there's always been nations. Again, fascist before anything else. Literally, literally willing to ignore the claims of his own fucking prophets. Uh, ignore the claims, the divinely inspired claims of the of the disciples. Ignore the words of his, of the God he claims to worship in order to try and make a naturalistic fallacy about the state of the nation, uh, of, about the state and the nation and the tribe. Incredible. Absolutely. Um, it's just amazing. Tact within their kind of tribal origin and their kind of people group customs and things like this, yeah. while they adopt the universal ethical systems that Christianity provides and theism provides to them. But Christianity did not, uh, you know, uh, demand that there's some type of unification between these groups of people other than they have the same ethics. That's that's really it. Well, didn't didn't uh -huh. Christ very specifically say he comes to separate a man from his wife, a child from his parents, and so on and so forth? I mean, that strikes yeah, me that's, as a this fundamental is all, This is all bad the, contextualization. Uh, so, like, what does that mean? What do you think that means, though? Well, when I think of the the list of categories that you provided, tribe, village, state, nation, I think the most family. fundamental well, of those... Well, family first. So family, it's family first, then tribe. Then tribe, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, this has been broken down at the, at the most basic level. Um the unity of the family is put below the unity of the church and indeed the unity of the church seems in the words of god himself to come at the expense of the unity of the family and no the family oh it absolutely does of course it does of fucking course it does at multiple points at multiple points is it depicted in the new testament um that that uh your adherence to god has to come before your adherence to family that your adherence to, to faith must outweigh your relationship with your children with your 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 uh, uh cousins with your 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 town that you are like christians are very explicitly called to be followers of christ above all else to be servants of god above all else it's incredible he's even arguing uh, against this like like the argument he's trying to make here uh, uh is is like I, you usually don't even hear christians try to make that type of argument usually um the type of argument they'll try to make is that the only way that you um is is not that that like oh yeah actually our tribe and our family is actually super 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 important and god never told us to disobey these structures uh instead they will often argue they'll try to say that like they're the ideal way of fulfilling those things but he's not even doing that here uh okay let's continue jesus no, no, no. That's the purpose of Symphonia is there's no distinguishment between the two. The family is mm -hmm. the family is the comprising of the body of the church. The man the men are the comprising of the body of the church. The yes, people who are saying here's the quote specifically, Luke twelve, fifty one. Thank you, Bizadu. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two and two against three. Yes. Uh, there's there's multiple. I, I come. What's that? The um, let's see. Here we go. Matthew, 
uh, in Matthew, Matthew 10, 34, do not think that I have come to bring peace to earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set man against his fa a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's own household. This is what I was talking about in the portion before. These are, these are two of the verses I was talking about. Now, of course, he's not saying he's a conqueror. What he's saying is that inevitably what he is teaching will bring division because there will be people who disagree. Uh, it will disrupt the, the previously existing structures. That the idea of the church family, that the, 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 uh, the, 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 ch the new church that he is trying to build is supposed to be a family that surpasses the lines of nation, of tribe, of all of these things. It is so fundamental uh, a part of, of, um, of uh, I mean, oh my God, he even has people abandon their former names. He has his disciples abandon the, their given names, the names that that re refer to their um, to their uh, previous uh, nationality in the name of, of of committing themselves to their new belief. It's incredible how much cope and how much bending over backwards big papa fascist has to do to try and make the argument that he should be able to use Christianity as an instrument for political power. And that is the core of his argument from the very beginning. He says Christians should uh, allow themselves to take power. What he is trying to do is convince Christians to sell their bodies. He is essentially trying to whore out the Christian faith. He wants you to become mercenaries for his worldview. And by that, I mean for Donald Trump. That's what he ultimately wants people to do. He wants Christians to bend over and take Donald Trump's fucking rotten orange fucking cock into their ass. And he wants you to do it. Uh, he wants to trick you that it's God telling you to do that. This is, this is an anti-materialist message. It's not a materialist message. So the comprise there is no distinction between the two. We are the makeup of the It's body. literally yes. Benefer the potato says this is antichrist shit. Yes, it is. That was one of the things I was trying to trying to get at in my opening statement before we even got into this debate. Christian nationalism is like the most antichrist thing that has ever existed. It is the most perfect example of of like within Christianity the thing that that the disciples warned future believers about they warned them about uh leaders and movements that would attempt to subsume their faith and use it to create an empire of man um and is that not literally what what fucking big papa fascist is trying to convince the christians in his audience to do is that not exactly what he's doing church but you do that have... is symphonia Fair enough, but I mean, you do have material bodies, and so it is still material makeup, yes? Well, I mean, like, like, yes, like, like that, the, the I mean, men is being part of But that's of just trivially tribes, true. Yeah. That's just trivially true. Like, it's... yes, it's true, but so what? That's not really the point of the message. <laughs> like, well, it's I... not, it really has no ultimate bearing. When you're talking about uh, we, what you're offering, I guess the contrast here that I'm trying to show hmm. is that the offering of the leftist progressive is nothing except materialism. They can't really offer anything else. They don't offer you any sort of spiritual guidance or non-material guidance on anything. And they can't. It they just... says who? Like, this is another thing. By the way, um, something that I've, uh, I've, something that I've pointed out in conversations with anti-theists is that um, newsflash there are leftist and progressive Christians. Like, even, I don't even agree with the idea that there isn't some sort of spiritual value. Um, I guess it depends on how you define spiritual. Uh, but there isn't any sort of, like, purpose that can be gained from materialist philosophies. I absolutely believe there can be. In fact, I think a lot of people find that a materialist worldview um, gives them more substance uh, for which to build purpose than a, uh, than, than especially like big Papa fascist, uh, cynical view of Christianity. Um, 
but like even if the, even if it were true that materialists are not able to offer you any sort of like emotional fulfillment or whatever there are tons and tons of christians who are themselves leftists there are uh everything from christian anarchists um to liberation theology these are leftist movements uh that are often very progressive and i'm not saying don't get me wrong i don't want to trigger all of the uh the atheists in my audience uh you know i doff my fedora to you obviously i do believe that there are uh many many fundamental issues that need to be grappled with and talked about and even opposed within the core of christian belief uh, as a whole that even things like liberation theology sometimes struggle with but uh he's just he's in a fantasy world again the idea that there are no christian leftists is absurd there are of course many christian leftists Let's continue. Just reject it outright. So they, they don't have anything to offer people uh, in this sense that is helpful to uh, them finding some kind of purpose-driven life. Can you specify that a little bit? Like, is there an example that comes to mind in which a, a secular or a progressive or whatever you prefer to call it ethic is, is specifically lacking that we can kind of hone? Tristan Elaine says, this is why I'm having a bit of an issue with actual Jake's anti-theist uh anti-theism lately it's gotten vitriolic in places oh we're gonna talk about that later um uh for those who are interested in that uh uh i actually gotten a a small argument with actual jake before this stream and i'm not gonna i don't I, I, i'm not gonna talk about it during this stream segment besides to mention that i'm gonna talk about it later because it doesn't really fit in but for those of for those of you who are interested in me talking about that, I'm going to talk about that after we review this. So, Jayster with the $10 super chat, thank you so much for supporting this free and viewer supported show. It means the world to me. Jayster says, Church! Woo! Let's continue. Yeah, that might be helpful. You mean p the portions of secular ethics which are lacking? Yeah, if there's a. If there's a Degeneracy, abortion. <laughs> I mean, uh, the the list is like ongoing. I got the degeneracy. I wonder what he. I wonder what he means by degeneracy. I am Adolf Hitler. Yeah. I could give you. Kind we all know what he means by degeneracy. His name is fucking Big Papa Fascist, and he uses a noose in his icon. We know exactly what he means. Kind of an inexhaustive list of social problems, which exist specifically because leftists did only look at everything through the prism of materialism well how about degeneracy okay let's focus on degeneracy sure in in <laughs> what in what respect is uh oh this just in everybody hold on a second uh oh uh oh hold on wait a second wait just a second hold on i gotta do a quick math uh oh I hate to tell Big Papa Fascist, but uh, the biggest tribe in America is certainly not the Orthodox, and uh, the tribe of the LGBT outnumbers his tribe by approximately four times. So, my man, your tribe is getting fucking grugged, my dude. You are getting bonked. Okay, because my tribe, my people, the degenerates that you fear so much outnumber your ass. We will motherfucking rock you. Okay? The numbers don't lie, buddy. And they're spelling defeat for you in 2024 and beyond. Anyway, I thought that would be a fun one. Let's do it. And if I'm mischaracterizing you, please uh, let me know. In what respect is kind of an inexhaustive list of social problems which exist specifically because leftists did only look at everything through the prism of materialism? Well, how about degeneracy? Okay, let's focus on degeneracy. Sure. In, in, <coughs> what, in what respect is, and if I'm mischaracterizing you, please uh, let me know. In what respect is a leftist slash progressive slash secular ethical approach to i'm presuming we're talking about sexual degeneracy in particular 
in what in what sense is in a, if that those approaches to like uh, uh, sex and family ethics say in what sense mm-hmm. is that categorically lacking? In a it's, way it that, lacks virtues. In a way that so, Christy, in a way, hang yeah, on, what, no, it lacks virtues. Hi, let me give no, you no, a counter. Oh yeah, just, just very ahead. quickly. I'm just I'm, I'm specifying ahead. the question just a little bit. Um, in what way does it uh, fail to, I, I guess, supply? The- Cigarette number three. Oh man, this guy is uh, this guy is rushing to find out. He's 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 speed running. He's speed running to find out whether he'll get slam dunked into the lake of fire or not. The the tools you need for an ethical system to be satisfactory, and what are the conditions of an ethical system to be being satisfactory? Oh, sorry, continue. Um, virtues. Kind of throw me off there a little bit. Virtues. Vir- virtues are necessary for an ethical system to um, to operate. I think in a way that gives people a non-material goal. Those are virtues. So let me give you an example of this. The United States military and most militaries globally, they operate on their own sort of military unified codification of law, right? You would agree with that. In the United States, we have the Uniform Code of Military Justice or the UMCA, right? uh, Or whatever it's called, right? I don't actually, but I get what you're saying. Okay. Inside the Uniform Code of Military Justice, why do you think that a person can go to jail for having sex with an officer or an enlisted man or having sex with an officer's wife, even if it's consensual? Well, I suppose it could be multifaceted. I think the, the major one would be um, there are serious complications that arise when you have superiors having sexual relations with subordinates or, or things of that sort. I mean, that itself is not universal. Like, with, for example, it was very common. In fact, it was encouraged for Roman soldiers to have sexual relations with each other. They thought it uh, increased camaraderie to a certain That's degree. not true. Is that not? Well, I read it was true. No, so. it's not true. So, but, but that aside... The, the reason for this is because inside of military culture, honor is very important. And it's always going to be important. Oh, how dare you insult the Romans? I love those guys! Again, f- always a fascist. Bef- also, did he forget? Did he forget that he converted to the Eastern Orthodox? Like, I don't know if you know this, but the, the fucking Eastern, the Eastern Orthodoxy split off from the Roman Catholic Church. You aren't supposed to idolize those guys. Your guys hate those guys because they fucking degenerated into a shitty version. What are you fucking... What the fuck is this shit? Fascist first, Christian second, always. For any military, any standing military, that there's honor which is in place because... Also, I have no idea what he's on about here. I genuinely do not understand where we're at within this conversation with, with what he's talking about. He's trying to say that because there's rules in the military that... That what? Like, like I don't get, I don't understand what he's trying to say. Yeah, I think he's trying to make the argument that like, uh, non non Christian families don't have any beliefs or virtues. Um, but that's just obvious, like blatantly and obviously untrue. Like people believe in all kinds of things. Um, people be- be- believe in different religions. People have all kinds of reasons that they believe the things that they do. I, no one in my house is religious. Um, that you know, I don't think anybody is. I don't think even my roommate's religious. Um, but no one in my uh, uh, polyamorous, LGBT, uh, hyper hyper kinky relationship. Um, uh, you know, polyamorous uh, polycule, whatever you want to call it. None of us are religious, but we all have very strong beliefs, and uh, we discuss them regularly, and our relationships have lasted a really long time and been very mutually fulfilling. Uh, we've managed to find our way through the world without needing a religious uh, cent- you know, tent pole to, to, to build ourselves around. In fact, um, like I am very not religious. Um, you know, my, you know, t- two of my partners are, vi- or me and one of my other partners are very not religious. And two of my other partners are like more like the agnostic type. Um, but yeah. 
I guess uh, I guess we're just built different. You know, pe weak minded people like Andrew Wilson and his genetic line, um, you know, they need like a lynching tree to, to, to do like a little maypole dance around. They need to go, yay, thank God that we're reminded of the boot. Daddy, may I lick your boot? You know, he needs to dance around that and, and have daddy, you know, put his boot down his throat or whatever. I guess we're just built different, you know. What can I say? Yeah, let's continue. This is mostly an enforcement arm, which is comprised of men. And for men, honor, highly important to them. And so when you look at what the entailments are of honor, mm -hmm. one of the things that is... Oh, yeah, the U.S. military full of dudes who are totally all about honor and definitely not full of people who are completely there to get a job uh, and get paid to the degree that that is like core to military culture is uh is is openly talking about how you're just doing your time until you can get out yeah it's it's all about the honor though yeah for like the dweeby full like true believer types yeah absolutely oh my god this guy is andrew wilson may as well i've said this about conservatives before that they would be happier if they just believed that lord of the rings was a documentary um, I think that Andrew Wilson, like, has written a D and D campaign in his mind, and he's convinced himself that it's reality. Um, this idea that like the entire military is not made up of, uh, poor people who were recruited by being offered a giant payout, and instead that it's uh that it's like this this elite group of honorable soldiers. Uh, who all believe in honor, and that's why they join the military, because of their strong belief in honor, not because they, a recruiter went to their school and told them they could get $50,000 cash if they signed up right now and they had fucking bills to pay. Okay, boy. Let's go. The of honor is your sexual conduct. What is honorable, what is not honorable. This is the same thing for almost all of the masculine virtues, which you'll see most of these military codes operate off of. So you can't go and fuck the a, masculine a, a, virtues? A, your comrade's wife and not go to jail because you're violating an honor code. Now from- Is that, is there an anti, is there an anti-cuckoldry rule in the US military? Did he just pull that out of his ass? I don't, he was talking about how you can't, you're not supposed to have a sexual relation with an officer. And then all of a sudden it became about cuckoldry. What, what, what we just like, we just like skipped the track over to something else. Straight, actually straight That's up. That's my wife you're talking about. That's my wife you're talking about. Your progressive morality, your actual moral code Sunday. If a guy's white, the U.S. the U.C. the 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 U.C.M.J. does not disallow you to fuck the wife of another soldier. Adultery can be against the U.C.M.J. though. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Has consented to having sex with a man. What's the moral pro conundrum here for you? Well, the moral conundrum presumably would be that they're in some kind of covenantal relationship with somebody and they're doing this outside and in violation of that. But I mean, if, for example, you're simply talking about uh, the, the analogy I was making before with the Roman soldiers was between Roman <coughs> soldiers themselves, not with each other's wives. That'd be a fairly different story. Um, but I think insofar as we're talking about people having entered into agreements, I think honoring those agreements is pretty universally, even among the most radical progressives taken as uh something you should, well, should they probably, go to jail should should they go to jail for yeah having... should they go to jail should uh, there be punitive punishments for consensual sex between adults in this circumstance between go to jail for between it? between soldiers and an officer's wife yeah or, or just a, another soldier's wife just another soldier's wife yeah uh i i don't i don't see that that's an appropriate response Right, exactly. Yeah. So this is the problem. The Which is different, by the way, from saying so I they... don't think it's merited. I do think cheating is serious. No, I understand. I get it.
Okay. Listen. According to the UCMJ, okay? They do have a law against extramarital sexual conduct, okay? Soldiers are not supposed to have sex outside of marriage and can get in trouble for it, okay? But I'm going to tell you something right now, okay? And I know this is going to come as a giant shock to you. That rule is definitely not enforced, okay? And I bet a whole bunch of you out there have had sex with people in the military so you can, and they didn't lose their job in the military. So, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just go out on a limb and say, I don't think they're enforcing that one too hard. And I don't even know why we're bringing this up as an argument. But, um, military guys are kind of notorious for uh having sex when they're uh in you know when they're on uh you know they're overseas on a base and then they go into town and then they go to the bar and they get fucking plastered and then they fuck some guy in the ass you know happens uh basically multiple times a day every single day all over the world it's kind of like a thing that happens literally all the time and I guarantee you that there are people listening to this right now who have fucked a military guy or a military girl in an exactly such a situation probably this weekend. I, how, in fact, j no, you know what? Don't volunteer yourself. Actually, no, you know what? Do it. If you're in my chat right now and you have fucked somebody who's in the military and you're not married to them, Anytime recently, drop a fucking emote in chat, okay? Drop me a hypers, okay, in chat right now. If you somewhere in the chat, anywhere in the chat, have in like the last month, let's say, fucked someone in the military who wasn't married to you. Not this weekend. All right, all right, all right. I hooked up with a military gal, but she was single. Yeah, but that's extramarital. Yeah, you got it. Yep, yep, my partner. Okay, YouTube chat's on it. YouTube chat is supporting the troops, okay? <laughs> all right, nasty, all right. I'm going to this weekend. <laughs> Yes! All right, you have a mission, okay? My lovely imps, if you've been cooped up inside, it's your mission this weekend, okay? I want you to help a soldier violate the USMJ this weekend, okay? Normally, I wouldn't say this, but I'm feeling patriotic. In the name of, uh, 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 in the name of this conversation, I'm gonna need my imps to get out there and support some troops this weekend, okay? Bonus points if you're it, bonus points if you're on top, okay? Bo bonus points. Bo bonus points if you get an officer, okay? And pound and pound that fucking officer bussy, okay? All right. <laughs> okay. Life, it's okay. You you still count. You still count. Don't worry. I still give you points. What are, are we talking about fraternization? We were t we are ta we are off on a wild ride, okay? The US we learned that the the US uh military code of justice uh has a rule against extramarital affairs. And uh, I was just pointing out the fact that that shit is not fucking enforced, okay? They don't they don't enforce that shit at all, okay? What's the prize for the highest rank? I'll give you a copy of Brotato, okay? I'll give you a free copy of Brotato. No, just kidding. You know what? I'll give you I'll even do this. I'll give you a copy of Metal Gear Solid 5 in honor of the battle queers, okay? There we go. 
All right, let's get. <laughs> Let's continue. Who's got the four-star general? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is great. I understand what you're saying, the distinction here, but the distinction that I'm making is to say to you mm -hmm. that inside of virtue-driven cultures, yes. we don't see it as problematic to, make, to uh, enforce when people violate virtuous behavior. We don't see that as being problematic. And so when we have kind of these talks about sexual ethics, when we're talking about homosexuality, transgenderism, things like this, is always misframed as being some type of persecution or something like this. It really isn't. It has to do with an enforcement of morality based around virtues and what's considered virtuous and what is not. So if you are going to, just like in the military, you're going to enforce these kind of high virtues, why shouldn't we do this with society? There's no particularly good reason that I can think of that Christians shouldn't be in charge and that Christians shouldn't be able to enforce uh, the morality uh, that they that they choose. Fair I don't enough. see why that would be problematic. Fair enough. I'm following you there. Let me just uh, let me just let me just fucking quote Jesus, okay? From Matthew five five: "Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy." Nowhere does Jesus tell his followers, does your fucking savior, speaking to, uh, to big papa fascist here, nowhere does your savior say Christians should seek and take power. In fact, they are called to do the opposite. They are called to abandon the halls of power in the name of living a life devoted to God, to love, to uh, uh, brotherhood, to charity. But your fucking chain smoking fraud ass will sit here and try and convince people that your Christian populism has anything to do with Christianity. Fraud. Fraud. Now, wouldn't, for example, however, the targeted critique of things, for example, like unjust persecution, let's say, I'm adding that additional word there, um, would that not also imply by itself a specific. <laughs> Lythe says barracks bunnies are just nature's way of giving emotional support. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a second. I know. Oh, shit. One of my partners used to fuck uh, uh, an active duty service woman. And they definitely weren't married because that shit was gay as fuck. <laughs> Oh, man. Forgot about that one. Uh, let's say a pantheon of virtues and vices that are themselves being deployed to make those judgments. They may not necessarily align with yours, but clearly, for example, um, having an unjust prejudice against certain kinds of things or having a particular attitude towards freedom or having an overbearing attitude towards uh, sexual relationships and so on and so forth. Um, these seem to violate some kind of stable norm such that you can describe progressives and leftists and so on and so forth as being persistently hostile to them. That suggests to me that there's actually something at the very least of the same order of an ethical system with its own virtues and vices taking place here. Um, it doesn't seem like there's an absence. It seems like it's a difference. So, okay. So do I want to make sure I get this. Or? Yeah, yeah. So hang on. I want to make sure I get this mm. right. So I'm not uh, strawmanning your position. Okay. You're saying, wait, if there's a contrary position to your position, it seems like that's a, an ethical position. Not exactly. What you're you're, so what you're saying is that what's specifically lacking from a secular progressive, it's like, can we like, just say secular generally? Would that, would that be Yeah, sure, acceptable? that's fine. Okay, yeah. uh, what's lacking from a secular perspective is the stable existence of a, a set of virtues by which to judge the actions of individuals in clear and legible terms such that you can administer justice and maintain honor or things like that. Um, but it seems to me that even though they're not stated as virtues, the consistency with which these particular things are treated de facto as vices and as things that are condemnable suggests to me that there is something equivalent, if unstated, also at work on the secular side. Yeah, I believe that they have um, whatever they perceive as being an ethical code, sure. Okay. Would you, would you concede? could be one... 
there's all sorts of secular. Oh my god. Okay, this is another thing that really fucking drives me crazy about Christians. Okay, Christians, a religion that has like a, an a, an uncountable number of sects and off splits, all of whom are convinced that they are the true heirs of God's word, and then they go, you, you, you seculars. You guys have no fucking consistent belief system. Anyway, I gotta go back and have an argument over whether or not the, the bread actually turns into flesh that tastes like bread in your mouth, or whether it's symbolic. You guys have no fucking consistency. It's, it's insane. The, oh my god. The most obnoxious thing is to be, like, lectured on consistency about the guys who unironically had a... a violent religious war over whether you were supposed to do the sign of the cross with two fingers or whether you were supposed to do it with three fingers. I'm literally not even kidding. That is a real thing that happened in the church that Andrew belongs to. There was a sect, there was a split between uh, uh, Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox and then even within the Eastern Orthodox as to whether you're supposed to do the sign of the cross with two fit with three fingers three fingers or two fingers and a thumb no joke that is where it came from in Elden Ring the, the, that's that's I mean it may not be literal I mean it, I think it is literally where it came from I've seen the argument that that's the direct inspiration Part of the reason being that the uh, adherents of the three fingers, um, the adherents of the three fingers are the trap. I, I, I'm not going to go off on this. There's a great video by Tarnished Archaeologist called The Real Life Lore. I think it's called The Real Life Lore of the Three Fingers. You should look it up. I'm, uh, and he makes the argument that there's basically no doubt that it was inspired by this. But regardless, that is a real thing that happened. Don't believe me? Fucking look it up. Straight up. Three fingers versus two fingers. And this guy wants to lecture you on moral consistency. Oh, you, you seculars can't, you guys can't have any grounded beliefs. You don't even know that you're supposed to use two fingers. Meanwhile, on the other side of the room, I, you're, I'll stone you for that. It's three fingers to honor God. And then another guy on the other side of the room goes, I always honor God with the shocker. Or ethical codes, but sure. these are generalities. When when it comes to particulars, they seem to fail over and over and over again. Secularism in general seems to fail when it comes to. Would you guys remember when we read the Fisting for God website? Do you remember that? That was a legendary lost stream moment. I don't even know what stream that was on. What amazing website! To particulars, not in generals. So, kind of in a general sense, if they're. They're talking about general prescriptions for society. They're talking about generally how society ought to be. Is run. that real? Yes, it's real. It's unironic. It's actually real. There was a guy who wrote an entire website about how to have sex, uh, like how to have kinky sex in a Christian way. And uh, he finds some interesting verses in the Bible to try and justify. He's particularly into fisting. He has a very long chapter on fisting. On. It all sounds good, but when it gets into particulars, it becomes much more muddy. There it is. Universalism Sex generally in Christ does com. Thank you, Somniostatic. Better with particulars. So when we're talking about the particulars of virtue, things like this, it's it's seemingly easier for theists to, when it comes to particulars, make good judgment calls on those particulars, whereas utilitarians use and usually most most progressives are some form of consequentialists, not all utilitarians, but they tend to kind of run awry there because they have a mathematical formula for utility, but it's not anything that's set in stone. Every single consequentialist distinction and what gives most or less, um, at least amounts of utility is all over the place. We have. Do you think he's arguing with Vosh in his head now? Did President Sunday ever say he was a utilitarian or a consequentialist? I don't think President Sunday is a consequentialist. How did this even come up? Did I miss something? Does he just assume that all secular people are consequentialists? No idea what that metric even is. By a good judgment on particulars. What do you mean? Let's take theft. 
Okay. This is a simple one. From your worldview, if a child is starving, is it okay for him to steal from a rich man? No. No. Why? Um, I think that as a general rule, theft, for example, is something that is uh, destructive. It involves some kind of putting forward of your own interest above your own notion of, of right or justice or whatever. At the very least, a neglect without any sort of conference with a society about what its rules should be or ought to be. That being said, if theft took place because somebody was starving under those conditions, I would absolutely turn a blind eye to it. Yeah, no, I, I understand you might turn a blind eye to it, but I'm not understanding why it's morally incorrect. That's the part where I'm having a hit. Why it's morally why incorrect. Would that, yeah, why is it morally incorrect from your worldview for them to have actually stolen something they're starving from a rich man? Well, I mean, from a moral point of view, I would, uh, I, I would, I would question um, whether or not a moral system that supposedly derives from a just God who says the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these with respect to children would subject children to a rule that privileges the property ownership of a rich man over the life of a child. Yeah. yeah okay. But I don't understand. That's not your ethical system. That's a, that would be a criticism against mine from your purview. Why would it not be immoral or immoral? Well, I just don't find the, the question particularly, um, particularly pressing for the simple reason that when we're talking about morals, regardless of where it's derived, fundamentally what we're talking about is a system of norms. But if we're presuming a case in which the most innocent members of society and the most vulnerable members of society who society is specifically charged to raise and protect are uh, suffering to a lethal extent, it seems we're in an extreme situation in which Norms don't seem to apply anymore. There's already been some kind of fatal degradation at that level. Okay, yeah, maybe that's all true, mm. but let's assume that it's not true. Sure. Why would it be immoral for him to steal from your ethical lens? Well, I'm not sure I would commit myself to the idea that it is immoral. It wouldn't right. necessarily say it's right, though. There's a <clears throat> that's why when we get to particulars, like this particular, mm. right, you had a hard time mm. answering the question, whereas universal... Sunday didn't have a hard time answering the question. Sunday answered the question directly. He said, no, I don't think it would be it would be right, but I'm not going to punish them. That was like a very straightforward answer, and he answered it like that. This is a terrible, like, just a total bungle from, from fascist over here. Universalism, it's much easier to answer those questions. It's not even saying that universalism is better. I'm just giving you an example sure. of how when you're talking about particulars, universals are easier to apply to particulars. And that's why people tend to follow universalism far more than they do consequentialism. But suppose I simply said dogmatically that, yes, it is always in all cases appropriate for somebody who has less to steal from somebody who has more. And I just take that as a dogmatic stance. Mm -hmm. Technically, it'd be very easy for me to answer that question, but I don't think you'd find it very compelling. Well, I mean, <laughs> let's assume I don't. Mm -hmm. But you can understand why most people would find universal claims to be compelling because it's, they're very easy to follow. Okay, so it's also very easy to follow a, a uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that are very easy to follow. It's also very easy to follow. I mean, I don't know, man. It's also very easy to follow my instructions that I give out when, I, when I'm going to give people a treat, when I'm going to give the puppies a treat. Very easy to follow, sit, stay, and yet not everyone wants to sit or stay all the time, turns out. Right? You're not allowed to murder people, ever. Never, ever, ever. Right? An unjustified killing. You're not allowed to do that. Uh, most people find that, whether it's particulars or not particulars, to be very easy to follow. Right? This is why when you're talking about the overview of the mm -hmm. ethical glue that kind of holds people together... They tend to go for universals, and this is where leftists really have failed people. Progressives have really, really failed people at this because what they've done is they've introduced do as they Again, this is uh, insanity coming from a guy who converted from, from Catholicism to Eastern Orthodoxy and is also talking about one of the most 
shattered and disorganized religions in the world that has literal thousands of different sects. Often, sometimes a single town will have dozens of separate sects of Christianity, and he's trying to be like, you know, the left has failed because they can't give universal answers like me, my universal answer of, uh, well, actually, we, you need to consult my channel to decide whether you're making the right theological decision to get the most heaven points. She just, wow, oh God, this guy is terrible. He's just a terrible debater. This is a terrible debate, and he's not making any good arguments. And it, it's it's in, it's blatantly obvious as a guy who 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 fucking belongs to Christianity, a religion that is literally famous for having one of the biggest schisms in the history of of the world. Alexi with the with the five dollars says, "Public service announcement." Have you liked the stream? That's right. You should like the stream. Liking the stream ensures that we get to have some more viewers. It helps us grow the show. And it makes me and you feel wonderful. Please consider liking the show. And also, why not just subscribe and ring the bell while you're there? It's easy to do. And you'll get to catch my future videos. Plus, again, you get to be an imp. Makes me feel good. Makes you feel good. Thank you so very much, Alexi. Killjoy says, I really do think that Andrew would probably exclude a ton of Christians for not being Christian enough for him. Yeah, he totally would. He would sit there in his office and he'd be like, those fucking Christians, cigarette one, they, they don't fucking believe in God like I do. They're not voting for Donald Trump enough. And honestly, it really fucking pisses me off. Let me get another 40 real quick. Oh, yeah, listen, uh, sorry, my nicotine just rules my life. It's my false god, but I want you to believe that I'm the real Christian. Thou wilt. They don't have universals for conducts and, and how society should be run. It seems like porn is fine. It seems like uh, any form of sexual degeneracy is fine. And it seems like decadence is fine. It seems like nobody gives a shit. Uh, or or wants to legislate away any of that. Uh, even forms of corruption seem to be okay. It just depends on what their form is. So all of these things, and it, it all seems to stem from the do as thou wilt I'm not entirely uh, kind sure of that's ideology. True. So for example, um, you yourself run into constant... I'm not going to lie. It's really funny to like say that leftists believe in do what thou wilt as like a general principle, because that is so fucking not true. That is like the, the there are there is a subsection of leftists who are also Satanists. Like yeah, and Satanists. Uh, okay, there's actually it's, depends on the Satanist type that you're talking about. But yeah, a lot of Satanists do tend to be left leaning. But the idea that most leftists are, follow the the Satanist ideal of do what thou wilt is just not true. Um, like, not even close to true. Leftists you know, tons of leftists, especially online, ones that are vocal, um, are often making very specific moral claims and are not advocating a world of do what thou wilt. It's just very weird. E exactly. Chariot says, this is just a bunch of you can only get morality from God stuff, pure delusion. This entire debate has been really weird because the entire time he's trying to claim... Um, he, he, he acknowledges schisms within the church within the first five minutes of the debate and then has spent the rest of the debate trying to basically snidely comment that leftists do not have any moral consistency because they don't have a foundation on which to build. After he spent the first, you know, in the first five minutes, he acknowledged like historical world shattering uh, uh, schisms within his own belief system. It's just crazy. It's actually just a crazy worldview. Uh, that requires um, basically shutting off entire portions of your brain so that you you never acknowledge different truths at the same time. The amount of cognitive dissonance required to have a viewpoint like uh, fucking Andrew, smoky Andrew Wilson over here. By the way, I think he's on his fifth cigarette. This, is, this has been 31 minutes, and he has burned through five cigarettes in 31 minutes. Snake, 
Smoking is bad for your health. Do you guys remember that at my absolute worst, like when I used to occasionally smoke cloves, I smoked like five cigarettes on a nine hour stream. This guy has done five in 30 fucking minutes. Incredible. That's fucking speed running, my dude. That is like lung, like that's like I need to burn a hole in my lungs. And arguments with people online about the appropriate role, for example, of women in subjection to men. Now, there are certain very strong uh, and, and consistent ideas about autonomy, human dignity, and the equality of people, uh, irrespective of sex and gender, um, that actually seems to be pretty stable. <laughs> A great point. He surely can't run very far. His lungs must be deep fried. Imagine posturing about how your tribe is going to grug thump the rest of the other tribes in America when A, you belong to a tribe of only 6 million people and literally gay people outnumber you by, by four times and B, you fucking smoke a pack of on you are you are visibly on camera smoking a pack in a two-hour debate just imagine that level again the cognitive dissonance necessary oh man cross most leftist lines um mega communists excluded um I, I, it doesn't seem to me like there's actually much difficulty dealing with such things as that at all. Now, you exclude those on the basis of highlighting things like pornography and what you call sexual degeneracy. But it seems to me that these are more or less equal in terms of like the way in which they address things. Systems that are simply interested in different things. Yeah, listen, the, the alcohol, the alcohol cigarettes combo right now is giving me mad uh mad vibes from that one tumblr post this one the science behind the thc plus alcohol as a combination is literally so interesting because it basically causes the crimson red duckling in your body to confront the serpent in the bronze vessel of your heart basically you feel good because the duckling is able to eat the harmonious seeds stored within the vessel and transfer these positive energies into your body you can have bad highs when this happens if the duckling awakens the serpent and it bites the duckling the interesting part is when you ingest alcohol after THC because it floods the vessel and causes the serpent to fall into a deep sleep. The duckling never gets attacked by the serpent at all when this happens because it is unconscious and the duckling is actually able to get fat from the harmonious seeds, which causes it an, an enjoyable sensation. A legendary post. One of the best Tumblr posts of all time. That's 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 the and that's the the uh, patented Andrew Wilson logic for why he needs to do a debate about Christianity while downing a fucking Miller High Life, uh, uh, uh forty and uh, and also smoking an entire pack of fucking Marlboro Reds. Um, pornography yeah, is simply not of interest. I agree. They're interested in different things. True, but while pornography, for example, is not of interest to a great many leftists, not all, by the way, there are a great many, including myself, who are very aware of the pernicious uh, elements of pornography as well as the industry that produces it. Um, but leaving that aside, um, there is, by the same token, a high degree of concern with the subjugation of an entire half of the species. Um, and the maltreatment of a large number of people who don't have traditional identities vis-a-vis -vis sex, gender, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, well, let's address that. You are not point. concerned with. Well, let's let's address these kind of point by point. Sure. First, uh, it seems like you're saying, well, wait a second. Uh, leftist progressives are they do care about pornography and what's going on with pornography. Are you if if this was a Christian conservative nation with no progressives in it, do you think that we would have legal pornography Sunday? Legal? No, they wouldn't. And um, no, they wouldn't. And the black market for pornography would be fucking massive. It'd be incredible. Uh, uh, it would be absolutely uh, a towering. 
there would be a there would be a uh, there would be a guy who looks like fucking a uh, uh, big boss from Metal Gear Solid Five who has an oil rig that's stacked with porn DVDs from the Fallen era, uh, uh, and uh, you would have to go there and pay in pure diamonds, and he would let you go in a room and watch one of the DVDs, and if you don't pay up on time, his soldiers would throw you off the oil rig into the ocean. Well, that's an interesting question, because at one point in time, I say this, I'm in Canada, but at one point in time, yours was a Christian conservative nation, and yet pornography right. somehow emerged from it. Yes, this is due to Supreme Court rulings, not because the majority of the people wanted it. What? But the Dude, come on! That is the most ridiculous, that is the most insane, insane Christian cope! Yeah, porn only exists because of a mandate from the Supreme Court and not because of people wanted porn. Dude, crazy! You have to be insane. You genuinely have to live like that that is this isn't even Christian derangement, okay? This is another level of derangement, okay? Most most like Christians would acknowledge like Okay, yeah, people do like pornography, but it's bad and you have to resist the sin. Andrew Wilson right now is trying to argue that porn only exists, illegal porn only exists in the United States, not because there was a demand and desire for legal pornography, but because sneaky Supreme Court justices wanted to make sure that porn was delivered into every household. That is insane beyond insane that is one of the most insane things i can like that is more insane than most like flat earth conspiracy theorists insane the, he's just fucking riffing at this point the people got in <laughs> but the people got into the supreme court as a result of presidents who were elected by the people yeah but those even the justices aren't elected True. right so you take a gamble with some of this sometimes but the way that a justice can interpret this if it was put up to a popular vote um, at the time, it, there's there's no possible way that Ruby Me uh, Meadle says how to join on stream chat. That is right on the screen, right there. Boop, demonmama.com forward slash live. It's super easy to join the on screen chat. The website is beautiful. We got tons of emo uh, of of beautiful emojis you can use. We'd love to have you on the site chat. Site chat is bumping always. We got a hell of a community up here. So please come join us. Demonmama.com forward slash live. That pornography would be considered speech. That's insanity. But this is this is a progressive doctrine. There's no possible way that conservatives in a conservative Christian nation, and you can see this in the more conservative Christian nations which exist right now, they're not allowing pornography. It's, well, I mean, it's would a no-go. Would you suggest that a majority of the American population would vote against its own constitution? Because if they... Yes. Well, at this point, yes. Well, at this point, yes, but... <laughs> Would you would you say so? I'm actually in the dark about this. Would you say so at the time that uh, I'm actually unsure of the exact history of the legalization of this? But let's say there was a point in time at which it was put to a judge or to the Supreme Court. Hey, we want to have these these lewd images of individuals engaged in degenerate acts in our in our newspapers or magazines or whatever, and and they decided yes at that point in time, uh, maybe a little bit prior to that. Do you suppose that the majority of American citizens? were actively hostile to their to to the 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 region the, the the constitution of the united states as such then oh because wait actually this is a great point remember how at the beginning of this um at the beginning of this segment i did a little statement on christian nationalism and i said that these people are the enemies of liberty that they will pretend publicly to care about free speech but then when you actually hear them talk about it they want to get rid of free speech and expression as soon as possible case in fucking point what Andrew is currently uh, uh, advocating for is a world in which it is illegal to consume pornography of any type. You're not allowed to look at naked people because Andrew Wilson doesn't want you to. It seems to me that if they aren't, then there's a tacit consent to the decisions of the people who are put into places of power as a consequence of the ordering of that constitution. No, well, no. Wait a second. So there's there's a lot of presuppositions which are driven in here, and I understand that this is done in question form. Mm -hmm. But let me address some of these concerns. My point here is to say that if people were actually voting on these issues, 
right? Just like we see with gay marriage sure. when they actually voted on that issue. They did not say that uh, they did not vote for gay marriage, not even in progressive places like California. OK, the Supreme Court. Except in my home state of Maine. In my home state of Maine, they did indeed. Made rulings on this, and that's what allowed it to go through. Sure. It's not the will of the people that this happened. And well, it's not. Well, this is this is why I, this is why I asked this question, though, because it seems to me when you're talking about the will of the people, you're not just talking about what they would vote for, given a given a specific plebiscite for a specific issue. Because of course, there's too many issues. Thank you, Beard Panda. And, I appreciate that a lot. A for lot. the population as a whole to be taking part actively in every single one, you you never get anything done. Um, moreover, it would be illegible to the vast majority of the population to be too specific, too complex, et cetera, et cetera. It seems to me that when we're talking about the will of the people, what we're talking about specifically is whether or not... I and mean, that sounds like you're for elitism. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Are you sure? Because it's not like you're yeah. saying the stupid plebs don't even understand what's going on. No, no, no. This, this occurred. This, so this annual and complex that they... Well, this you're an Eastern Orthodox. You believe you explicitly... How, what, are you, what is going on in this man's brain? Is this, is this supposed to be like a ha-ha hypocrisy? I got you. You laid out that you believe that there is a strict, uh, naturally existing uh, hierarchy that goes family, tribe, state, or family, tribe, town, I think, state, nation. You belong to a church in which there is a specific hierarchy in which there are people who are above you who tell you God's will. This guy is just a his his whole his brain is made of Swiss cheese. I don't believe anything that this motherfucker says. I think he's riffing constantly. I don't think he has a consistent view in his mind except I want power and I hate gay people and I want power so that I can hate gay people with power. This applies, this applies to even the most specialized bureaucrats, just because the the issues of government are so complicated and so specific and so wide ranging. Like we're we're not just talking about this like broad decisions. Like for instance, should uh, depictions of the naked human body and coitus be allowed in in publicly accessible media? We're we're talking about all of the decisions that lead into the the selection of examples, the 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 people who are responsible for making all the decisions in terms of who to admit to the court, who not to admit yeah, to no. the court. Yeah, no. What happens so is so this. Forth. Supreme Court justices are lifetime nominated, yeah. sure. okay? okay? As culture shifts, the viewpoint of these people tends to shift along with the culture. They don't, they don't tend to stay stagnant either. Or yes. they can use... Why do they keep showing, showing super chats on screen and then quickly getting rid of them? Um, because uh, these types of shows are desperate, in, in, incompetent, and lacking in aesthetic. Thank goodness you're watching a show right now that is exudes aesthetic, looks awesome, and doesn't have annoying random fucking pop-ups all the time. Isn't that great? Isn't it wonderful? Did you know you can support this show and you won't even make a pop-up appear? Pretty cool, right? Uh, older policy prescription or older worldviews or a more modernistic worldview in which to make these interpretations, okay? But generally speaking, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court justices, which are nominated at the time, when the presidents of these uh, of the nation nominated them, if you look at what they thought about degenerate issues, the public, they definitely were not voting in the presidents that 30 years. The Supreme Court justice would go ahead and OK uh, social degeneracy. That was not what the population was after at all. I'll grant all of that. But. If they were not opposed to the Constitution that gave these judges the power to do this. In fact, if they tacitly supported the Constitution that gave these judges the power to make this decision, are they not also, and this is the general argument for the legitimacy of these judges' decisions, including the ones recently that overturned Roe v. Wade, are they not tacitly also agreeing to the decisions of those judges since they have invested those judges with their will because it is transmitted through the Constitution to them? No, I don't think so. And especially if you have judges who are instituted who can be there cross-generationally, no, I don't think that this is... Thank you very, very much, Melody X Rain, for the Tier 1 sub. Give you your pop-up? I can't give you your pop-up, but how about I give you a bazinga? B -b 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 bazinga There you go. Done. Even within the spirit of what the Constitution is or what people think it is. Hmm. I don't even think most people are aware that the Supreme Court 
has lifetime nominees on it. I don't even think most people are aware of how the political system works, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't even think that they know. Horrifically. I think that and yet you're a nationalist? And this guy has no consistent views. He believes in the supremacy of a state, acknowledges when it's convenient for him that people do not understand the 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 mechanism that controls their lives and 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 says that as if it's a problem but then he's a hardline nationalist what, what the fuck what is he t what is he fucking talking about people in my state who don't know who the uh, prime minister of canada yeah was doesn't sur ago. doesn't surprise me most no. people don't know there's something uh, a bit like I, an elitist danger it most people don't know this well it's not elitism it's just kind of stating an obvious um fact which is that most I people agree. don't even know how the governing system operates but when given a choice for degeneracy or against degeneracy they seem to move to against degeneracy. lily tenshu says andrew display displays his belief in his position as a member of the elite look i gotta be 100 percent real this man is not a member of the elite he likes i think he thinks that he is i think that in his fantasy world that he's invented for himself he sees himself as some kind of like uh you know like important person but my man is sitting in a dark room chain smoking cigarettes and arguing on the internet um and he doesn't even have like a nice mic or a nice setup or anything like so he's definitely not a member of the elite uh, this is I think this is a like a Michael Knowles human chamber pot type situation where like um, if Andrew Wilson got the world that he desired, like he would at best get to be like the guy who scrubs the stones of the king's chamber with his teeth, you know, like that would be his um, that would be the world that he gets to live in when other when another larger religion conquered his uh, like pathetic religion that's obsessed over how many fingers you use to make the symbol of the cross. Uh, you know, he would be lucky if he got to continue, you know, I don't know, uh, <laughs> I don't even know. He gets, he gets to be, he gets to be the human toilet paper roll for the local baron. Generacy. Even, even the leftist elitist scumbags seem to do this Sunday. For instance, you don't want people to walk around naked, right? <laughs> The local baron will just unroll his tongue like he's like like a cartoon, like just like pulling it out like a roll of toilet paper and folding it over itself. <laughs> would say that this in some way violates some social norm or some bullshit, right? So you would enforce the general morality and tell them they have to wear clothes, wouldn't you? Uh, probably not. Although, like depending on who you asked, wait, no, could be you wouldn't. Pretty far. You'd just let people walk around naked. <laughs> <laughs> Somniostatic and Tim Cooney both at the same time said it's a living <laughs> I'd probably have some objection to people walking around naked yeah oh you would yeah would, you would yeah. have some objection to it right so why though what are they doing wrong well that's 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 an excellent question so for example there was yeah, once upon a time wrong? a fine that you could be charged for appearing on a beach as a woman with your midriff showing um at one point with your legs showing i don't know if there was a fine for that but at a certain point that was that was heavily discouraged um it's not clear to me that there is an objective threshold beyond which public nudity is acceptable or beyond which it is immoral moreover it does seem that it's very contingent on a set of attitudes that are themselves largely accidental um i don't think you would be particularly offended at a a woman not wearing so, a scarf in public for instance wait yes? a second yeah. Wait a second. You're saying again that your system fails when it comes to particulars. No, not at all. Well, this is a particular. But you seem to think that there's an arbitrary threshold, right? When well, you can I easily, back, you can easily make your... a un universal threshold. You could just say that you have to be covered except for your arms and your legs, for instance. I don't think there'd be any objection to that. I could, you but could, I could you also... Could make all of these types of things, and then it wouldn't be yeah. arbitrary anymore, right? Well, I mean fair enough i mean it would be entirely arbitrary in the sense that at some point somebody would have chosen oh wait are we on cigarette six did i miss cigarette six to mark these things out and to assign yeah but all arbitrary means is absent condition. a system right no no so arbitrary arbitrary, arbitrary means very very specifically by choice by decision 
So not absent a system. Arbitrary means literally, like, that's why we call judges arbiters. It's the result of human It's based judgment. on random choice within a personal whim rather than any reason or system. Well, that's we use, we, use the, we use the term arbitrary to refer to the randomness of it precisely because it doesn't have legitimacy, because it is the result of choice. It's the result of personal whim rather Didn't than... Didn't you debate this guy um, on gender? Yeah, one time I agreed to a, uh, a platform. There was a new debate platform that was coming up. Um, and I agreed to go on there, and they put me up against this guy with the argument of uh, whether or not trans people, whether or not trans women were women, and uh, it was incredibly funny. The up the uh, the debate is still up on my channel. You can just search uh, "Big Papa Fascist Demon Mama" on my channel. You can just search his you know his name on my channel. Um, it was a it was a hilarious debate, and it got completely derailed because. Um, this insane, uh, 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 washed out TikToker uh, started spamming the super chats with like deranged questions. It was it was very funny. It was a very funny debate. Uh, let's just say that Andrew did about uh, he did about as good, um, he did about as good uh, as he's doing here. Maybe worse. I don't know. Hard to say. System or reason, I but then every single system that's ever been implemented uh, was done arbitrarily, I guess, by that metric. I'll be right back. Yeah, I have to hit the restroom. Degree, I'll be right back. So, so I mean, that, uh, it, it just seems like it's a point anything. that has no merit. And what I'm saying is that when it comes to particulars, again, in this particular case, you're well, saying, I suppose, well, listen, if I may, I suppose, this, is super, this yeah. is super complex because it's arbitrary. And now that we have a particular here, we don't know where the threshold should be. It's the same kind of arguments which are used against pornography. Well, I wouldn't even say it's complex. I universalism, even, yeah. we could make it it's simple, yeah. right? I got you. I wouldn't even say it's complex. I think the point, though, is that if you're asking me to specifically target specific things for regulation, given the fact that the resolution at which we're targeting things seems to be on the basis of some people's decisions here and there, which when we reflect on the history of people making such decisions, we know are not consistent throughout history. We know they change radically with time and place. I would question whether or not it's a condition of failure that a system of ethics doesn't specifically target all of the same things for control. Maybe I deliberately allow a wide berth for different types of expression and configuration and so on and so forth. But I do so deliberately. I, I regard certain, like, uh, let's say, mediums between different extremes, total nudity, uh, full-on burqa, let's say, in which there is an appropriate range of types of dress that I will allow. And maybe like some scale. of them make maybe some of them make me uncomfortable, but there's a difference between what makes me comfortable and what's appropriate mm -hmm. to legislate for other people, right? Or for what right. makes for like a stable society, and so on and so forth. I, it's not clear to me that hyper specifying <coughs> these particular levels for regulation uh, or the failure to do so necessarily actually constitutes a failure of a system. Um, in fact, a system may work which better. Which is why, yeah. Which is why, when it comes to particulars, the progressive left is such an objective failure and why it is that we can't seem to regulate out things in a society which we don't like that we want to get regulated out the people have vast agreement that we want out of here that seem to move into the systems and unification of both the ethics and the religion which most reflects the population but the problem is is we quibble over the particulars for the universals and it's like we don't really have to do that it's not necessary to do that and so what Christians would, would posit is this. We would say, okay, I understand that you want to have kind of this granule, nuanced particularism system, which is on some kind of scale, uh, and it becomes kind of an irreducibly complex issue because of this scale and this type of thing. Very difficult for us to figure out where the line is, so we just kind of allow it, right, or whatever. I don't see why Thank you, that's Glitchy. a better system or a more reasonable system or a better or in any way superior to a system that has universal codes for conduct how people need to behave uh, inside of society or why it is that we should allow secularists to maintain power instead of Christians maintaining power I don't see what makes you better huh? qualified for that or why it's a better what is he talking about this is this is like the weirdest most like wishful thinking shit I don't know why we should allow secular. He keeps saying secularists. I think he's just struggling with the pronunciation. I think he means secularists. Um, but he's like, why should we let them maintain power? Dude, 
they are maintaining maintaining power because you don't all agree all of your christians don't all agree on shit you guys it's not like christians don't vote christians love to fucking vote okay that's like the one thing they do okay they love fucking voting you guys don't agree on everything as it turns out especially especially with your particular flavor of christianity uh, Eastern Orthodox isn't exactly the most popular in America. So you can like smugly be like, well, you know, the, the Protestants, they kind of stink and I don't like them, but they don't, they think you stink and there's more of them than you. Your tribe is getting grugged on by the fucking Protestants. Sorry, bro. Society because you're in charge. That's the problem. I completely agree. So I think the question then is given the fact and we'll just lay on an additional piece of trivia. Given the fact that at one point in time, Christianity itself was subject to the exact same criticism, namely it involved... Cigarette break, seven. Uh, Cigarette seven. ...that were considered sacrosanct by the surrounding uh, culture. Um, well, that's happened again and again and again. Oh, it has indeed. That's not a mark against it or for it, but the point is... Okay, is we're going to do it. This is our chance. This is actually our chance. We have an opportunity to test out the death counter... But we're going to call it SIGs. Wait, hold on. Holes in lung. No, it's kidding. Yeah, we'll just go SIGs. We'll do the SIGs counter, okay? Bam. You guys ready? We're at what? Seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we are. We're at SIGs seven. Wait, why is the seven so far away? I didn't move that big. Boop. Closer. Bam. Okay, now we can lock it up. There we go, everybody. Yeah, the death sticks, yeah. Taking place before. How do we select which resolution of arbitrary control is the best one? You mean when we get down to the particulars? <laughs> well, not just no. down to the particulars. See, what I'm, try what I'm trying to well, highlight I, no, here... I, I get it. This is, uh, well, this is uh, a Just question. very quickly, because I just want to make sure yeah. that you do before you, before you press on. Mm -hmm. The issue is not how do we select what the right kinds of particular judgments are. The question is, for me at least, how do we even decide at what level of granularity are we mm -hmm. controlling for the particulars? So let's kind of dive into this. Okay. So this is the um, the problem with this. Is I, I'm not going to say this. I am going to say it. But uh, essentially, it's a fallacious argument because it's uh, it's irreducible complexity. It's like, why can't we have this system? We can't have the system because huh? um, if we get into kind of the granularity, we don't know where one thing ends and another thing begins. And therefore, neither thing can can exist. That's uh, a fallacy from irreducible complexity. But I'm going to actually answer this question because it doesn't really matter ultimately. Ultimately, what we're what I'm saying, what I'm postulating is that Christians are looking at this. You could call it Christian futurism. And what we're saying is ultimately whether or not okay, everybody take note of this, that's going to that that must be a new branding that they're trying Christian. For, so it, it was Christian nationalism then it became Christian popularism. Now they're calling it. Um, now they're calling it Christian futurism. That let's remember that one. We're getting a little glimpse into their world right now. The terms they're going to try and launder this garbage through. Christian futurism. That is the dumbest shit I've ever. Whatever. Leftists are going to uh, say, "Well, these these issues are so complex." Yep. It's. I know that we've been watching this for a lot longer because you know I do a lot of commentary. I make lots of jokes. I keep you laughing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, this debate has been going on for 46 minutes, and he has smoked seven cigarettes in that time. X, and they have kind of so many nuances that there's really no way for us to come to a resolution. I think the left is thinking themselves out of existence that progressives have thought or think literally uh, through their own policies are kind of exterminating themselves. They're really only in power in the least densely populated places on planet Earth. Um, He's doing I this mean, again. basically, that's the only places that they are and where they have institutional power. But they seem to think that because of this institutional power, that they're safe, that they don't have anything to worry about. The problem what is, is, is they have about? to utilize 
mass migration in order to replace their kind of population centers. So the migrants that they're pulling from are theists. It's a big problem that they have. Wait, he's repeating himself. Wait, wait, he already said this before. Oh my God, what? I said the migrants that are pulling from are theists. And I think that over the next 100 years, 150 years, that the left is going to ultimately have to crumble anyway because of their materialist outlook. They're not able to maintain their systems long term. They have no longevity. They can't convince people to have children. And they also seem to want to convince people to have as much promiscuous sex. So basically they can have the activity without the reproduction side of it. Now, theists have the opposite view of this. They're like, you can't do the reproductive we, uh, activity. We're, we're about to go down a rabbit hole. I need to hang run on, to we're not going down a rabbit hole. I'm going to tie but it. But I, I desperately need to run to the washroom. Can we, like, can you hold that thought for, like, two minutes? Yeah, I can't. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Well, in the meantime, while he's doing that, uh, I want to remind you guys, please send those super chats in. We will get to all oh, of boy, them. Let's find out. Uh, I see Patch Duras has sent in a few. Trust me, bro. We'll get to all of them. We'll address all of your super chats at the end. Uh, and it looks like Mr. E is uh, MIA right now, so if you want to call in, uh, you can still tag the other mods in the Discord, and they'll be able to get you a stream link so you can call in directly uh, and ask your question to either debater. But uh, got about 35 minutes left in the open dialogue portion of this debate. Hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. It's been really easy on my end. I haven't actually had to moderate anything. I've just been talking shit in chat. So uh, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, uh, <laughs> President Sunday, for making it easy thus far. Um, but yeah, it's been a good debate, so hope you guys are enjoying. And uh, again, relax, Patch Duris. We're going to read all of the Super Chats that you sent in, even the ones where you're whining and crying. Even the ones where you're whining and crying. We will oh, yeah, read if all I miss the him, If I miss him lighting up a new SIG because I'm looking at chat, you guys got to let me know if I miss one. We were on seven. I don't know if he let up a new one yet. So, yeah, I've been busy banning people. Yeah, well, okay. President Sunday's back. Continue. Continue, gentlemen. Yeah, by the way, Sunday, um, I do appreciate it. I, can you hear me? I can indeed. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I know yep. you weren't. I... Not an Android says, I'll be honest. President Sunday isn't doing a great job in this debate. Well, there's still time left. This is a long debate. Uh, I will say that I think President Sunday so far has been giving a lot of room for Andrew to just talk. But there also hasn't been really much to latch onto, at least um, at least not like I don't know like I, I do think that President Sunday could have gone in on a number of these different um parts, but I think also that President I don't know we'll see where it goes I don't know I heard that this debate get is like good um so I I imagine there's uh, you know it picks up, but um I will say that President Sunday has played a very uh you know, defensive uh, position so far and has kind of let Andrew Wilson uh, uh, say, you know, what he wants. But also at the same time, there is some value in that, right? Like um, B Big Papa Fascist is not very convincing here. Like, um, like n none of his arguments have been even consistent. He's been, like, raging at invisible enemies. So maybe it works to, like, his audience on a very small level. Like, however many people are regular watchers of Andrew Wilson's show, maybe they know what he's talking about. But I can't imagine that this has broad appeal. I don't know that it would make a lot of sense to most people. He's not even dog-whistling well. It's weird. Based comrade Mark said says, Paul's ego saw your debate review of his Vosh debate and was super triggered. He said he would debate me. <laughs> Do you have that? I would <laughs> I'd talk to I'd talk to Paul's ego. I'd gladly talk to Paul's ego. If you got a clip of that, I'd love to see it. Let's continue. Let's continue. I know you weren't feeling well today. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, Zen isn't either. He's There's been a bug. Yeah, I was talking with him before everybody. the show started, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate you coming on anyway. But anyway, uh, um, must go on. so that so that we can get back to this, I Please. guess I, what I'm looking to see is if you actually have any criticisms itself of Christian nationalism or Christian populism. What is the actual criticisms here is I feel like I've laid out a pretty good grounding system for what it is that we're after. And what my proposal is, is that cross-generationally, we don't have to do that much 
except just kind of have children and try to give them as much of our value structure as we possibly can because I think that your ideology is going to go extinct. That's what I think. The numbers seem to show this. So That's such a that's such a funny also, oh my god. What did he put on like an anime filter? Why did his eyes get so big all of a sudden? Has he just been like falling asleep anyway? Um uh uh, uh it's really interesting. And 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 Christians kind of tell on themselves because um they literally can only think of the world in terms of of basically breeding. Um they don't understand that like um the the ideologies that he's like vaguely referring to don't um don't build themselves on a, like centralized indoctrination through the family. Um most of them are built they 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 are they spread and they grow by other means. Christianity relies on aggressive breeding policies basically. And even then it doesn't always succeed. Because um Christianity thrived. Its strongest periods uh in history was when illiteracy was through the roof um and when basically uh the fa like like local patriarchs had an or, or I should say patriarchs had an incredible amount of local control so a dad can uh you know can get get a you know a guy can get a wife have a whole bunch of kids and then he can control everything with those kids because they're dirt farmers and if they want to be able to eat food they have to keep in the good graces of dad so he'll let them have the farm uh instead of kicking them out and such similar structures um and so you know christianity uh relies on people having tons and tons of kids that are strictly indoctrinated into christianity and then those kids have tons and tons of kids who are strictly indoctrinated in christianity um other worldviews do not rely on that they they don't rely on strict indoctrination and isolation and it's funny because Christianity runs into this problem more than anybody else. He believes that because um, because he has a straw man in his mind that like the the gay progressive liberals don't have any kids because they just ass fuck all the time, which based. But um, but that's his like straw man uh, of of every person who's not a Christian. But um, in reality, the truth is, is that Christians have to continually isolate themselves from the rest of the world, which means, um, first of all, that they increasingly uh, they increasingly fall out of step with the rest of all society, technologically, intellectually, um, you know, even even so far as fashion, um, they, they become uh, alienated from the rest of the world. And then when if they don't then their children naturally come into contact with other worldviews that are better and stronger and more useful than them. Why do you think that uh, Christians right now are so insanely obsessed with trans and gay kids specifically? They're afraid that their kids are going to uh, you know, go on the internet and become gay or trans, when in reality what it is is that trans and gay children just exist and sometimes if they live up if they grow up in an environment that's constantly telling them that they're wrong for just being they will come in contact with a different worldview and they will recognize oh my god i don't have to live like my shitty cigarette smoking fucking uh pack uh entire pack of cigarettes in two hours father uh i can actually live a happy life and accept myself and have a cute uh gay boyfriend and live a happy life turns out there is more than one way to uh, propagate worldviews. And uh, there's actually massive drawbacks to the breeding-focused worldview that a lot of these uh, b morally and intellectually bankrupt uh, Christian extremists uh, adhere to. Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. We're going to take a small moment because I need to see Paul's ego getting mad at me. I know that this is a distraction, but this is I, I need to see it. Pwn her ass, please. Thank you. Is that what you Too yes. dumb to even ask me a fucking question. I want to make sure I got a good question here. 
Dude, TJ, use your uh, fucking uh, connections or whatever and get Demon Mama on the show so I can pwn her ass, please. Thank you. Is that what you want? Oh, shit. Dude, I want a piece of that fucking Demon Mama ass, dude. She's, she fucking got, she's got, she got my goat the other day, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, I got you, my man. Did I? Got under your skin. Oh, why? I just, just that fucking George W. Bush is like, like Trump was worse than George W. Bush comment. Oh, I see. Like, I ain't saying Trump was the fucking greatest president. He was horrible, in, in fact, but he was, uh, George W. Bush, he was not. And to say I that say is that? just historically ignorant. And it's being used right now as like a fucking bludgeon against people who are having fucking moral problems with voting for a dude that's materially supporting a genocide and won't stop it. I think I I think what I said was that jo that Donald Trump was worse in some ways than George Bush and that his movement was worse. Um I don't know if I did I maybe I did, but I mean let me think about that. Was George Bush a worse president than Donald Trump? I don't know. I feel like I feel like Donald Trump was really fucking bad. Like it's true that Donald Trump didn't do um didn't do the Iraq war, but Donald Trump did a lot of other things. And he also, uh, he also ushered in an era of our country where we are completely and utterly dis we're like, not, not, not the entire country, but, but like the GOP itself is utterly disconnected from reality. Um, like Donald Trump ushered in, like his actions brought about the, the like current, era of of misinformation derangement and of course there's the supreme court too which george bush didn't do i don't know anyway let's continue you know and it's being used like oh yeah well yeah he sucks but Trump is the greatest evil that's ever been visited upon mankind. Dude. Like he's a piece of shit, but Genghis Khan, he is not. Okay, like let's quietly. Be look, Joe Biden quietly behind the scenes is working on stopping it, dude. Yeah. Quietly behind the scenes. Look, quietly, quietly I'm trying to figure scenes. it out. Yeah, I mean, Paul, look, you know, maybe you should try doing diplomacy. it loudly, Joe. Maybe quietly ain't working because it doesn't seem to be stopping. So maybe loudly next time. Maybe Look. try this. Mm -hmm. Instead of making this fucking address to the American people, pick up the phone that's right next to you on your desk and say, get me BB Netten Yahoo. And when he answers, you say, shut it down now or I'm cutting the fucking purse string. And then it stops. How hard is that? Well, I'm glad he admitted that I pissed him off. Here's my comment on George W. Bush. Let's hear what I actually said. I'm gonna try, I, I, don't, I don't think I said because his argument is just bad. Even if he remembers what George Bush was like and it was bad, it's just there's just so many fronts on which Donald Trump was worse. Donald Trump was everything that George Bush did and worse. Well, I guess Obama I so. was not everything that George Bush did and worse. Obama was some things that George Bush did and some things better. Biden has been some things that George Bush and Trump did, but better on other things. His argument is just, he's just mad. He's triggered now. It's so ridiculous. He's lost in the sauce and he's gone full nostalgia critic. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd stand by what I said there. Because I don't really think there's any way in which... What, what substantial way did George Bush... Uh, did Donald Trump, like, revert on anything that George Bush did? It was more like a uh, like a matter of chance, right? Like the 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 that nine eleven happened under Bush. If nine eleven happened under Trump, I think that Trump would have taken the exact same actions that Donald that uh that I think that Donald Trump would have taken the same actions that George Bush did. He had he had he 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 brought in the same he had the same loyalties. And, and, and by the way, I'm totally open to have a conversation, debate, throw down, whatever with Paul's ego. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm glad he admitted that I was able to get under his skin. You know, that's, 
that says something. I, I respect that. I do get under people's skin. I have that uh I have that I have that effect on some people. It's true. So but I would be totally open to that. If there are viewers of uh Deep Fat Fried, you guys can tell you guys can tell uh uh, uh Paul's ego I'd be totally down to have that discussion. Um yeah. And I'd i I'd, I'd be totally down to discuss what I said about George Bush as well. Um, and in fact, I'd, I'd even be willing to like, I'd be willing to sit down and do some, like, do some proper research on it. I just, I don't, I don't know when, when, when he says that George Bush was worse than Donald Trump, I just wonder what he, like in the context of what we were talking about there, it was about, it was comparing Obama and, and, and the steps they are taken. I mean, George Bush, uh, George Bush didn't, uh, you know, didn't pass an explicit ban on trans people, um, I don't know. Yeah, totally. That'd be great, Northern Angler. You can tell him. You can send him this clip if you want to. I'd be totally down to have that combo. I like TJ a lot. You know, TJ and I get along well. So. George Bush took us into Iraq. That's what Paul will focus on, almost certain. Yeah, but... Okay, can we be honest? Do we really, does anybody really think that Donald Trump would have done differently? Like, Donald Trump loved fucking bluster. Remember when Donald Trump fucked up the Iran deal against the advice, against the advising of even other Republicans who were basically like, this is our best shot at, uh, at controlling a nuclear situation in, the, in, in, you know, between two countries that are like actively at risk of nuclear war. And he was just like, uh, fuck it. It smells bad. I don't like the trade. Let's fuck it up just for fun. I hate you. Like, do we really think that guy would have made better decisions when it comes to 9-11? Yeah, Trump tried to ban Muslims entirely from immigration. Like, that's like, George Bush didn't even, didn't even get to that point. I don't know. I I recognize that some of this is speculative, but I think that I think that like trying to claim that I'm like historically wrong for saying that Donald Trump basically did everything that George Bush did and other things. I don't know. I don't feel like Donald Trump was like a, a maverick who went against the like policies of the existing GOP in any way. Anyway, I'm I'm totally down to have that conversation. That would be a really cool one. Yeah. And of course, yeah, then you have to consider like the coup shit. Like the January 6th stuff. Um the fact that like the fact that like he's now been multiplicity multi mul multiplicatively uh indicted. I don't know, but I'd be down. Anyway, we got to get back to the actual one. But thank you for sending me that. Uh, I uh, Anybody who's a, a deep, fat, fried listener, let them know I'm 100% down to have a talk. That sounds, fun as, uh, that sounds fun as hell. I'll be honest. That sounds like a good time. Danny Fallen says, Bush and Trump were both monsters. Bush paved the way so that Trump could exist. I could see the argument that Bush led the way to deeper fascism, but then if, but if you make that argument, then he would have to admit that Trump was the deeper fascism that Bush was just paving the way for, which would make Trump worse by that argument, right? Alora says his lawyers are arguing that he could kill a political rival, rival with SEAL Team 6 if he wasn't convicted in the Senate. Uh, he'd be fine legally speaking. Oh yeah, there's that too. That's a fresh one though. That's a really fresh one. I would brush up on Bush era policies. Yeah, I'll do that. I'd be totally down to do that. And I'll and and if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. But I just I just don't really see it. I don't really see a strong argument 
to be like, it's historically wrong. I'm super pissed off. Like, I can understand disagreeing with me, but being super mad about it? I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyway, let's get back to the debate, shall we? Let's get back to the debate. I wanted to take that little break. We can cut that out of the final version, Danny. We don't have to have that left in there. Um, we can just chop, chop that out. But I, I'm totally down to talk with uh, Paul Zigo. Absolutely. You could argue Reagan is worse than Trump, but that's all hindsight. I mean, I think in some ways the argument for Reagan is easier because Reagan did so much deregulation um, that neither Bush nor Trump uh, would have been able to do but also that was trump's thing too like trump is trump set up for the fucking uh choking out of the the postal service like that's horrible and of course the aids crisis all right anyway totally down to talk to paul let's get back into the debate uh, last thing we were talking about in the debate for those who have forgotten already was, um, I don't remember. Who cares? Let's go. Um, well, I mean, once upon a time, not so long ago, the numbers were showing the opposite. Ah, uh, yeah. Porn. That's right. Uh, Andrew Wilson was talking about degeneracy and porn and how, uh, it's, it was a plot by the Supreme Court to make porn legal. So I guess my, my criticism such as when would be. when were they showing the opposite because every everything that i look at shows the scale from the 1800s current that the pseudonym thank you so much for the incredibly generous subscription to the chunky imp the chunky imp level on youtube thank you so much has it been six months already it's a privilege to help support a channel tearing down the establishment and playing kingdom hearts songs on keyboard thank you i haven't played a kingdom hearts song in a while i gotta do that soon thank you so much pseudonym appreciate that very much birth rate has done this like well, the birth lot. the birth rate has done that but church attendance has not done that and i think one of the one of the things that you're one of the things that you're uh well sorry actually it has you're correct that's what i mean um one of the uh one of the things that you're you're kind of up against here is sort of twofold the first is more a question the second is what i at least perceive to be a inherent contradiction in the project with christianity itself the first one is that let's presume you're right and that Christians will continue to reproduce in, in numbers vastly, outnumbering uh, those of their, their secular and other otherwise uh, competitors. And let's assume- Yeah, I didn't pre-watch this. I heard that it was good. Um, a couple people told me this was a fun one, so I didn't pre-watch this. I wanted to save this to watch with you all. That they are very successful, at least for the formative years of their life. In imbuing them with uh, Christian attitudes and Christian ethics and Christian belief and so on and so forth. Once again, at one point in time, that was a state of affairs that already obtained, and yet nonetheless, uh, a, a a vast population of secularists and atheists and skeptics and various degrees of Christians who are otherwise not as entirely naively on board with the with the whole program before it came about. And so the, the immediate question that I have is... Oh, so it is going to get wild then. Mithra with the five gifted memberships. Thank you so much for supporting this show, which is free to the public and viewer supported. Thank you so very much. And if you are listening right now to Demon Monk, make sure that you're subscribed down below and also make sure that you press like. Thank you so much. Uh, it's what Shigor says in um, No Country for Old Men. It's like if the rule you followed led you to this, of what use was the rule? How do you how do you evade the occurrences that led to this? Oh, true. Zoe Vex says, Star "Sorry for returning to this, but you could also argue that Trump killed far more Americans by fumbling COVID policies that resulted in many more deaths than the entire Iraq War." Our policy could have also spread disease to allied to allies and other countries. That's a really fucking good point. That is a really good point. I'm actually going to put that point. That's a really good point, Zoe Vex. Uh, I'm going to put that in my prep, prep document. That's a really good fucking Simply idea. by repopulating. I feel like I talked about that in the original one, too. Maybe I didn't, though. I don't fucking remember. That was a long react, and it was a while ago. Your country with 
with raised Christians. Well, this... actually, you guys are the key. So, um, from my worldview, this actually makes sense. You guys are the kind of one of the best things that ever happened to Christianity, whether you know it or not. We had a Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Reformation is what led to kind of all these different cults who started pushing a lot of this egalitarian principles and a lot of these kinds of um, uh, degenerate principles and things like this. A lot of the sexual liberation people think come from the 60s it really didn't. It came from the Protestant cults in the 1800s. Dude. Dude, come on. That is... Oh, this is his wife's book stuff, by the way. Um, this is what his wife's book is about. His wife's book is about, like, um, oh, my God. There's a part in his wife's book where she says um, she's talking about um, references, like, references to other, to, like, go like gods and how, like, feminism is, uh, feminism comes from, um, occult practice and at one point she's talking about Kali the like Hindu god Kali is like Kali is a feminine god who cuts off the heads of men and wears he, wears the heads of men like a belt and she interestingly runs around the battlefield naked and has her tongue sticking out wouldn't you know that the rolling stones a, a a a a band a, you know heart and soul of the rock and roll movement also has as their logo the stuck out tongue just like Kali I'm not I'm not even joking with you I re like I am paraphrasing but that's the connection that she makes she makes the connection that Kali sticks out her tongue and that rock and roll was sexually uh degenerate and that they that that like some rock and roll bands reference uh like hindu religion and also that the Ro the rolling stones have a tongue as their icon which is a reference to kali and kali is a woman god who overpowers men and this fundamentally shows you that feminism is actually about conquering men and women being in charge instead anyway uh, yeah. Let's continue. And they were the ones who kind of proliferated degeneracy through their kind of sexual cult behavior. You could find all sorts of references to this. My wife's book, Occult Feminism, she tracked all of these different independent cults oh, down. Hey, there it is. There, there it is. There's the plug. Even which existed in New York and their sexual practices, which were absolute insanity. This reformation happened because the Catholic Church, which was not in unison with the Orthodox Church, the Eastern Church, um, they were doing things they weren't supposed to do. And so, of course, Martin Luther broke away from that. But remember that this was recent. The Protestant Reformation was recent. Yeah, that's what that's basically that's it. If I had to summarize, you know, if I had to summarize one of the greatest religious schism schisms in the history of the world, I would basically summarize it as. Well, you know, the Catholics, they weren't really doing everything they were supposed to do. And, you know, so Martin Luther just kind of, he was kind of done with them, you know. And then they had a bunch of weird sex and feminism happened and welcome to now. Let me have another cigarette. But Protestantism was able to spread in the West almost like a cancer, like a plague. And because they didn't have really good cohesion. Also, hey. One more point to my fucking foresight, okay? One more point of wisdom to my foresight, all right? Remember when I said back in the intro section that Christian nationalism is terrible for other Christians? Here's this guy describing all Protestants and even Catholics by, our, by extension as cancer. What do you what do you think this guy would do with all those troublesome Protestants once he gets his Christian world and gets to and gets to have his religion on top, so to say? Interesting, right? It's kind of like my summary of Christian nationalism in the beginning predicted almost the entire line of argument that he's made so far. Wild, right? Coherent theology, uh, secularists were kind of able to always uh, infiltrate 
and kind of destroy this theology. And what's happening right now is you're seeing Protestantism on the decline, and you're seeing Protestantism on the decline globally, except for a few different sects. And so I'm actually for this. I'm actually glad <laughs> that it's being decimated because the actual churches, which have ecclesiastical authority and ecclesiastical methods for law, and believe in the concept of symphony. Sounding like a little bit of an elitist there, my man. That doesn't sound very popular. That doesn't sound very populist to me. Remember when he was calling it Christian populism, and now he's talking about ecclesiastical authority? That is an explicitly elitist worldview. The idea that you have a select class of people who get to decide your religion for you, that is explicitly not populism. This guy is brain soup. And it's funny because there's just no consistency in his worldview. Everything that he's saying is just a contradiction of something he said earlier. It's laughable. Yeah, are growing like weeds. And this is what the trends show. So it actually does not surprise. Uh, the SIG counter has stayed at seven because we haven't seen him lift up the cigarette, or at least I haven't. And also we paused for a bit. It surprised me that because there's a discord in theology that things go haywire. Uh, but they tend to correct themselves, especially as people fall away from these institutions for more traditional Oh, Yo, thank you, Mother Mirset. But I put the ball back into your court because the problem there is that the original Catholic Church, which had all these advantages that you say they they now have as opposed to the Protestant sects that emerged from them, nonetheless gave birth to that same Protestantism. They were vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They were vulnerable to internal corruptions that sowed the seeds of their own destruction so yeah, everything well it didn't sow the seeds of their destruction ultimately well cer but, certainly the destruction of their hegemony yeah well yeah but here's the kind of poison pill to this is that there was a new world to escape away from the church too mm. unless you're going to colonize fucking mars in the next hundred years which i doubt the 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 colonizing of the new world saved the catholics not the other way around the the new the the colonization of the new world acted as a pressure release valve because otherwise further open conflict between Protestants and Catholics would have continued. There is the, like that would the pressure relief valve was for the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church was wiping sweat away, going, "Oh God, thank God those 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 Protestants went somewhere else." It wasn't the Protestants going, "Oh, thank God we can go over here." They were like, "Oh, that's convenient." And now there are there's an entire fucking world of Protestant nations. I don't know. This guy's got a weird worldview. It was literal centuries of bloody conflict over Protestants versus Catholics. The relief was from the Catholics. Oh, dude. Oh, God. There's no new world to escape to. You're not going to live under ocean, and you're not going to live in the clouds. You're going to be right here, and we've discovered everything on land, basically, that there is to discover. There's oh, totally. no new continents we're going to come across, and Antarctica is not in the next 150 years going to be populated by humanity. So there is no escape. There is no kind of Puritan running from the Anglican persecution of the church, and they're able to find brand new land in which to culminate their ideology. That's all gone. I mean, certainly, but the the reason why they were that able... was the advantage, though, right? And this well, not, not the is sole not advantage. Gone. I mean, one of the reasons why, for example, they were able to take America was precisely because there was already a dominant naval power in the region. No, like we're we're, we're, we're... England was not Catholic. Um, it was Anglican. It was it was Anglican. Yes, but yeah, my, but my... that is Catholic. No, oh, dude, dude, they set up an anti-pope. Oh man, this guy's got the mad cope. He can't, oh God, the brain rot, the fucking brain rot. How can you sit there and talk about fucking moral purity and consistency and then go, yeah, the uh, Anglicans are totally Catholic though. They, they had a fucking king who invented a thing he called an anti-pope. Oh God. God, these, oh God, this is so embarrassing. It's so pathetic. It's just the king's, the king's the pope in Anglicanism. So the king wanted to be able to get divorced, so he started his own Catholic church where uh, he became the pope, essentially. That's Anglicanism. That seems like a, a worse schism than Protestantism generally. Um... <laughs> well, I mean, not really. They're still, <laughs> they still have like a relationship with him, and no, not really. It's not the same thing as a, a complete and total... So we're not we're not saying yeah. Orthodox Catholics don't even say that Protestants aren't Christians, right? We kind of grudgingly give them that. 
What we're saying is that they're following the wrong theology. Dude, dude, you just said they were a cancer. You're not fooling anybody. Also, fucking Protestants, the, the hatred is mutual. The Protestants hate your fucking ass. They think your outfits look stupid. They think your stupid hand symbols are fucking idolatry. They think your churches are representative of, uh, of, of, of like, base greed. You're never... Oh, God, these people are so dumb. It's well, incredible. Wrong doctrine, so ultimately they end up with really bad conclusions. I'm trying so hard. The fedora is floating closer. The fedora, and I'm like, ah! Just like anybody who follows bad theology and bad doctrines. Certainly, but, but it seems, ultimately, it seems, but ultimately, the, it seems the argument you're making right now is more practical than ethical. It was not. Oh, it was new sig! That cigarette eight. What? Why didn't it work? That cigarette eight. Excuse me? Oh, that's why. It's cigarette eight. Wait, why is the button not working? Why is my button not working? Hey. My button, it's not. Oh, the button's not working. Why is it not? Oh, maybe that's why. Hey, that's fucked up. Oh, I didn't break the cigarette counter. That's stupid. Hold on a second. Why is it not working? That's so dumb. It should be working. Hold on. Oh, I know. I bet I know why. Wait a minute. Hold on. Is this working? No, that's working. So why isn't this one working? That doesn't make any sense. It's supposed to work. Yeah, there's that. There's that one. Okay. Then I go. That's the one. No, that should be working. Boink. Did it go up? The SIG counter, it broke. None of the buttons are working. I don't get it. Okay, hold on. I can do this. I think I can fix it. Okay, the button's just not working. Well, that stinks. But I can manually do it. Well, I can manually do it. We're on eight. Let's continue. Not like we're not belying an ethical argument, but it seems like we're, we're really situated on the practical right now. There is a survival. Yeah. Advantage. So Christian futurism is utilizing the practical. Mother Mir set with five with the five dollars. Not gonna lie, it feels kind of kind of odd to say that I've watched the same content for so long. But that goes to show you what great videos will do for you. Much love. Much love right back to you. Thank you for supporting the show. And I like to think that I keep my show evolving and interesting. So maybe that's why you've watched for so long. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Yeah. To get to the ends of the ethical, yes. But but specifically <laughs> by the ends of the ethical, we mean the domination of the sect. So what I'm what I'm kind of highlighting here is it seems to me that at the very least in this conversation so far, we haven't and maybe you want to provide this, we haven't really been provided with an argument for why it would have staying power. Maybe you reproduce more Christians, but how do you make them stay Christian, either in this generation or in future well, generations? Well, let's assume that I'm wrong, mm -hmm. and it only has one year's worth of staying power, right? What I'm outlining is a goal, right. and the goal is to move towards this system because I don't think that there's anything morally reprehensible or wrong with it. And so what I'm looking for is a criticism for what I'm, what I'm what my goals here are that are actually wrong or criticisms for why it would be immoral for me to move towards those goals, because I don't feel like you have any of those. Yes, criticisms. I don't feel like you think that there's anything wrong with me saying that Christians should be in charge, that Christians ought to be able to rule how they see fit. They ought to be able to implement their morals. Well, if if President Sunday uh, won't say it, I will. Uh, it, no, I don't think that Christians should be in power. I think that directly conflicts with their worldview, and I don't want them in power. I don't want Christians to have power, especially um, if they are going to, to use that power to force others to follow their worldview. If you're a Christian who can acknowledge 
um, that you're uh, like acting as a steward for other people and not impose your worldview on others, then fine, you can have power. But uh, Christians who plan on uh, forcing others to follow their worldview, on restricting the liberty of others, you are tyrants and I oppose you and you are my enemy and I am your enemy. Uh, people like Big Papa Fascist should be your enemy. Even if you're a Christian, you should oppose psychos like this uh, uh, morally, intellectually, theologically bankrupt, power-hungry, chain-smoking, Miller High Life drinking fuck. You should be opposing him. There you have it. Simple. Systems, how they see fit. What's the actual problem with that? Well, I think, uh, oddly enough, I think you, you do specifically have that problem to hand. Namely, um, I'll, I'll quote you back to you. You want to take the largest global tribe, Christians, and then tell them it's okay to have power. Yeah. One, of the, uh, one of the problems with this is that you're not commanded as Christians to have power. You're commanded to spread, not reproduce, but to spread the gospel to the nations of the world. And in addition... We're not commanded to reproduce? You are, you are told to be fruitful and multiply in Genesis. Yeah. True! But not... True! Present Sunday is just correct here. Christianity, yep. to be clear. You're supposed to preach the gospel, not fuck the gospel, right? Did, did the apostles... What was the first thing that the apostles of Jesus Christ did with his message? What did the first thing they did with his message? Yeah, they took it to all four corners of the earth, right? Oh yeah, that's that's that's, that's the Great Commission. So you're, you're talking about. I <laughs> yeah, you were talking not, about not only that, but the churches which they established gained great authority inside of those lands, didn't they? Especially in Ethiopia, places like this, the churches became dominant powers, and there was absolutely uh, nothing wrong well, with I'd, that. I'd be, through I'd the be structure, little... through the structure yeah. of the church, it's very clear that there is no problem with Christians what? ruling. What is the actual problem with that? And this is my issue. Jesus, the founder of your religion, the founding figure, your God, told you not to rule. Your God told you to take care of the poorest among you, to be meek, to sell your possessions so that you can continue to recruit more people. The churches that he's talking about sat and amassed wealth. They centralized power. They did not bring new people to them. They centralized. There, while, though, while these churches were massing up wealth like fucking Aldrich from Dark Souls 3, just eating up corpses, ow, 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 fattening themselves, okay? While they did that, there were people all around the world who were lacking the word of God. That, is, that, is the, that should be the Christian perspective. If you are a real, true believer Christian, you should acknowledge that these churches became sedentary. They gave up the commission that was given to them by God so that they could build a kingdom on earth for themselves. They abandoned the project for the kingdom of God. For all of those Roman Catholics building up their cathedrals, there were a hundred thousand people in another country that had never heard the word of God who could not get it. And they'll always cope, mad cope about this. But the reality is that this guy is a motherfucking hypocrite who doesn't believe in the religion he says he does. Well, I already had my I already had my debate God arc. I go back to it from time to time. But the reality is that most of these people aren't worth my time. Like I I I like having a debate with Andrew uh, Big Papa fascist is legitimately less fun than just re re than than reviewing this debate. Um, the reality is that, um, like first of all, he would never discuss this type this like type of topic with me anyway. Um, I've already argued with him in the past and it was a easy peasy ride and tons of other people simply avoid having debates with me. That's why I'm excited about Paul's ego wanting, wanting to do a debate. I'm totally down. You know, I just don't, people don't want to debate me. They're scared of me. I have a reputation, you know, anyway, there are some people that I don't feel like debating. Like, for example, I don't feel like I like debating big Papa fascist ever again because the quality of the conversation was so low. Um, but I'll gladly, if I hear there's a good debate, 
I'll, I'll gladly review it, of course. But um, why would I, like, I don't know, like, why would I waste my time sitting down with Andrew Wilson again so that he can d repeat the same NPC talking points and, and make a bunch of weird, like, fucking transphobic comments that don't even land? Uh, it's just not funny, you know? Everybody get tired of it. Anyway. Yeah, the last time we talked, it was, like, like the biggest humiliation he's ever received in his life, and I don't think he's ever recovered from it. She was secularist. I've well, never found twofold. a secularist who could tell me why there's an issue. It's twofold. Um, and I'm, I argue this not as a secularist in this case. Um, the twofold would be the church is the body of Christ. It's not an institution that is enforced by uh, governmental sanction. And so there seems to be a little bit of a blurring of the lines here in which the church is conflated with that institution which claims the name of the church. What do you mean? The, the church religion. itself, the ecclesiastical law is its own governmental bodies. It has its own cardinals and its own bishops, and it has its own governing ecclesiastical courts. It has yes. It, it cleaved from the commission that God gave it and created an, its own uh, institution built on the will of men, built on the influence of men. The church that he's talking about is a institution purely made by men. Jesus Christ did not arrive and go, I'm founding the Catholic Church. And the cope, the Catholic cope about this, not to be not to pull some Protestant cred here, but the Catholic cope about this that they go, "Oh yeah, but remember when Jesus said um to, you know, said to Peter, "Oh, on this rock I'll build my church." Remember when he said that? Do you think that Jesus Christ intended uh that for that to be a uh, a power play? That Peter would then go, yes, yes, like fucking Isildur from Lord of the Rings or something, taking the one ring and going, yes, my power. I think instead he intended for, uh, you know, uh, 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 he intended for that church to be a ever growing thing, not a sedentarized, uh, 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 sin filled, vapid organization meant to consolidate riches, which is what it became. It became over time a fundamentally medieval. Uh, uh, a classist organization that doesn't resemble anything like the teachings of the Christian Bible. It's why there's so much um, ancillary bullshit that the Catholic Church builds on top of the Bible, which, by the way, is one of the biggest um, critiques that Protestants bring against Catholics, that in order to be a good Catholic, you can't just take the Bible, which is supposedly the Word of God. You have to then go to a library the size of a fucking tower and you have to go read all of the interpretations and and additions of a bunch of guys who were mostly interested in consolidating power for themselves. Thank you very, very much for the gifted sub, Uncle Gumball. And also, for the tier 2 sub, Uncle Gumball, thank you so very, very much. Big Papa Fascist knows his way of thinking is dying now more than any time in history, and it scares the hell out of him. And I am all here for it. Yes, abso-fucking-lutely. He does know it. He knows that his Eastern Orthodox is not actually growing, that no matter how many kids he tries to have, no matter how many kids he gives fucking secondhand lung cancer to by smoking uh, six packs a day indoors, it's not actually going to change the fact that people... Uh, that without like making a nightmare society where he isolates from the rest of the world and then uh, you know ultimately leads to a uh, a fucking inbred uh, splinter group that lives in the jungle, um, without doing anything like that, people just aren't compelled by his worldview anymore. There are other ideas that are accessible. People know how to read now. Of course, in his ideal world, he would be able. You know, it would be like these uh, these splinter groups, like the like you know the Mennonites that literally live in the jungle and uh, don't teach women how to read and don't teach their kids how to read because that's the best way that they insulate them from ever discovering anything other than their shitty malformed worldview. But, you know, he's struggling on an uphill battle because uh, the resources to learn and self-enlighten and self-liberate are more accessible than ever before. And uh, everybody else in the world besides people like him are basically fighting to make that continue to be so. Let's continue. It's everything. It's a governing body. 
And these systems were laid down almost at the foundation and then through multiple uh, ecumenical councils were refined. So no, there well, no, has because been, it had, has been it had, it had authority forever. We'll, we'll slow down, <laughs> slow down. It had the power, for example, to determine its own doctrine and how it inducted and how it selected its members and how it how it chose to go about its business of wait wait hold on did he just do a new sig is this a new sig or an old one determine its own no, i can't tell didn't how it, it looks like a new one and how it how it i didn't chose see him light it though business of we'll be generous organizing and teaching we'll be generous. And so on and so forth but it didn't have the power over life death and mammon that for example a modern state has and i think one of the things you're up against here is that yes you are it did committed. look at the justinian code and when christianity took over the byzantine empire did it Christianity take over? Did Christianity take over the empire? Or did the empire take over Christianity? That's a oh question. banger question, banger question. President Sunday, literally true. Did the and and the answer is obvious. The empire took over Christianity. It's unbelievably obvious that over time the that 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 government the the power lev the levers of power of humanity seeped recognized that the church could be used to their own ends that they could turn it into an institution for control and they did no the oh he's mad that bothered him that shocked him definitely christianity took over the empire for sure and the justinian code which is implemented there they absolutely for 1100 years ruled cope, cope, but cope, the church cope. took on the Christian church took on ethic. The church took on the the specific ranking structure that you're referring to. It took that on from the Romans. They didn't have those same rankings prior to that. This was uh, yep. This was uh -oh. the original apostles were bishops. What you, you know what I mean? Like what do you mean? Well, the yes, retro was... No, they they were made bishops in the future. They did not call themselves bishops. Could be referred to as such, but they weren't. Yeah, they're right. Listen, they clearly cope, there's cope, a hierarchical cope, cope. order. Catholic cope. This is Catholic cope. Oh man, this guy would get obliterated by a serious Protestant. Ah, oh, Catholic cope. You love to see it. Oh, ooh. when when you when you uh, when you borrow from fucking Roman bureaucratic military uh, uh, organization for your peaceful religion because you actually really just want power and you really want to be able to do what the Romans did. Oh, sucks to be you. Sucks when you abandon your actual God so that you can fit in better among the power structures of the Roman Empire. Ooh. Within Christianity has been since There's a reason why there's no reference in the New Testament. I thought that BPF was Orthodox. Yes, but remember that the Orthodox Church, the Orthodox Church and the Catholics made an agreement. They made a peace treaty that said that they would consider each other valid. You're so heckin' valid. That's basically what the Catholic Church did. The Catholic Church was like, oh shit, we can't actually get rid of the Orthodox. And the Orthodox were like, oh shit, we can't actually get rid of the Roman Catholics, even though we hate each other and completely disagree and certain parts of our beliefs are, are like not congruous. Well, you're so heckin' valid. Let's make a peace treaty and we'll just have, it's like, you know how Comcast, uh, you know how like, uh, what, what are the two ones that the big internet companies, Comcast and AT&T or Verizon, you know how they agreed like, okay, Comcast won't go into Philadelphia AT&T won't go into Boston and then they do a, ha a handshake. That's literally what the Roman Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox did. They're like, okay, you have your territory and we have ours. Okay, let's agree. Let's be besties now. It was the biggest like sweeping the, their religious differences under the rug in the history of the world. And they did it because it was mutually convenient for political power. He would, yes, and also he would get obliterated by a serious Catholic as well. Like the Catholics who are... Who, the, okay, here's another secret too. When nobody's looking, when they, when they think they're among like minds, they all shit talk each other. Like Catholics don't fucking... They're like, oh yeah, you know, we agreed. We said that they... We said that the... Um, <laughs> we... <laughs> Catholics are like you look beautiful, hun, to the uh, to the fucking Eastern Orthodox, and then when they when the when they're out in the other room, they're like fuck those bitches. The so heckin' valid. What are you? What do you mean? 
What do you, what are you <laughs> yeah, Somnia about? static. Well, the, the apostles, I don't, I, I, maybe I'm mistaken about this, but I don't believe they were actually referred to in the actual. It's that comic. It's that one. It's that the. It's that that you you look you look good. You look valid comic, but it's just like in the first one. It's like they're wearing the the Roman Catholic like Monsignor robe with the little thing, and then in the second panel, they got the uh, they've got the Eastern Orthodox like gilded dress with the funky hat and the big beard. You look, you look good, second panel. You look valid. Oh, man. Texts of the New Testament as bishops. I think these were... Yeah, but they, they, listen. Like, for example, <laughs> like the, the, the first pope, for instance, that is a... Uh... That's, that's a that happened way later. There's yes. no... There, yeah. was, there was never a pope. There was but never what supposed I, to be a pope. What, what I mean, though, is that... Well, case, case in point, if you will, if we're going to accept that as a thesis... Um, I, I mean, like, one of the problems you're looking at there is the organizational structure, therefore, seems to ape not the early church, but the actual structure of Roman rule. In which case, I ask again, does it not seem like the spirit of the Roman Empire has overcome the, uh, it has overcome the church in this case? It did. seems like its form and its structure and how it behaves is, is like an imperial cult more than the house churches that, that gave birth to it. Yeah. Like the uh, like right now you have a situation where you have the Vatican in charge of a yeah de facto I just pulled it state. up in Paul's last letter yeah he did mention a bishop did he mention a bishop yeah was that a was that a translational choice by the uh, the editor or I mean it may have doesn't been, matter I'm referring just, uh... to the same thing that we're referring to right well my well, the well, reference to, it's the reference to station like well here's that's here's what the, here's we're talking the about. sure but here's the catch what a station means is going to be massively inflected by whether or not, for example, you refer to a pope as a pope or a pope as a president, yeah? Or, or well, let's assume, okay, hang on. An let's apostle as a pope, as it were. Let's assume it's True. all bullshit and it's all fake. Like, it's all made Oh, up. I'm not even, I'm actually relying well, I mean, on it I mean, let's just being, assume so. it, though. Let's just assume it. But I'd rather not. Give, give but me continue, the most please. granted argument I possibly could is it's all, all right. made up and fake, right? What would be the actual moral objection to Christians ruling what would be the actual moral problem with that? The Oh, I'm so interested to see what President Sunday says. I want to make an argument here. Well, there wouldn't be one from the outside, but internally you're contradicting your own ethical system. I was going I to... I don't see how. Going to, you haven't shown me a contradiction. Well, I was about to. For sure. I was about Go to, ahead. Very quickly. Oh, um, oh, cigarette eight. Wait, cigarette nine. On the, the first point they brought up. Cigarette nine. Respect. That's cigarette nine. We caught him lighting up. Cigarette nine. One hour, nine cigarettes. Absolutely fucking wild, my man. Holy shit! Point, telling the largest global tribe it's okay to take power. Uh, there is an explanation. His god truly is Marlboro. Nicotine is this man's god. The commandment. Look, far less ambiguous than the ranking system of the church fathers or what have you. Um, that you are supposed to love your neighbor as yourself and to love even your enemies. And in fact, to give your coat to the poor man is to give it to God. And it seems to me that one of the fatal flaws no of that's a... not a command listen there's two commandments two jesus's commandments love what the lord are your god with all your heart and soul, then the and second mind, one and to is... love your neighbor as yourself right you but don't here's the rub. you're adding you're but here's adding the rub. those well i'm not actually because here's here's the rub christ is very explicit when you give your coat to somebody who has not it is as if you are giving it to me therefore how you love god is by way of loving your neighbor god being love of course this seems to follow yeah but what is listen if you're going to love your neighbor as you love yourself mm -hmm. okay? and your enemy and Does you have to this, love your enemies too are you, are you saying that you think that that means that you must permit your neighbor to hurt you harm Big you papa fascist oppress right you, now destroy d d is that what you think that that means i think it would be deeply perverse given that the nature of state power is inherently based upon corporeal violence and the capacity to exert a massive amount of military force for a god who said that he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword to doom his own church to that fate that doesn't make a lot of sense to me oh it, seems like it makes a way more sense to just let the state run amok absent any form of ethical fucking controls and any type of guardrails so instead we allow the state to have all of this force and all this power and all this military might but we don't give them any of the kind of ethical grounding which would be necessary for them to actually utilize it correct no the true the true christian argument the true christian argument is 
and I'm, I mean this, the true Christian argument is more akin to the anarchist argument, which is that, um, which by the way, is why there is a, a subsect of Christian anarchism. Um, because in the early church, they acknowledged that the, that the, uh, the, the power, the like levers of power operated by the state were in fundamental disagreement with their worldview. So the, what he's saying here is, oh, you're just supposed to let the, the, the state, you know, run without any Christian guardrails. No, the Christian position would be that you are supposed to undermine the state as it is an institution of man, that it should be undone. You should be working at every point to disempower the state, that the state should be disassembled. It should not exist. That would be the correct, like the true Christian position. If you go back to the teachings of Jesus, you would see you are not Christians. I mean, even you could go so simple as him saying, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Don't d Christians are not supposed to get involved in the affairs of the state. They are supposed to abandon it. Let go of the money that Caesar put his face on. Do not use this shit. Abandon that shit. Leave it aside. Focus on feeding the world and t turning people to God. But this guy doesn't give a shit because all he cares about is power. Because fundamentally, he is a fearful man. He is a man who is scared at all moments. He's scared of being replaced. He's scared of a world that doesn't believe in what he believes in. And he has no faith in God to deliver him. Oh, and of course he believes in cigarettes. That's true. She can Very give wise. him your coat also. So, so basically they can do whatever they want to you is what you're saying. That's what God says. No, that's not what God says. That's ridiculous. Well, turn. He said, "Turn the other yeah, cheek." He didn't say, "Turn the other cheek Sola, to better that's reach Sola your revolver." made it up scriptura. Turn the other cheek is talking about revenge. It's no longer an eye for an eye because that's revenge. Now it's turn the other cheek. It means huh? that you can no longer go and get revenge for a person because it used to literally be if somebody took your eye, you could go take their eye. If but, somebody took your ear, you could take their. Huh? He. This guy is full of shit. By the way, this is just blatantly full of shit. Any, like, oh, God, I don't even know where to begin with this. Like, he's citing fucking the Hammurabi's code of an eye for an eye. Like, newsflash, they didn't fucking follow Hammurabi's code, okay? There was an entire system of law followed by Jews at that time, okay? Turn, you, turn the other cheek is an incredibly obvious lesson, which is to say that you are not supposed to respond with violence. You are not supposed to strike other people down. Another example of this that supports that interpretation is the fact that one of the most pivotal teachings was when Jesus Christ was being threatened by state violence. They were going to kill him, and he reprimanded his own disciple for drawing a sword. He said, do not draw your sword, for those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. He literally let himself be stapled to a tree. This man is a fraud. Your ear. But to be clear. Now, so Christianity says, no, you can't go get revenge. Revenge is God's. It has nothing to do with being a passive little bitch. And your, your entire thesis here a is... A passive little bitch. Oh, I want... I can't wait. Oh, man. Oh! Just, just imagine... Ima look, you don't want to know who he's talking to? Fucking... Hold on a second. This right here, okay? This is who you're talking. This is who he's calling a fucking little bitch, okay? Let me just let me just show you exactly who he's calling a passive little bitch right now, okay? He's not gonna like it, all right? He's not gonna like it. He's not gonna like the truth. Get ready for the big reveal. You all know who it is. It's da 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 da. Oh, you're not supposed to sit there and get nailed to a cross like a passive little bitch. Oh my god. Oh man, he's literally calling Jesus Christ a passive little bitch. Incredible. This man will never see the gates of heaven. First of all, because they don't exist, and secondly, because he would not be allowed in even if they did.
The state is uncontrolled violence. The state is an uncontrolled mass. Uncontrolled of, violence. Oh, it's of, very controlled violence. It's, oh, it's, it's very it's very controlled, just absent any sort of guardrails. I mean, no, no, it is, it is plenty. It is plenty of guardrails. What are the guardrails? What are the guardrails? Yeah, absent ethic, a, uh, absent ethical duties. Which well, are for example, it has is. it has to sustain its legitimacy. Yes. So there That's are not conditions. A guardrail. <laughs> well, it is a little. Yes, it it can sustain is. its legitimacy with a machine gun. Uh, it can, yeah. And does often, but it can it can it can is... fail to do so. This is why, yeah, for it... example, like very very old and powerful states have fallen to insurrectionary action. Yeah. So what? What I'm saying is that it it can also maintain its legitimacy with a gun. It can maintain its legitimacy with propaganda, but mm -hmm. it definitely mostly maintains its legitimacy with force. True. And so if you're going to have a state which which you do you remember? Wait a minute. Just. Like 30 minutes ago, this guy was arguing in no uncertain terms that there was a natural hierarchy that proceeds from the family to the tribe to the state to the nation. And now he's sitting here trying to be like all anti-state. Oh my God, this guy is literally does not have a functioning brain. Not a, not a fucking single electrical connection going on between his brain cells insane realize the apparatus of force for whatever the oligarchy is or whatever you're against the one thing that you want it to be contained with is guardrails and that's the one thing christianity can offer that secularists can't offer they have no guardrails to offer really there's, they no, have, there's not a they, long they, republican tradition that's specifically about the guardrails and the 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 division of power oh boy deliberating bodies. that's worked really well He's he's not uh, Lauren X Pandamus says he's not anti-state. He's pro-state violence. Yes, he is, but he will pretend to make anti-state arguments when he needs to de to devalue the idea of any other state except for a Christian state. Not not uh, because he can't acknowledge the reality that a Christian state also does not have any guardrails. That the ex just saying that you're Christian doesn't mean fucking shit. There have been a hundred thousand states. Uh, throughout the history of the world that have had some kind of Christian leadership and all of them were just as disgusting and corrupt as the ones that don't. Like, how many atrocities have been committed by Christian states? Fucking all of them. He's just full of shit. His brain doesn't work. He, he is a, he's like a shifting chameleon, but a chameleon that can only change to like various colors that you would find in like a, um, on like the cover of a fucking uh one of those uh one of those kids notebooks like you can only change the neon colors after all it's totally stopped the republics from invading almost every nation on planet earth well, i mean it's that seems totally to be a, that the seems republics. to be that seems to be a good thing from your perspective no they seem to be doing a bang banger job he's so. being very slippery if by slippery you mean like sandpaper this guy is trying to be slippery but he hasn't fucking lubricated because the cigarettes have dried him out He's about as fucking he's about as fucking slippery as the Sahara, okay? So far. Why would that be a good thing from my perspective? Because that makes you, no sense. Well, because you rate success by the ability to essentially, given that states are ruled by force and are defined by force, uh, the ability to militarily conquer the world. The Why would that that has nothing to do with my position? Saying that uh, people well, that's are what going that's what it means form... to take that's what it means to take power, Andrew. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't mean to take power that you must necessarily invade other nations or have some kind of imperial device behind what it is that you're doing. N none of those things are necessary for you to maintain well, power. You're trying to take power where you have no power. How is that imperialistic? Why would that be imperialistic? That then, uh, I guess. Well, that we would haven't be we haven't specified. Nobody can ever have power. <laughs> well, we haven't specified a nation right now either. Yes. Like we're 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 talking from two different countries, same continent maybe, but um, like we haven't specified that. A no, nation, I just want I just want the America to be governed by more. A natural extension of a tribe. Is it? Yeah. How do you figure? Because you can, uh, the way that I see it anyway, going back from the historical standard, everything from Greece on was a series of nations and small states. City states were basically nations. They were nations unto themselves, but the world was much smaller. But by nation, so surely, things... by nation, surely, you don't mean a melting pot, though, of people who are only associated by way of a formal identity. Yeah, we're not sometimes, just talking about people. Sometimes they're melting pots. Sometimes they're not. So, okay, so help, help me, help me understand this. You... President Sunday is a Canadian. Oh, Canada! 
da Maple Leaf. Could so you could have like for instance, yeah, you could have an ethno state like Japan, I right. guess. I don't give a shit. But if you had uh, a state that had a coalition of different uh, ethnic Rest well, it, I don't give a shit about that either. Yeah, I look sure. at what's the unifying glue behind these concepts, not behind, uh, you know, kind of these arbitrary standardized. Well, the unifying the unifying glue that keeps these these diversely comprised entities uh, solidified as a single type of thing across the board is going to be an administrative structure that has a monopoly of legitimate physical violence. Uh, what you're what you're effectively proposing is making sure that Christians who are specifically charged with turning the other cheek and not harming the people around them and prioritizing that's revenge and that's prioritizing revenge. well slow down and prioritizing the salvation of souls over wealth and prosperity and safety. First and of all, that's reversed. Earth. What, what I'm saying reversed? is that if Christians are in power, right, not only are they able to create that sort of restraint on the state which you would deem as being necessary, but on top of that, what but I'm they saying don't. is that they the, don't and they haven't. In fact, if you look at the history of the fucking Catholic Church, the, almost the entire history of the Catholic Church is the Catholic Church explicitly collaborating with various states, literally using various states to wage war so that the Catholic Church can pretend that it's not engaged in the business of war making. But it is. Through proxies. Bankrupt. Also, his going, oh, it's not, it's revenge. That's about revenge. Dude, come on. That's mad fucking cope. Everyone knows it. Even other Christians know that you're coping. Turn the other cheek isn't about fucking revenge. It's about, it's about being meek. It's about the thing that Jesus harped on all over the place about. It's about being basically a, a pacifist to a fault. Because you're supposed to trust God to deal with your problems. You're supposed to trust that God has a plan for you. You are supposed to sit there and take it. When you're talking about turn the other cheek, you seem to think that it's some sort of passive thing. It's oh, no, you've got, you got me backwards. You've got me backwards there. See, I'm not saying that they wouldn't be able to put a restraint on the state. What I'm saying is that being in power, they would now be in the position to defend the state itself against Good. the people. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is... They are the... Oh, my God. He just literally... He just... He just admitted that President Sunday's previous point about the empire become the empire taking over Christianity is true. Now he's just saying it out loud. Yeah, true. They would be the empire now. Oh wait. Now you precisely have Christians who are now charged with killing people and damning them. That's to not revenge. Hellfire. That's not revenge. Who, who cares it's not revenge, revenge to enforce morality. That's like saying if you have a cop who's a Christian, he's in the wrong occupation. Why did you say it was revenge? This why why does it matter idiot. if it's revenge or not? Because that's the passage you're alluding to, which makes it the crux of your entire argument is turn the other cheek. And turn the other cheek is about revenge. It doesn't it's specify. Not about it doesn't. Well, it doesn't actually specify revenge, does it? It doesn't say the we reason have a, why. No, we have an entire you. holistic for this that we understand the Old Testament's referenced by the New Testament. And this is specifically... Well, the turn the other cheek is, the, is New Testament. It, it doesn't... Yes, but the New Testament yeah. is referencing the Old Testament eye for an eye. And what it's saying is, is the eye for an well, eye... Your eye's not in your cheek, right? That was about revenge. And so well, the, says, the, eye for, eye the eye for an eye... eye now, it's yeah. about revenge. All church doctrine from all Christian, Almost all, even Protestants know that this is true, that this is mm. not for passivity purposes. That's some weird liberal garbage... For them to be able to say, if I hold a gun to your head, you have to turn your head so I can hold a gun to the other side of your head, too. That's that's what they utilize that passage to mean. And, of course, it doesn't mean that. It's never meant that. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be because very compelling said, if it quote? meant that. I yeah, that's right. That's totally true, dude. The history of Christianity doesn't have anything to do with martyrdom. The history of Christianity. Oh, my God. You're telling me that the central figure being a martyr who just d who didn't fight back and allowed himself to be crucified to prove a point. Uh, and then the entire re early religion was centered around martyrdom. You you're trying to tell me that they have some kind of policy against, you know, not using violence in response to violence and trusting God to deliver you. This guy is. An, oh, God, it's making me so mad. So your cloak and get a sword. But. But the passage does not specify. Goodbye, Yak Daddy. Have a great an night. Eye for an eye is a judicial. It's it's a matter of retributive justice. Turn the other Revenge. cheek. Turn Revenge. the other cheek. Turn the other yes, cheek. Yes, I think he did say holistic when he meant heuristic. Is a response by an individual subject. It doesn't say if the magistrate 
is struck on the cheek, turn the other cheek, and offer it to them also. It says, you, average Christian man who has no authority to enact revenge, even even under like an ancient barbaric rule of some kind. So I I don't I don't think that that's that's true. And it is true. And more to the point, once again, to go back to my my previous. How in the world could you try to argue this point when you have hundreds of church authorities for throughout the entirety of the church's existence give specific explanations that turn the other cheek does not mean passivity or to allow yourself to be abused or that you're not allowed to have any power in society. They are very specific that this was about the reference to the Old Testament and about revenge. Well, I would retort. For an eye was you take my eye, I take yours. That's revenge. Well, I would return Turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek is yeah. saying you don't respond to uh, to you know an unequal use of force. Uh, ah, I love this one. I love this one. Okay, ready? I'm about to hit you. Hold on a second. I'm about to hit you with a good one. Okay. You ready? I'm about to hit you with a fucking banger. I, I would love to hear how this fucking idiot would hear this, okay? Here's the rest of the context. Are you ready for the are you ready for the rest of the context? Here's the full context. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat to them as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from one who wants to borrow from you. That is the full quote. This guy is a total and utter fucking fraud. This guy isn't even a fucking Christian. He's not even, he's not even close. It's not a fucking anti-revenge reference. It explicitly says, do I tell you, do not resist an evil person. Be passive. Do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. That explicitly refers to even ignoring legal injustice. But that would contradict his nationalist worldview. Hmm. Almost like Big Papa Fascist is more fascist than Christian. Almost like he worships the nation and nicotine over anything else. Um, by immediately going the kind of revenge route. But it doesn't, right? doesn't say you and, can't and, defend and low, yourself. But it doesn't like this. But it doesn't say and he went onto the mountain and told his disciples if 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 the oh, Wait, did he just light a new one? He lit a new one. We are on cigarette 10. That's right, everybody. Cigarette fucking 10, baby. Cigarette 10. He went onto the mountain and told his disciples, if, if, if the, if the nations of the earth use a disproportionate amount of force against you, only then do you not turn the other cheek and, and, uh, fight back in your defense. What he specifically says is, uh, pretty consistently uh allow your like this this is actually the example of the apostles allowing themselves to be stoned without resistance allowing themselves to be imprisoned without resistance there yeah, those is are martyrs well that's you're called upon to be a martyr sir yeah and some of the best christian saints arlo says if he was a puppy girl the amount of smoking would be hot wrong if he was a puppy girl then then uh then he would be put he would be getting put in the crate because that is so much smoking that the puppy girl is gonna die Saints. Do you think they were martyrs? Do you think that Christian saints who were warriors who put entire towns to the sword? Uh, do you think that uh, Saint Helga who went and burned down an entire... They want to die, though. Yes, and that's why they are put in the crate, so that they learn how to not die. They learn to behave. Entire city for giving offense to her husband, who's a saint in the church? Do you think that these were passive people? I would weren't. I would retort with the book of Revelation. Um Depart from me, ye never knew me. That's it will be said to many. Like I mean the Do puppy girls get doggy lung cancer? Apparently the Christian fascist ones do. <laughs> Bare fact that these people have been inaugurated as saints. Yeah, well let me respond also from the Bible the church. That the gates of the gates of hell will never prevail 
against the church. Indeed, and the that is that is the essence. Will never prevail I agree. Against the church. I agree 100%, Andrew, but that's the essence of my argument because Christ is very specific. Those who live, aka survive by the sword, will be killed by the sword. Ergo, if you win by taking over the swords of the earth, you have condemned according to the words of your very God, your church to an ignominious death along the lines of a heathen warlord. No, you haven't. Tr that fucking killer! Killer! Let's listen to that again. I want you to hear that again. This is, that is, this is the present Sunday activation moment. By the sword. Er AKA survive by the sword will be killed by the sword. Ergo, if you win by taking over the swords of the earth, you have condemned according to the words of your very God, your church to an ignominious death along the lines of a heathen warlord. No, you haven't. That's ridiculous. Oh, I don't even have a sound effect for this. We need a cope one. Okay, that's it. Next stream, I am I am getting the cope button. We need a cope, 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 cope. Oh my God, that is the whiniest sad. Uh, no, -uh. no, oh no, no. -uh. Words of your very God, your church to an ignominious death along the lines of a heathen warlord. No, you haven't. That's ridiculous. Oh, uh, that's ridiculous. No, I haven't. I haven't condemned my belief system. Ridiculous. The, the Christians have had entire nations and empires, which they have been in control of, where they've been in charge of the sword, doesn't mean that they have to use the sword for unrighteous means. You're talking about a distinction. Well, I mean, surely it does. You're talking any... about a distinction in, in external unjustified violence versus enforcement for justified violence. There is justified violence, and Christians will never tell you that there isn't. And enforcement is justified violence. Well, you're speaking to of one course, just now. Of course, I'm, enforcement I'm, I'm is. Referring, I'm referring directly to the words of Christ specifically. You are not even ob you are not even entitled to defend God Himself with a sword. You don't have the ecclesiastical authority. But I tell you, these are the words. These are the words of Christ. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. Nor do you have the biblical training which is necessary to make these kinds of claims. You're ba essentially using scola sola scriptura. So let me ask you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bitch boy. He's fallen back. So what happened to the Christian populism, my dude? Now you got to go, oh, no. Oh, 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 Daddy Bishop, save me. Daddy Bishop, he doesn't, th that man is making points about the scripture without having the hat. He doesn't have the talking hat. Elitist in the house. No, Question. not at all. If you're not using Sola Scriptura, then give me an external reference from the church which backs up your claim. Well, give me an external reference from the church which validates any of the don't, other words. Don't answer my use. question with a question. Answer my question. Can well, you it's give actually me, asking your demand with a demand. Can you mm -hmm. give me an external source that backs up your claim that turn the other cheek means Christians are supposed to be passive and allow themselves to never be in power and only secular? Dude, I, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. It can, could not be more blatant. It literally could not be more blatant. Oh, but, oh, sorry. I was reading from the gay version of the Bible, the new international version. Let me get, let me get a classic one. Ooh, let's see. What do we, what's, what's good enough? You want to see, do they got a, do they got a, ooh, let's see. Do we got a, um, do we got a uh, Catholic version? Let me see. Let me get the Catholic one. We got the Holm, Holman Christian. No, wait, that's the Christian Standard Bible. Where's the Catholic one? Hold on a second. Wait, what does the... Let's get the one from his version. Ah, I can't wait. The Orthodox Study Bible. Let's see if they got that on here. They do. Wait, that's the Orthodox Jewish Bible. Hmm. What other versions do they accept?
Let, let me find out. Ooh, weird. Orthodox Orthodox Christians use the New King James from Byzantine Catholic. That's weird, isn't it? The the NSR the NRSV is banned, so it's got to be New King James. Hmm. That's what the Byzantine Catholic Catholics.org says. Hmm. Well then, let's get New King James Version. I can get that one easy. We'll read it from there. We'll see what it says there. Just to be fair. Here we go. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. Wow, it's exactly the same. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow. It's literally the same. Damn, the gay Bible was correct in the first place. Whoops can be in power well i haven't actually argued that they can never allow themselves to be in power I never well argued yes that. you are you're and actually I never, are, and you're i never argued power well, no, means slow down. force slow down cowboy i never argued that they need to uh that they need to onboard any of these attitudes i simply said that there is nothing in that passage which indicates that this is specifying revenge here's the king james we'll go to the original ye have heard that it hath been said an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth but i say unto you that ye resist not evil but whoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. There you go. There's the, there's the classic King James. The old classic King James. The two passages that I cite, the one the where you're supposed to turn has the, the two passages, this. well, it determined this according, determined well, this. here's, here's the catch. Is it the church that determined it according to what metric? Because <laughs> Wait, the church, because the church, what, to be what clear. What metric are you using? Well, the church, to be clear, is one of, is, is two things simultaneously. What is, authority external yourself are you using? The church is two things, yes. So what it's the, authority it's the... external yourself are you remember right now earlier, using? Remember earlier when he got mad about a um, a uh, remember when he was like that's a that's a fallacy, and now he's literally just doing an appeal to authority. You used a fallacy. What authority? What authority are you referencing? How dare you read the Bible on its own terms? Catholic fucking cope right here. This is this is quintessential Catholic cope. By the way, this is one of the things that um, that um, Protestants will correctly mock the shit out of Catholics for, which is that they'll be like, Catholics literally cannot think for themselves. A priest will basically be like, oh, yeah, the Bible in the original Latin says you got to suck my cock. And what are they going to do about it? They're not allowed to be to contradict it because, first of all, they won't be allowed to read the... Uh, the Latin. They won't be taught to read the Latin. And secondly, how fucking dare you question the man above you? You just gotta fucking get licking. Fucking polish that goddamn rod, my man. P Protestants will make fun of Catholics for that, and they're fucking right. It's true. It's goddamn true. Nothing. Just my brain. Nothing. My nothing. brain and what I've read. Nothing. What are you using? Nothing. Right now, I'm telling you, all of the all of the all of the Protestants listening to this argument right now are like, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. Your priests will tell you to suck their dicks, but our God is an awesome God. We're allowed to read, and it's great because you just have to suck your priest dick, and it's wonderful that we don't have to do that. Our God is an awesome God. Our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. And then somebody breaks out the little egg. And the guy tapping the box like this.
Oh, do we have the old clip of me making fun of the Cathloids? Oh, we do, don't we? We got it, we got it, don't we? Yeah, we do, hold on. Yeah, this is the preview, this is me, <laughs> this is me roasting the Catholics a few months ago. The Giga Chad Cathloid, you would be, you would go, you would go, if you wanted to be the Giga Chad Cathloid, you would be, you would go, that is not the original Latin, and you are not a priest. How dare you step into the realm of God? How dare you step between man and God as is the role of a priest? And then you'd start chanting in Latin, that's the real Catholic response. And uh, if you were, that's what, that's what Ollie should be doing, but Ollie is literally not prepared. If you, true. That, that's that's the that's the, the real way these Catholics fucking not ready Okay, actually to be fair right now at Andrew Wilson is living up to the Catholic name by being like who oh, sight daddy Sight daddy or else I won't listen to you. I won't listen to Jesus unless it's spoken to me from daddy's mouth in Latin What the Orthodox Church canon says on this and what the Saints say on this who and the Catholics will Ooh, be careful, completely careful, agree that careful, this is true careful I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay, quiz you. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quiz you. Okay, cover your eyes. Cover your eyes. Why? Just, just because I want to know you're not cheating. Just cover your eyes. What, it, dude? We're not doing this. Oh come this. on. What is it? What, what is it that you want to quiz me on? Name, exactly? name, and, name, and, name and quote without looking it up. Where are you getting this from? <laughs> well, I'd have to give you the reference, but yeah, I, I know you, you would. That's my point. Is if you don't have it to Why hand, and you're relying to give you a reference because you, you it, like me are relying on your memory. What every single because you like me said. because Andrew, you and me are in the same boat. We're relying on memory and our own reason here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't have. Saying, I don't have a church no, lawyer no, next to me verifying not. everything. What I'm saying. saying is that there's an authority that I'm appealing to. I want to know what authority you're appealing to. Well, I don't. I don't acknowledge the authority of the of the formal church. Yes. Right. So then, so then, why would I acknowledge anything you're saying is true? Because I'm referring to the text that is authorized by your church. Okay. So the, the text is off. But I. But you realize Andrew Wilson is not authorized to use his own pa faculties. That's the problem. He's not authorized to use his brain. Sunday, you've made a critical mistake. You forgot he didn't get his permission slip from from Father uh, Doohickey. Okay. He forgot it. Authorized by the church Indeed. via the interpretation of the church. But I don't need to sign on. Not via the interpretation of President Sunday. Well, I don't need to sign on, for example, to the coherence of the church's interpretation to point out that the text that is authorized by your church as the major source of this doctrine doesn't jive with what you're saying. Absent, absent interpretation, there's no reason for me to believe your interpretation. You don't have any authority. Well, I'm, it's actually kind of the opposite, though. I'm not interpreting something. You're supplying an additional okay term. i'm not gonna lie this has been a lot of fun this this has been a really fun debate review i've been having a great time interpretation you're oh you're not interpreting it saliva hello. well i am inevitably interpreting okay it. yeah you're English. interpreting it so i don't know what but i'm not about. well because crucially you're saying that it specifies revenge but if there's no content there that specifies revenge then i'm not interpreting that yes yeah eye for an eye tooth for a tooth I what interpreted do you think in the that most. Means? Well, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth don't occur in that in that specific passage. That specific passage says, "Turn the other cheek." Yeah. What does eye for an eye, truth for truth mean? Uh, tooth for tooth mean? Well, <laughs> the forty when the forty hits, it's such a fucking eye. What's a truth for a truth? Well, that's that's that a that's that's a that's a statement, uh, setting a retributive uh, standard for justice. Right. So revenge. Well, retributive, not necessarily revenge. Well, what is re re what is retribution? Well, before you continue, uh, I forgot you existed. I just want Zen. to hang up. I know. Just want to inform you guys. There's only about five minutes left in the oh. dialogue. If you want, if you want to stick with this point, the revenge topic, you can. Or if there's any last minute points, that yeah, I'm trying to figure hit, out. I'm trying to figure yeah. out like it, it, to get to the underpinnings God, of damn, this. It was just getting good. It seems like the only criticism which you have here, right? And by the way. Why don't we go and I'll actually send this to you. I'll actually send you some of the interpretations here so that okay. you because you have no authorities that you're appealing to. You just say, I just read the text, but I'm not using Sola Scriptura either. Even though you're using Sola Scriptura, you have to be 
Well, oh, no, so, so, uh, well, well, hang on, hang on. So, sola Scriptura is the notion that you derive God's truth from the Bible alone. I'm not saying I derive God's truth from it. What I'm saying is... Well, whose truth? Beg your pardon? Whose truth are you deriving, then? Thank you, Pilate. Um, Yours? The, who's tr well, I'm not deriving a truth. What I'm saying yeah. is that according to the letter of your book that is mm -hmm. authorized, there is a contradiction here. Now, in the absence of a specific... There's no contradiction. But there is a little bit. There's none. There is a little bit because Christ is very particular. There's not. There's well, no well, contradiction. On. If, I, if I can just finish my sentence, Christ, mm -hmm. is, Christ is very particular, and he's also very general. He doesn't say, those who live by the sword according to the incorrect doctrine shall die by the sword. He simply says, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. Why was Christ running people out of a, a temple with whips? Because they were treating his the house of God as a marketplace or something like that. Yeah, that's super weird, though. Shouldn't he be turning the other cheek? He is God, you idiot. Are you are you trying to fucking correct God? Oh, my God. This guy is the worst fucking Orthodox ever. Literally just the worst that I've ever seen. I don't believe... I, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't believe this guy goes to fucking church. I don't think he goes to Orthodox fucking church. I think he's LARPing 100%. I think he made up a religion that he played in fucking uh he 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 played fucking civilization four once and he founded orthodox eastern orthodoxy uh uh by getting a great prophet early and he thought that was interesting and he got some of the civilization bonuses from it he was like yeah yeah i'm eastern orthodox now fuck catholicism i mean you're so heck valid catholicism uh and then he was just like yeah i'm gonna roll from here i don't believe he goes there and fucking you know breathes in the incense and fucking uh, kneels before god or any of that shit there's no fucking chance there's no way that like a guy who's who who is serious about a a fucking hyper hyper hierarchical form of christianity is gonna sit there and make jokes about jesus christ being like, oh, I guess Jesus Christ, what was that all about? That doesn't se seems like maybe Jesus had a contradiction, huh? While, like, sipping Black Rifle coffee and smoking fucking a mountain of Mar Marlboros? Dude, come on. No, Man's first a fraud. of all, he's God. No? In the narrative. But secondly, sec and revenge is the Lord. Secondly, mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a distinction between engaging in, uh, uh, let's say, reinforcement of a norm from the vantage point of someone who has ultimate authority and reinforcement of a norm evoking ultimate authority without proof by one person who has been ordered according to that person's own account by that ultimate authority to turn the other cheek see the problem no can you explain the problem well, the prob I actually don't I actually well, don't the problem don't the problem is that according why, to church why did he tell an apostle to buy a sword why did he tell an apostle to buy a sword? Mm -hmm. Why did he tell him to sell his cloak and buy a sword? Well, I I don't I I'm quite don't sure know. I'm quite sure I don't yeah, know. You don't know because head. this self-referencing book that self-references itself over and over and over again yeah. has these uh, long line of thousands of interpreters which had created the canon and they interpreted it so we actually know what it means and we don't have to actually use President Sunday's version of I read this text though and this is what I think it means. Why would I think that anything you say that it means, it means when clearly you don't even understand well, which, what it means. Which, which church father says it's appropriate that there is an exclusion for Christians <coughs> to take state power? You can talk right now hang to... On, hang on, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, no, it's a very simple question since you're speaking with authority external to yourself. Which mm -hmm. church father says that Christ is specifying those who live by the sword will die by the sword only applies to those who seek revenge. That's not what the position is. That's a straw man. Okay, or the other one, uh, turn the other cheek only applies to revenge. Yeah, so that that was a direct, and you'll find this inside of the various canons, uh, inside both the Orthodox Church, well, not I'm sorry, not the canons, but the various teachings inside the Orthodox Church from the saints, and you'll find it inside of and the, if Catholic I look, church, even the Catholic if I, Church. If I look, what I, what I will find is not just a condemnation of revenge, but oh, a specification. Sig 11! Oh, we're on cigarette 11! Oh, shit! Number 11! That this passage only refers to revenge, yes? Well, it's not only. Well, that's well, that's the catch, though, Andrew. No, there's no catch. But there's a big catch. There's a really What's big the rub there. The okay, big rub there is that you're relying on 
uh, violence done to someone who strikes you first being acceptable, provided it's not done as an act of revenge. However, Christ doesn't specify that you are only unable to retaliate under conditions of revenge. That would be a point against you. How so? <laughs> because if he's not specifying that point, then why is it that you wouldn't be able to use force in order to implement will? Because his statement encompasses both. According because, to you, I well, don't know. Well, no, no, no. Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't narrow down its purview, yes. If it doesn't say, this is only in the case of revenge, then in the case where someone strikes you, regardless of your motive for striking back, you are not actually granted permission to break that edict. You're supposed to still turn the other cheek. <laughs> so you think that Christian doctrine is passivity? Uh, in a, in a sense, yes. In what sense is it not? Well, in a sense that... Uh, Are you allowed to defend yourself? Not not really, no. no. No? You can't defend yourself as a Christian? Not really. No? No. Can you let somebody uh, who's raping your wife, can you defend her? Whoa! Whoa! I think that's in one of those, uh, that's in one of those fuzzy areas. Yeah, what if they're like, what Where if they're like, gangbanging yeah. your kid? Can we do something about that? Yeah, you should probably kill them. Are you sure? Yeah, I don't. Sure. Th I don't know. I don't. I think uh, shouldn't we be passive? Well, I don't buy onto this. Is the thing? Yeah, this is really funny because um, this is where this is where the Christian part starts to break down, and where you uh, a sane person would break out of the Christian worldview and go, yeah, there are massive flaws in the Christian worldview. Because if you'll recall earlier on in the Bible, in fact, um, in the story of Lot, uh, very interesting little story that one. Um, when, when, uh, Lot was in, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, um, and, uh, when he lived in that town, when his, he had angels come and visit him as his, at his house and the, you know, people of, of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to rape the angels that were staying with him. And, uh, the, the sort of lesson in the story was that he did the right thing by offering, his wife and daughters to the crowd instead of the angels. A little bit, um, you know, it is a little psychotic, right? To like look at that, look back at that story and go, oh, okay, so like Lot was praised by the God of the Bible for offering to let the, the mob, you know, sexually abuse his uh his his daughter and and uh wife instead of the angels that were there as his guests um that the lesson is basically that hospitality in in this you know in the the old testament belief system is so important that you should be willing to even allow a violent mob to harm your wife and daughter um and then you know here's this this fucking smug cigarette fucking chimney smoking motherfucker up here smugly trying to get a gotcha about uh about whether or not you should violently kill someone who's harming your wife when the bible already has a story about that and jesus is explicitly clear in saying do not use violence against anyone who wishes to do you harm in fact if we want to take jesus at his word you should offer to if you want to save your wife from the situation you should offer to give the guy the rapist a rusty trombone that's the that would be the christian way to do things i'm not like i'm joking a little bit but also if you want to be textually uh consistent you should not only i mean jesus says if someone forces you to walk a mile go to if if somebody forces your wife uh into a situation if you want to be a good christian you want to offer your asshole too it's that simple. And everybody, this is why I'm not a fucking Christian. This is why nobody's a goddamn Christian. Okay? <laughs> this is why you shouldn't be a Christian. Because the Christian Bible is full of contradictions and deranged and absurd situations. It is not a very good moral text on the broad. Okay? It just isn't. There you have it. Let's, let's continue. You do. I'm not bound by this. Like oh, I, some, somebody, by, in, right. somebody in that position, I would do extraordinary so, violence. So from too. your, so from your purview, 
If somebody is raping my wife as a good Christian, I should let him. According to your Bible, uh, you are... <laughs> Steve. Oh, he's got the anime laugh. He's liking it. Oh, he's blushing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's blushing. I guess we know. I guess we've confirmed what Big Papa Fascist is into. It's all of them, isn't it? All of these conservatives, they're always cuckolds. Think that that's what the church teaches. Well, I point, I point you. Christians believe. Well, I point you to Lot's wives, Lot's wife rather. Oh, hey, President Sunday brings it up too. What happened to her? Do you remember? Yeah, she got turned into a pillar of salt. Oh, concubine. Sorry, not Lot's wife. Concubine. Was it Lot? No, no, it was somebody else. It was. Uh... What are you? Who, what, who's okay, the... what are you at? What are you getting the, at? The uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember the name. The it might have actually been Lot still. I can't quite remember. The one who had two angels visit him in like was it Sodom or whatever? In Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, and okay. he had a concubine with him, and the uh, the men of and the city came. And they wanted to rape the angels. They wanted to rape the angels. Sent out his uh -huh. wife instead. Yeah. 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 So? so did he? Did he send out his wife and then himself to fight them to the death to protect his wife's honor? You mean in the case of the angels? No, I'm talking about the man. Yeah. What about it? You mean when the when all of the degenerates showed up to rape the angels? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about it? Well, it seems like he threw his wife to them, but he didn't necessarily need to do that, did he? He could have. He could have just. Could have let them rape the angels. <laughs> <laughs> well, presumably, well, presumably, if they're angels, what? they don't. Oh, oh man, he's actually cra he's breaking. This is the weirdest we've ever seen. For an hour and a half, he's been basically stone faced, smoking chain smoking cigarettes, and now he's like, he's like anime laughing and blushing, talking about whether or not he should sit in the Christian cuck chair. <laughs> really wild. <laughs> require his defense, but moreover, he could have died defending them himself. He could have offered himself, for instance, instead. What does that have to? Let's say that Lot was totally in the wrong, and I would have done the opposite thing. What does that have to do with this idea that if a man is raping my wife, that I'm supposed to, as a Christian, let him, according to President Sunday's oh, version call, of Turn Zodiac. the Other Cheek? You well, think that makes sense? No, I don't. That's why I'm. No, that's why I don't, I don't right either. <laughs> I think. I... Oh, let's see. Hold on a second. Oh, hold on a second. We might have gotten this. Hold on a second. Ah, there's another story. There's a second story in Judges. Uh, the story of the Levite and his concubine. So the story goes, and I'm going to paraphrase the buildup, and then I'll read the actual thing. So a Levite uh, travels from, a, from, a ta from Bethlehem uh, with a concubine. And while they're traveling, they stop to stay with a, an old man lets them stay in their house, okay? All right? So here we go. While they were enjoying themselves, some of the wicked men of the city surrounded the house. Pounding on the door, they shouted to the old man who owned the house, bring out the man who came to your house so we can have sex with him. The owner of the house went outside and said, no, no, my friends, don't be so vile. Since this man is my guest, don't do this outrageous thing. Look, here is my virgin daughter, and his concubine. I will bring them out to you now, and you can use them and do to them whatever you wish. But as for this man, don't do such an outrageous thing. So that's two separate points in the Bible when it is fairly explicitly endorsed that um, you should not use violence, and you should instead uh, offer a hole. Maybe not your hole, technically, but somebody's hole. The Bible is, oh God, the Bible is so full of garbage. God, it's, I mean, I'm not kidding you. By the way, the story is right here. It's in Judges. It's Judges 19 to 21.
afterwards they there is there is revenge that is a uh, in fact it's funny afterwards there is revenge that is taken by the israelites but but big papa fascist has said that the revenge is not supposed to happen so if 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 the revenge is the part that jesus was getting rid of then in this story then you're supposed to fucking yeah if you're if you're a uh, if there's a guy having sex with your wife you better fucking bend over drop trow get ready moisten up those lips buddy Jesus. I just don't believe that. Well, yeah, you don't believe the words of your own God because they don't... Flow. Whoa! Cigarette 12! Oh, he's speedrunning him now. How did he get through that last one? This is like the... This is like a Tom and... The Tom and Jerry he just... <sighs> Cigarette 12! So we have church authority, which interprets it. And the reason we have that is so guys like you... Does it, does it ...can't say, it? your wife needs to get raped by well, me... Slow down. ...while you sit there passively well, and take it. Well, I, I wouldn't, though, is the difference. But oh, the... man, he's he's rock hard right now. This bitch is... This bitch is... His desk is levitating at the moment. He's talking about President Sunday having sex with his wife, and his desk is just going... Bro, is that a standing desk? Here's, here's the thing. So, church authority, which interprets it, does it interpret it or does it generate it? Like, by what process does it interpret it in an authoritative well, way that, that you find why compelling? Why does any of that even matter? Well, it matters a what little bit. What should matter is well, it matters, whether or not uh, you I can, can tell make you a why. moral argument. If you can make well, a moral indeed, argument but that's about, my point. about Christians being in power. But that's my, that's my point, though, Andrew. Mm -hmm. If What's your point? Well, my point is, if you're using this to establish the legitimacy of your particular claim to a particular moral system that ought to take power, you haven't specified any any decision by the church that actually enforces your interpretation of this. But let's assume that you did. Well, I'll um, tell you what then. Tell well, me let's pretend which that you of did. the moral claims that Christians postulate that you're actually against. That Christians postulate? Yes. They are diverse and contradictory. There's a lot of disagreement on these things. Okay, give me one of them. Well, for example, the passivity one is a case in point. There are Christians indeed who abide by that. That, that you should <laughs> no, actually no, turn... There's Sorry? secularists who abide by that. What's your point? That's not a point against Christianity. I wasn't some, making a point. Some I Christians wasn't, are well, pacifists or some secularists. I wasn't making a point against Christianity. Yeah, but I'm asking you to give me a criticism against an actual agreed upon moral ethic of Christianity. What is the what are they? What is well, I would I would invite you I would invite you to name one. It's not even clear uh there's no universal assent among Christians as to what even the Christ thou is. shalt not murder. Can we start with that one? Sure. But that's okay. not a, that's what not is, agreed upon though, because for example It's not? Well, because murder is variously interpreted as being like the killing of a human being, period. Unjustly. Well, un that's that's begging another set of questions what is justice yep. yes no, no yes he, he's, so... he's correct here um there is actually contest there's a ma there's been massive contest over what do, thou shalt not kill means of course there fucking is like okay so if you put it as thou shalt not kill well there you have your answer bro you're not supposed to kill fucking anybody Let's right. get and then he then now he's changed it. Interesting. It's interesting that he got mad and said you're not allowed to interpret it, but he's actually willing to change the the, the terminology of the Bible to fit his argument. Thou shalt not unjustly murder, is what he says now. That's not what the fucking Bible says, my man. It's interesting how willing he is to editorialize the words of God, almost like he is categorically engaging in a form of antichrist behavior. That this man is, this man is essentially representative of everything that the Bible warned about in the Antichrist. Someone who would ma who would who would masquerade and mislead. To what is justice from the purview of a secularist? Isn't it eye for an eye? Uh, not necessarily. There's uh, once well, again like a diverse it? array of positions. All a secularist refers to is just somebody who. Uh, abides by a standard that separates the purview of the church from the purview of the public. Well, tell authority. me, tell me, you're in your purview then, Sunday. What is justice? What is justice? Mm -hmm. I have no idea what justice is. W what do you mean? Like w when when you, you when you when you say justice, justice is. 
Well, when you say justice, are you talking about an order inherent in the universe? Are you talking about a set of edicts given down by God? Are you talking about no, a I'm set of conditions actions, under which society can, can function? <laughs> what I'm longevity? asking is if you take an action and you mm -hmm. say that this action is just or unjust, yeah. what do you mean by the term just or what do you mean by the term unjust? Well, that's going to depend on the answer to my question, yes? Because if I mean that an answer why would, is... Why would your position depend on an answer to your question? Because I'm aware of multiple understandings of justice going back several thousand years. Well, I'm asking years. for yours. So, for example... well, Not somebody else's. I don't, I, don't, I don't possess one because I'm not arrogant enough to invent one off the top of my head at 32. So you have no sense of justice? I have a tremendous sense of justice. It gets me a lot of trouble. Oh, well, then what is that? What is that? Yes. Uh, I, I have a rage response to ex exhibitions of... Uh, gratuitous cruelty and hypocrisy that makes me make very bad business decisions as a content creator. And why is that unjust to be cruel? <laughs> He's okay. Hey, that's true. He is owning up to that. <laughs> he is. I'm glad he's owning up to that. Honestly, I'm glad he's owning up to that. I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> but also, I, I don't know. Um, I think I think Big Papa Fascist here is kind of reaching, like saying like what what are you def like what is justice is a huge question like in what context right I don't think that Sunday is like wrong for being like I don't fucking know what you mean by that because like justice is a huge concept it's a b very broad concept like does he does, what what Big Papa Fascist I think wants is being like uh people getting what they deserve or some kind of like statement like that but I don't th I think that's very like um hyper simplistic and usually when people are talking about justice it's contextual to the situation what is fair and just in a certain situation like i don't know objectively even but, subjectively even subjectively um well, I mean, I can I can give you an explanation that I can drum up after the fact, but it's a disgust response fundamentally. The okay, reason comes so afterwards. Are, if, the so response. then, if Christians don't like homosexuality based on a disgust response, then it would be just for us to stigmatize them. Uh, well, it depends on what you mean. I wasn't claiming that my disgust response was equivalent to a proof of divine or superhuman justice. If you're going to claim that it is. You can, but you have to justify that. You have to. No, get... All I need to do is adhere to your social standard, and if your social standard for justice is. Oh, this is so fucking cowardly, dude. Oh, man, what a fucking giga cuck. So, let me just explain what just happened here. So, he's trying to get President Sunday on not knowing anything about justice. And then President Sunday says, well, justice is a really huge topic, and it's con highly contextual. And then Big Papa Fascist goes, yeah, well, you know, you just said that you have a, you know, you have a disgust response to um, to brazen displays of, um, uh, of misuse of power and cruelty. Uh, if I have a disgust response to gay people, I guess I should, uh, I guess I should just, well, let me, let's get his exact words here. Let's hear what he said exactly. Justice. Based on a disgust response. Christians are. After the fact, but it's a disgust response. Hold on, let's hear it. Fundamentally. The okay, reason comes so then, afterwards if Christians are, the if, if, so then if Christians don't like homosexuality based on a disgust response, then it would be just for us to stigmatize them. So he says he wants to persecute gay people based on on a disgust response. Uh, well, it depends on what you mean. I wasn't claiming that my disgust response yep. was equivalent. And then, to... and then President Sunday basically says, like, I'm not saying that my disgust response makes a universal truth, or a, that's what. He, basically, President Sunday is restating the point that it is very difficult to make to like just d to just make a claim about justice uh, point blank about all forms of justice. And then B Big Papa Fascist is going to run away from the question, pretending like he didn't just say that he wants to persecute fucking gay people. A proof of divine or superhuman justice. If you're going to claim that it is. You can, but you have to justify that. You have to no, get... All I need to... Is, no, I don't have to. No, no, all I need to... Do is adhere to your social standard, and if you're... And now he tries to defer. What he really wants to say is, all I have to do is use my power to persecute them. But he's a coward. He is hiding in his fucking shitty fucking smoke-stained shitty studio. Uh, 
And, you know, what he'll do is he'll he'll cattily throw insults and be like, oh, you're degenerates, you're degenerates. Please, please, whatever you do, don't fuck my wife. That would make me so Christianly angry. Um, he's going to sit there and, you know, throw, you know, throw rotten tomatoes from over a wall. Uh, when what he's actually trying to say here is that he thinks that Christians should be able to enact a, uh, a, a world dominance by which they persecute anyone who disagrees with them. But now he has to try and play coy and try and say, well, that's actually what you're saying. It's by your logic. You see, liberal, you, you, I've gotten you, liberal. It's by your logic, actually. When President Sunday st started in the position of saying making a universal claim to justice is really, really difficult, and I don't think I can do that off the cuff. So, so pathetic, so childish. Social standard for justice is discussed. Then you but my have social any standard problem. for justice wasn't. Then you shouldn't have any problem with why I. No, no, no. you you conflated thing, two things. That I do. No, no, you've conflated two things in a very basic way. You confused, for example, a quote unquote sense of justice with an extillation of an actual justice. What does extillation mean? As in extolling. Okay. That there is a thing called justice that is a measure of things in the world. Yeah. So, like in a Platonic sense, justice is things being in their proper so place. Hang on, and to not praise highly or glorify. Beg your pardon. Extol to praise highly or glorify. Maybe that's the wrong word, but we can go with that. Sure. Um, so, if it's to extol to praise highly or glorify, then you just said that you. I think expound. Not expound is the word I was looking for. Expound. Okay, that's why I asked you what extolation was. Yeah, yeah. So it's not Thank to you for give that. high praise to. So then, it's if you're not talking about justice to. and you're just expounding on justice, I'm all for that. What is justice to you, President Sunday? What is justice? No, no, no. You, what I was saying pretty specifically was that me saying that I have a quote unquote sense of oh. justice. The okay, cigarette twelve has been extinguished. Let's see if cigarette thirteen comes. Oh, that is based upon a disgust response to certain types of actions, which may or may not be the 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 uh, the, the product of like deep reflection over a long period of time. Um, that so is what not. Is it? Well, hang on. That is not by itself expounding. A measure of justice that is inherent in the world and objective. Dude, I don't want to hear what it isn't. I want to hear what it is. But I haven't proposed one. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, you. so if you've it's proposed you one, one, no, no, but you're, you're you're dodging the question that I asked you. If Bro, you're going you to, have to you if you're going to propose, if you're going you to can't propose, answer no questions. Hang on, if you're going and to then propose, ask an infinite amount I have of answered answers, all of asked. your questions. If you propose, you have not answered the question of every what single, is. every single one. I, I have. I don't know. I, I do feel like President Sunday did answer the question. I think that B, Big Papa Fascist is mad at the answer, which, pr from I mean, I feel it's fairly straightforward. President Sunday said defining justice in a single term in all contexts is not easy to do and i don't think i can do that i don't think i'm arrogant enough to try and do that and big papa fascist didn't like that which is funny because i feel like he could have gone a different direction he could have actually kind of jumped on president sunday there if i was um if i was making his argument for him which i don't think is actually possible because i don't actually think you could replicate that type of sort of like free balling uh, flying by the seat of your pants moment, ju like logic. It's not possible to replicate that. It's a, it's like watching a dance. It only happens one time. Uh, even if you were to film it, like we have here, you know, you're not really witnessing that you're not really able to tap into the, to the, to the unique pathways that it took. But, um, if I was in his position, the easy answer would have been like, well, see president Sunday, you, uh, you know, you, you simply lack the wisdom of, a, of an institution that's 2,000 years old. My church has spent 2,000 years, um, you know, uh, uh, working out the idea of justice, and you can't do that because you don't have a church. But, of course, I don't know. I don't think he's thinking that deep right now. That would have been the obvious answer to me because I do think that President Sunday's answer, uh, it, it, it's an unsatisfying answer. Um but I don't think it's a dishonest answer. I think it's a very honest answer to say, like, I couldn't possibly define justice in all circumstances. That's really hard to do. Uh, and I'm not arrogant enough to try that. Uh, like, let's go topic by topic or whatever. Um, I think that that's an unsatisfying answer, which leaves you open optically for critique. But uh, big papa fascist, big shocker, can't fucking capitalize on it. So... But, no, if no, if again, but if you're proposing, but if you're proposing, I don't know what it means. Well, hang what on. Does justice mean? Do you not know what it means? I'm asking for what you, when I ask you, because you said 
um, what brought all this up was I asked you what in the Christian what is the Tao ethical system Andrew what is the Tao do you have what is the Tao what is the what is the Tao no I'm 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 I'm, and then hang on hang on Sunday let him let him get the full question out and then you can respond (sighs) okay so the question what started all of this Mm -hmm. okay was (laughs) I asked you what is your criticism against thou shalt not murder Okay. I have no criticism you, against thou shalt not murder. And you said to me, well, this brings up a whole big can of worms. It's this whole uh, irreducible complexity. No, 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 no. You're, 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 you're confused. Let me finish, bro. I'm almost done. Then you can you respond. let me finish? That's because I was in the middle of talking. I'm sorry I cut but you so off. But so was I, talking. and you cut me off, too. That's the back and forth part. <laughs> yeah, but very quickly. No, no, but done. just, just a done. very All right, just a very right, hang on, hang on. Both of you, both of you. Hang on, hang on. Andrew, make it, 20 make seconds. it concise. Oh, 20 seconds. Sunday no, no, because I want to let him. 20 seconds. Zen, Zen, I want to I wanna let him talk at length. I just want to make a quick point of correction. The argument was not that I have a challenge to thou shall not commit murder. You were providing that as something that has universal assent. I was challenging that notion because the nature of murder can differ radically depending on your notion of justice, so on and so forth. That's what led to this part of the conversation. As you were, please proceed. No, that's not what happened. So that's bad framing. What happened is... I think that is what happened. President Sun- I, like like that. Th- that's basically almost exactly what happened. President Sunday did. It, I, I don't know. I feel like President Sunday pretty accurately represented that. A big Papa fascist brought up thou shalt not murder and then President Sunday said yeah but people interpret that very differently and then and, and then big Papa fascist proved him correct by saying well unjust murder and then they spun off on this because President Sunday goes that opens a whole can of worms about justice and then Andrew Wilson was like oh oh, oh yeah well what do you even know what justice is because you're a leftist and they don't believe in justice you just like fucking people in the ass. Please don't fuck my wife. Is I asked you for to give me an actual argument against Christian morals. And you said, well, why don't you bring one up? I think that's a fair critique. Killjoy says, I think sometimes Sunday struggles with using a lot of theory speak. And I think he has a hard time wording things in a way that normies can understand. Yes, I do think that's a flaw sometimes um, that President Sunday brings to some of his debates um, is that... Uh, I think sometimes he overcomplicates and it leads to uh, ta- tangents that don't necessarily need to be there. But that's just something that he can work on over time. I don't think it's like a fatal flaw. Um, I think that I think the biggest flaw on President Sunday in this argument has not has been uh, not being uh, positive enough, um, which is to say that he's he's played very defensively, which is very funny for us because. Um, reacting to this i'm able to basically respond to big papa fascist arguments but there was a lot of stuff that big papa fascist was basically able to say uncontested and president sunday has mostly focused on taking the most extreme of them and deconstructing them without actually putting forward his own argument or his own view all that often now to be fair the deck is kind of stacked against president sunday in that he's engaging with a christian fascist which is a pretty loaded position um uh, that has a lot of um an almost fantastical amount of uh claims about the world you see uh because big papa fascist isn't engaging with the world in any sort of factual sense basically everything that he says is some sort of claim about existence it's either a factual claim that he's more or less inventing or basically him saying this is the way the world should be at every turn He's not really um he's not really like like stating observations and then building from there. He's kind of asserting, well, you know, uh, the west has fallen and the west is falling basically and if we want to make sure that that the reproductive rates uh, among Christians are able to keep up, we're going to need to basically in, uh, embrace a Christian empire. And the Christian empire is going to do really good because, you know, these liberals uh, liberals basically are inviting immigrants into their house to have sex with them. And, you know, that means that the liberals aren't reproducing, which means they have no real way to, way to spend their spread their ideas. They're basically going to defeat themselves, which means that we're going to win no matter what. I don't even have to basically do anything. Let me smoke another cigarette because that's basically doing the same thing as actually having a real belief and i said okay how about thou shalt not murder let's get into that and you said well 
right? There's a lot. And I said, it's unjustified. That's what it means. An unjustified taking of a life is murder. And you said, well, the, what is what is justice here? And so I asked you, well, well, from your purview, what does justice mean? You still, by the way, have not actually given me an answer. Now, this, to be fair, I'm going to be as charitable as I can be. Uh, Plato said that asking what justice is is probably one of the hardest fucking things on earth to answer, right? Especially when you're talking about uh, justification behind what justice is. So to be as charitable as possible, you can say, I don't know, but don't evade. Just answer me directly. He did. He, he did say that. What is justice, man? I don't know. OK, he, that's literally the first thing he said. That's like literally the first thing he said was, I don't know. I don't know what justice is in any universal sense. What the what? What the fuck? But I could also say I do know with a, with a, like several like tiers of contingent asterisks attached to them. Yeah. So, for example, going back to Plato. Like if you were to ask me, what is what is justice under this view of the world? Well, justice is the idea that there is this correct arrangement of things in which things do as they're supposed to and they flourish and they're preordained. Oh, we hit cigarette to... 13. Oh, my God. Cigarette 13. Woo. We did it. Or whatever. If you want to like invoke some sort of Aristotelian teleology in there. And they don't impede each other from doing so. Okay, that's a notion of justice. Not very prescriptive, but that's a notion of justice. If you're saying that, for example, uh, murder goes against... Big Papa fascist lungs right now. Uh, justice, and this is universal assent. Well then, what I need from you, and why we were on this whole train to begin with, is I need something that actually ties down yes i knew you'd see reason arlo i knew it see this is why you trust L let's just be real this is why you this is why you come to my stream because i have the wisdom to know all of these things to a particular conception of justice such that even where they disagree there's something implicit that binds them all together so your statement is still correct that would be god it would be god mm -hmm. okay so the 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 general belief in God um, stands. Well, the, the, it would be the Trinitarian God, yeah. But that would be the appeal that we would make for where <laughs> all things good come from and what justice is and all of these different things is outlined in Christian ethics. So Christian ethical purview for justice is pretty set out and it's fairly laid in stone. This is why I'm talking when when kind of earlier in the conversation we're discussing. It's actually laid in ink you, and it's printed by Zondervan. When you get you were. when you, well, some of it's actually laid in stone. But anyway, when you get into the <laughs> when enough, you get into the enough. particular, whoa, whoa! Conversation we're discussing. It's actually laid in you, ink and it's printed by Zondervan. When you get you were. when you, well, some of it's actually laid in stone. But anyway, when you get into the <laughs> when enough, you get into the enough. particulars, right? This is where really liked his own joke there what have these delineations from the universals and why i always think that it's the particularism we move into the particularism that progressives have such a hard time when they rule because they can't seem to determine whether or not when they get into a particular if it's so complex that there's just no way to govern a behavior and it sure seems like it's the opposite in application <laughs> well i i suppose where to go from here then? Um, why don't I just put the ball in your court, Andrew? Justify your notion of justice. I just did. Well, you my referred... justification. My justification is God. Is the justification God. for God is the precondition for knowledge is a requisite of God existing. Ooh, but that's that's a little tricky, though, isn't it? If I don't the think so. Well, if the existence of God is a prerequisite for no a prerequisite for knowledge. Um, by what metric have you ascertained knowledge of that fact? <clears throat> Through divine revelation. Divine revelation. Oh, no! Uh-oh. We've gotten... Oh, man. This is something I... This is a phenomenon I've talked about in the past where there are certain types of Christians who, um, when you when you argue them down about how they know the truth, they eventually come to the uh, the conclusion that God told me, and that's how I know.
And it appears that Big Papa Fascist is one of that type of Christian. I know that the Bible is true because God told me it was true. Personally. Oh, boy. Yikers. Mm -hmm. Where? So on your end, right? Is where, where, where? No, please elaborate. I'm, I'm... On, your, on your end here, as you make this statement, for whether or not I can ascertain knowledge at all, do you think that there's any such thing as something which is true? I think I asked a question. And I answered it. Now I'm asking one. So I'm asking you, can is anything true? Is anything true? Mm hmm What do you mean by true? I mean, it's um, something that you would consider to be a justified fact. A justified fact. Mm hmm Justified in the sense of I have something external to my senses yeah, and do you have any justified? Oh, just very yeah. quickly. Just very something. Okay. By, by justified, you mean I have something external to my senses and my experience to validate it? Nope. No? I'll give you the actual philosophical term just okay. so we're not bypassing each other for the actual definition of true, since this is largely becoming a pedantic debate. <clears throat> so <clears throat> when you're talking about a metaphysical truth, okay. when you're talking about, um, let's see, uh, belief, thought, um, propositions, things like this, mm. is logic true? Is logic true? Yeah. Well, so I mean, does A does does A always have to be A? The law of let's say it'd be uh, it would be very difficult to have a logical system where no term had it had Yeah, but very difficult yeah. doesn't mean anything. Is it true? Is A equal oh. it's the law of identity does, true? Yeah, law of identity. Does A always have to equal A? Is that objectively true? It's objectively a condition of of speech, certainly. Is it true? Could there ever I have, be a I have no, uh, is, under, could there ever be a what? condition in which you and I could have a logical debate where A could equal anything other than A? No, but I mean, you understand, of course, though, that the root of logic is specifically the word used to denote speech. Yes, logos. So what the it actually logi. is. No, and no, I, I dispute what you're saying. I think that the logi. Kildre says, I call this rhetorical bedrock. It's a position where someone will only loop back to because it's foundational. Andrew thinks that God can only make something true or valid, and without God, everything is a lie, and his moral foundations would crumble. Again, it's why people like Andrew think without the Bible, people would just murder people because it's a foundational premise to them that God stops man from murdering. But he doesn't, though. Like, it's self-evidently true that he doesn't. In fact, we can see multiple... Again, his, 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 his viewpoint is just... It's just stupid and it's it's what, what this whole thing of like well i know the bible is true because god told me it's true which is actually should be translated as um i feel like it's true is a incredibly um intellectually lazy thought terminating cliche and it's um it's very very common among christians um that basically when push comes to shove uh they will never ask the they believe it is essentially sacrosanct I've talked about this in the past. Hold on real quick. I've talked about the egg, the shell, the egg shell that is built around the Christian mind, specifically fundamentalists and extremist Christians, that they have an egg shell around their mind, uh, mostly comprised of uh, thought terminating cliches and various things that are designed to prevent other ideas from penetrating within. And this one is a big part of it. It is essentially sacrosanct to question the validity of the book. If you um, if you even ask that question in your own mind, you are supposed to feel bad. And most Christians will be literally, I mean, it, it is literally uh, sacrilegious to do so. You will be punished for doing that. You are meant to have an emotional reaction to the idea of questioning the book. Now, I think that's a ridiculously unhealthy position to be in, um, obviously, for obvious reasons. I believe that you should be able to have a frank look at the truth value, at the truthfulness, at the historical validity of your book without having an emotional uh, response that tells you to flee because you might be committing a sin, because you might be endangering your immortal soul by ever asking a question. But um, as we can see firsthand here, um, one of those little pieces of the eggshell is that idea that, oh, well, I know the Bible is true because 
of divine revelation. The Bible revealed itself to me. God revealed himself to me through the Bible, and therefore I know it's true. I don't even have to think about whether or not it's true anymore. You've created a thought-terminating cliche that allows you to simply discard any truth claims about your book. Um, yeah. Yep. And uh, it's a very shallow stopping point, right, for truth. It's basically saying, um, yeah, I don't, I never need to think about any other books. I never need to think about any other worldviews. Uh, I've decided on this one. And then you can sort of dive to infinite complexity within that book, but you never go outside of the eggshell. You know, within your book, within your little eggshell of belief, you can get as, as down into the nitty gritty as you want. You can basically come up with any justification for anything. So long as it re resides within the eggshell, um, but nothing beyond that. And of course, um, I, I do think that in this particular part that President Sunday is making a small mistake. I think he should have simply uh, agreed that, yeah, um, logic is true, at least as far as the we can take the term truth. Um, something is true. But what is much hard, is a much harder question. It's very difficult to determine what is ultimately true. We know we exist. That much is self-evident. We can't not exist. But how do we exist? Who knows? Like, for all we know, we could be in a dream. We could be living in a, a VR projection. It's very difficult for us to be able to, to project beyond that. But we can acknowledge that some, some things are true. And that within the universe that we live in, there are certain logical truths that we can uh, at least become aware of. Yeah. So I think I think President Sunday made a small mistake here, but but even that even even considering that President Sunday made a mistake, just take a look at how much further he's actually willing to engage with these questions. This is something that's been abundantly clear throughout this entire conversation that President Sunday is somebody who's actually willing to engage to the full depth of these philosophical questions. He's someone who takes his beliefs seriously, whereas Andrew Wilson, he, his entire belief system stops at uh, I feel like the Bible is true, therefore it is true. That's not a serious position. It's intellectually, theologically bankrupt, and it displays a lack of genuine faith in his belief. Because in my opinion, if you truly believe in your belief, then your belief should be able to weather doubt. If you truly believe in the teachings of the Bible, then you should have the faith necessary to question the teachings of the Bible, and you should know that they will come out the other side victorious. And if they don't, well, maybe you did something wrong, or maybe there's something wrong with those teachings. Maybe God was trying to guide you somewhere else. Maybe there's a problem in your translations. Uh-oh, maybe there's been some politics involved in the creation of your holy book. But that's a, that is a difficult and, and complicated and scary world. So instead, you retreat to the cuckold's little egg. You retreat to your egg where God told me the Bible is true, and, and he specifically told me the King James Version is true, the one that I read. The King James Version in English, of course. The King James Version in English, as published by uh, whoever publishes it now. Yeah. So... I do think President Sunday is making a little bit of a uh, a debate mistake here, in my opinion. Has much more than just the ability to delineate speech. So I'm asking you again, though, the three laws of logic which exist, okay? Yeah. Are they true? Are they true? There's yeah. a difference. Well, here's the problem. You use logic in order to justify a statement as true or false. If a statement is a condition of logic being possible you can't externally verify it because you're you're unarmed you don't have a logical tool independent of those to verify their truthfulness what i would say is that they're conditional on, on reasoning and i would agree with you there but to say that they're true is a different thing entirely yes. yeah so i'm asking you if they're true well how would you establish that they're true if you refer to their conditions there's a pragmatic reason for just assuming asking you true. if they're true bro well i just told you i don't think it's a thing you can ascertain you because can't i don't ascertain. can you ascertain that anything is true can you understand it? And things within a logical system. But the problem with the law of identity is that it's sort of axiomatic and foundational to any logical system. So you can't really use a logical system to get behind them. Right? Oh, so you mean 
you mean that in order to refute the logical system, you'd have to use logic? Good night, call me. So it's like a first principle? Well, no. What I'm saying is that there's an inherent contradiction in trying to apply, for example, a principle of logic, which is a proof, to something whose back end rests outside of logic. It being foundational to yeah, logic. Yeah, so then that would be can't a use first logic. principle. Well, it would be a first principle, yes. But the problem, though, is that proving something is true or false is something you do via logic. If something is foundational to right, logic, right? So then, if it's you a first principle it. for the establishment of truth, it must be true. Well, not for the establishment of truth. You have to be careful. Truth has determined. That's what you said. <laughs> I'm repeating your words back to no, you. No, 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 no. Truth is that is you the... establish truth through logic. You establish the truthfulness, or you prove the truthfulness of a thing through logic. However, there are some well, things I mean, that are not amenable that... to that sort of proof. Well, is that true? Is that true? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so is it objectively true? Is it objectively true that there are some things that are not amenable to logical proof? Yes, I would say so. Okay, what are those things? Well, for example, this is the whole like idea behind uh, Kant's critique of pure reason. You can't, for example, get behind the conditions of temporality or of, uh, spatial divisions in order to justify the reality of, of the presentations to your experience that you have. Um, That's just a word salad, dude. That's okay, not well, I'll put, it, I'll put it more, I'll put it more simply. Um, you can't, for example, remove from your experience the extensions in space and time that give the objects in your world the legibility that they have in order to prove the existence of those things in themselves independent of your experience. This would include God, by the way. How would you know that without the law of identity? Because space and time are, under this theory of, under this mode of analysis, for example, they are foundational. But without the law of identity? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's irrelevant to that. Um, no, it's not irrelevant reason, to well, that. No, no, no. Space, space and time would still have to be space and it would still have to be time, right? Well, no, they wouldn't, though, is the thing, because the point well, is that these... I would love to hear how they couldn't be. Well, because they're foundational to your experience and to your thought, right? Yeah. yeah, so then that would mean that they're still the thing that they are. Well, not necessarily, because they could, for example, have extensions beyond what you're capable of reading and experience. So it could be, for example, that there is such a thing as time, and there is such a thing as time that is inflected in your experience, but you have no way of knowing what that connection is or what the actual like contours of the thing so if there's a such a thing as time which are. is connected to your experience then that time would still be itself and it would still be connected to the, your experience which would also be experience well you're asking essentially like it's, it's the brain in a vat problem right it's like not really a brain yeah. in a vat problem well it is I'm a little bit because if, if the brain in the vat can it be anything other than a brain in a vat well that's the thing if you've already accepted that your experience can be simulated by something external to to you whatever you are and you yeah. only know for example of the idea of a brain and a vat and the relation between them via your experience and, and your memory then yeah it very well could be um you've you've opened the door to to a wide range no, of possibilities none of those things none of those things which would lead up to whatever the false reality is would still be anything other than what those things are wait okay so is he trying to argue that the that the false reality creates the the thing in and of itself that if you are a brain in a vat and uh, and and your experiences are being pumped into you uh that time must exist because time the illusion of time has been con conjured i i don't think i agree with that but also I'm trying. I'm wondering where this uh, where this connects back to what we were talking about. Uh, let's continue. I'm interested in this. Can you still one more time. Whatever the conditionals would be that would lead up to whatever this false reality is, which you perceive, all of those things would still be what they are. Maybe. How do you know? Well, how could they be anything other than what they are? <laughs> I don't know. I'm open minded about it. That would wouldn't that? How be... could they be anything other than what they? what they are well because they could be constructs they could be illusions right is is what present sunday is saying present sunday is saying it's it's conceptually possible to to that that time as we understand it doesn't exist as we understand it and instead exists in a totally different way but that our perception of time is just that it is only our perception of time and that time might not even resemble time if we were to see the true form of it 
that is what that is the steel man version of present sunday's argument and the steel man version of big papa fascist argument is no -uh. i mean i don't know it's basically i mean his, his thing here is basically saying no time has to be time and i don't know why he says that because like He's acknowledging the brain in a vat thing. So like I guess I guess it's just that whole thing that at the end of the day he needs to work for he needs to work to that position of divine revelation. Because if time isn't what it says it is, then the Bible isn't what it says it is. But it, time needs to be what it says it is. Or time needs to be as we understand it now in order for the Bible to be true. Which is why he can't accept the idea that we might have that time or space might actually be different than we currently perceive them. That it's a possibility that we should consider. Be a contradiction? Well, how would that be a contradiction? Because how, if something is not what it is, then that's literally a performative contradiction. Well, no, because we're not talking about what it is. We're talking about what is presented to you. So, for example... Wait, is that cigarette 14 or is this cigarette 13? Oh, no, I lost track. Has he been smoking it all this time? Or did he let it go out? Is this cigarette 14 or cigarette 13? Tell me. What's the truth? What's the truth? Contradiction. Well, no, because we're not talking about what it is. We're talking about what is... That doesn't look lit. This looks like a fresh cig. Did he really down a cig? I didn't... I wasn't watching. I was listening to what they were saying. I didn't see if he's been smoking this whole time. Oh. <gasps> Oh, he was. He was. This is cigarette 14. This is cigarette 14. It's cigarette 14. I rewinded and watched. He was smoking. We weren't paying attention, but he was smoking. This is likely cigarette 14. Presented to you. So, for example... The law of identity is what it is. The law of identity that a is, what is it is. A is A and always will be A. It can't be anything other than itself. So the question yeah, again becomes but, but presuming, all the conditionals which lead up to this sure. must be whatever they are. Yeah, yeah but that, that's, a, that's a pragmatic argument fundamentally. Because yes, it must be presuming itself, presuming we can make any positive use. Yeah, okay, so what, what Sunday is saying here, if I'm getting him correctly, is that A equals A is, is the foundation for building a logic. And you can't, like, you can't, you know proceed there's no way within that logic like so you're building from a thing i'm trying to start with the idea that this you know that i have this this remote control this remote control is a remote control that this remote control is what it is regardless of my perception of it it is what it is and we go from there and what present sunday is trying to point out is that we can't really get before that point because we are making an assumption that the, the A equals A is, like, what A is, is in and of itself an assumption. While we can acknowledge that it is what it is, like, that, that a thing is itself, that ultimately, like, the nature of that thing, we can't always determine with 100% certainty, which could affect our following, the following conclusions. Of language that relies upon terms meaning themselves, so that they can relate to each other as difference. Well, but, you haven't, but, you haven't, the, wait, but you the haven't, but you haven't, but you haven't to themselves are relating to themselves because they're identifying the thing, which is itself. No, no, we, we identify them as themselves. Yes. Because they are themselves. They can't be what they're not. Well, there's such a thing as illusions, for example, right? Yeah, but they're illusions. They can't be anything other than that. <laughs> yeah, but they would. Okay. But the, the point I'm getting at here. <laughs> Now, well, answer to this, that how could you have this discussion? Everything that you have said has affirmed the law of identity. Every single thing that you I have agree. said has affirmed. Okay, that's a good, that's a good way of su summarizing things, Pilger. Are you still playing Dark Souls? That's my goal. The law of identity. So. No, no, I, I, I agree with, I agree with that. True. Well, I agree with that. But what I'm getting at here is the condition of, of speech and argument categorically we are at being six the law hours. of identity. I didn't expect this debate Obviously, to take so long. Obviously, to use that in order to prove the law of identity would I'll be argument play some circle. Dark Souls. You have to this. presume it. I keep doing long but streams. But crucially. I keep doing way too long streams. Lately, 
I've, 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 I've kept saying I'm not going to do so many long streams, but lately I've just been doing so many of them. Us having to presume it is not a back way of saying that, therefore, it's obviously true in some extra human sense. You don't sense. have to presume it. But you do. Go it's ahead and argue without principle. the presumption. How, how? How would you do so? Yeah, you can't. You can't. But that's but my point. It, that doesn't mean that you have to presume that we it's true. We agree with each other. I'm, I'm just saying that it just is here. true. <laughs> okay. Let's get to the God part, okay? We're going to we're gonna circle this drain all night. <laughs> okay. Well, so the thing is, is that when we're talking about Christian nationalism okay. or Christian populism, things like this, and I agree, we Oof. went off the rails. It was kind of fun. I it was fun. It I enjoyed fun. this. Okay. But um, when we're talking about Christian populism, Christian nationalism, things like this, ultimately, it doesn't really matter if you think God is fake or God is real. All right. Ultimately, that's kind of irrelevant. What I'm really looking for is to whether or not you can argue against the effects that are brought in by what Christianity brings in, even if the God part of it is totally false. To me, that's the seemingly the most irrelevant part from your position. <laughs> well, I mean, I've got two responses to that. The first is, if all this is not true, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. But secondly... If all this is what? Uh, big friend? No, I didn't hear what you said. I'm oh, sorry. If all well, of this well is as, as, if all of this is fake, then let us, as the apostle said, eat and drink for tomorrow we die. But leaving that aside, um, if it is the case that it is irrelevant to you whether or not like the, the metaphysical claims undergirding the promise of no, salvation... No, it's not irrelevant to me. It's irrelevant to the position of Christian nationalism. Fair. So let's... If it's irrelevant to the position of Christian nationalism, whether or not mm -hmm. the promise of salvation has any truthfulness to it, whether or not mm -hmm. it has any, any like reality, um, whether or not, in fact, you're as doomed as everybody else, regardless of what creed you follow... Um, my immediate question is, why Christian nationalism then? Why not invent a new creed that does away with all the inconveniences and all the inconvenient history and so on and so forth, but keeps all the stuff that produces the behaviors that you want to see in society? It's a phenomenal question, actually, and it's been tried over and over and over again, where people have tried to make countless versions of this, like the Schofield Bible, which does exactly that. It takes all of those good parts of Christianity and tries to implement them. You, but, mean, like, you mean like the Orthodoxes did? And the Catholics before them. He he goes to the the Schofield Bible, but oh hello. Going to sleepy. See you tomorrow, though. I love you. Sleep well. Joe's going to bed. For some reason, human beings seem to be hardwired towards theism. Oddly enough. If human beings are, are, are hardwired towards theism, then why do you need evangelicalism? Why don't you have a belief like, say, Judaism, which is non-evangelical? Why don't you have uh, a, any, any, any of the other countless non-evangelical beliefs? This is so stupid. Again, why have we? Oh my God, why are we? Why are we here? This guy. Why are we here just to suffer? Enough. Even evolutionists seem to agree that this is true. They seem to be hardwired towards this behavior. And where have they? Where have they located these wires? I said, well, so I'm not talking about a thing which is anything external of observable postulation. So. They're saying that uh, Damn, if evolution is true, and I'm assuming you think it is, right? Sure. Yeah. Or real or whatever, whatever metric of truth you use, you think it's true sure. enough? Okay, so if you do think that evolution is true... Do you, by the way, just out of curiosity? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. No. So if you, but if you do think that evolution is true... He doesn't believe in evolution. True, oh, then we must have evolved to be Christians. He's a young Earth creationist. Damn. Through natural selection, right? Through natural selection. I thought there yeah. were. Uh, I thought there was a whole book called Acts in which specific actions were taken that caused the conversion eventually of uh, an empire that spread a creed throughout the world, often at the edge of the sword and with a large, large amount of technology. And that would be natural selection, right? Would that be natural selection? I think the whole idea behind natural selection is that the environment selects for 
what yeah but what i mean we're part of the environment are. we're not external to environment well i agree you're an you're an excellent uh interactionist um but I, I guess more to the point so your argument therefore would be essentially brett weinstein's argument about circumcision it had uh, it has demonstrated survival value and therefore it's a positive adaptation well, that wouldn't be my argument i'm saying that from the perspective of the evolutionist and this is true that oh, here he, he's doing it by your logic again Oh my God, the buy your logic shit is getting so tiring. They're both doing it, but but Big Papa fascist is doing is like he 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 does it at the moment at like the most strange moments. They have both done this buy your logic shit. <sighs> Must have evolved to be a Christian via natural selection. If natural selection just means that the kind of weak are called out and the strong end up surviving, now this is kind of a um, a bit of a reductionist way of looking at it, but I think the principle is basically sound. Okay, so when you're looking at, so does believe in natural selection, doesn't believe in evolution. Wild, damn that! If that is not the most fascist position I've ever heard in my entire life, that like, I've just it just it doesn't get more fucking categorically fascist than that. Yeah, I do believe that the strong live and the weak don't live. But I don't believe in no evolution, though. Kind of anything that doesn't survive, right? That's natural selection. Anything that doesn't survive, whatever remains, that's natural selection. Well, it seems to me that the distinction between natural selection and intelligent design is precisely that. One is not conditioned by the interventions of intelligent agents. So as soon as you're talking about something that happens in the context of people making decisions and scheming and organizing in society, you're not dealing with natural selection. There well, is like a natural. What's so natural about that selection? It seems like it's, see, that's like saying if wolves like get together to take down a rabbit, that that's not natural selection. You're onto something there. But leaving that aside, the point is the reason why you would refer to natural selection in this case is to say that there is something intrinsic to the thing that confers on it in a state of total, more or less total chaos, total randomness, uh, a survival advantage such that it is conditioned to survive in a particular environment. One of the reasons why we know that... Well, that would be everything, right? Uh, yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, it, it wouldn't necessarily be determinative of the total range of features of a thing, though. So, for example, even in biological organisms... There are vestigial organs that have no purpose. And so my case here would be, are, are there not vestigial organs in Christianity that you can do away with? Not necessarily on the, the, uh, on the, 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 the mold of the Schofield Bible, but like in principle, isn't that something you could simply do anyways? And isn't that something that has inevitably been done by the church itself when it canonizes yeah, or decanonizes well, okay, text? Okay, so to try to give as good faith of an answer to the question as I possibly can, I think... I think I, I'm kind of understanding the totality of what you're asking here, okay? And you can correct me if I'm wrong, because okay. I give the answer, right? If it's not the answer that you you were after. But if you're asking, is there anything within uh, Christianity which can be cut out? That's what you're saying. Is there yeah. anything which is an externality which could be cut out? Well, a core tenet of Christianity is the essentially the freedom of choice. You have to choose Christianity or else absent the choice of christianity hmm. so core to christianity is freedom of choice but this guy wants to make it fucking illegal to be able to view porn at all it sounds like i mean most of what he's advocated here has been in for he, he literally has been saying this entire time that he wants christians to make to use force to enforce their moral worldview but i thought it was about fucking free choice uh, again, just soup brained, no consistency whatsoever, not a drop of consistency in this guy's views. In, in, in the actual embrace of it, uh, to be a Christian, which is why Christian nations generally are very tolerant of other people. We don't force people to accept um, that. My source you know, is that Christ I made it the savior. fuck up. That would be a contradiction, but that doesn't mean we can't enforce moral codes. You're so full of surprises. Um, you're, a, you're a thoroughgoing liberal this entire time. No, that's not liberalism. <laughs> that's what <I'm, laughs> Yes, it is, dude. Dude, you just said you wanted to stigmatize gay people, and now you're talking like you're a fucking. He's literally talking like he's like a big tent 
Elizabeth Warren liberal. You know, we want people to be able to choose their religion, live the life they want to live. Saying is that we are not going to make it's not. We're not going to we're not going to make the 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 forced claim that you must believe this thing. Otherwise, that would be contrary to the religion itself. So when you're saying, is there anything that you can cut out? You could live your entire life as a secularist, um, <clears throat> absent Christianity in total. And that's what's going on with many people now. I just think the result of that seems to be really bad, ultimately. Like what? And also, it doesn't really answer the question of why Christians couldn't enforce the moral codes that they want to enforce or be in charge. Well, I guess that that is that is the question, isn't it? Because cigarette fifteen, we're on cigarette fifteen, everybody. Attention, everyone! Cigarette fifteen has begun. Fifteen cigarettes in two hours. Once again, like so far. the conditions that you characterize as your success have already once obtained, and the result that you think is so bad is its result. How do you how do you evade that? Just as a, just leaving all that back stuff aside. I don't like, understand. Maybe rephrase the the synopsis there sure so you've already had a situation which the overwhelming majority and you've even uh you've even proposed that the anglican church was essentially the same as the catholic church and for all intents and purposes here no i didn't did but well okay whatever the point I is been, Brianna, the I point is you had you had global you had global tipster had global... tipster good to see you how you doing tonight take a look at the sig count man you've been missing it this uh, this Christian uh, fraudster over here, this little antichrist uh, LARPer, he's he smoked si 15 cigarettes in two hours. 15 cigarettes. Two hours. Can you fucking imagine? Holy shit. Christian hegemony of some mm -hmm. stripe for a very, very, very long time. And yet, nonetheless, it gave rise not just to liberalism, but to all of its after effects that you're decrying now. How do you avoid that again? The, let's say you, let's well, say you win. And How do you avoid again, that? Again, the, meth the, the methodology is not whether or not Christianity may go through further upheavals. That would be like you saying, I'm going to abandon the worldview of progressivism because there could be upheavals which uh, lead to uh, conservatism again. That would be insane. No. Dude, the difference the difference is that progressivism isn't a worldview that claims divine right and self and like and and naturalistic self-evident truth you have spent this argument claiming that that there is a natural tendency for humans to fall to be to come towards god that god is calling all people towards it and yet president sunday has correctly pointed out that your that christians already fucking had their run of the earth and it resulted in the world as it is now. Everything, everything that is, is present in the world right now can be, in some way be tied to the, to the past, to the Christian past. The Christian, the Christian churches he subscribes to had power and they failed. By his own logic, I'm going to make a by your logic, but by his own logic they failed. Well, I mean, weirdly enough, I think that'd actually be a very strong case. If, for example, I take conservatism to be an ideology that is detrimental both to human morals and maybe to the conditions of life on this planet, I think they mm -hmm. are. I think it would actually be a very, if for whatever reason you managed to actually determine that with certainty, I think it'd take an extreme degree of arrogance to claim that. But if you could, I think it'd actually be a very strong argument in favor of at least temporarily abandoning progressive ethics. Yeah, but I mean, this is theoretical both ways. So you're saying if theoretically some sort of uh, you know Christian upheaval could happen again. Yeah. Isn't it worth abandoning the worldview because there could be you know some unintended consequences? It's like, no, that would be true. That's not what President Sunday said. What President Sunday said is, uh, is that, don't you think you should be more self-reflective about the fact that you, you and your belief system already had unimaginable power, unimaginable power and it produced this world while out of the other side of your mouth you are claiming that there's like a divine order that is un unchallengeable present sunday is pointing out a flaw in your worldview a glaring massive gaping gushing wound in your worldview of any worldview you could point to and well, I mean, none of them if... are going to abandon 
the the worldview uh, that they see as being the correct one because there could be some unforeseen consequences or upheavals or weird shit that happens within the purview. I mean, that's kind of insane. It's like trying to adjust for unknown. No the upheaval when you have almost full uh, dominant and violent control of the world and you oopsie doopsie accidentally lose all control of the world to the point that you're basically globally reviled. Whoopsies. Whoopsies. Owns. Well, what like if they're a, well, know, what if they're what if they're right? not it's a known unknown? <laughs> well, these aren't these aren't these aren't unknown. These aren't known. Sorry, these aren't unknowns. Like these this is something unknowns. Well, no, because this isn't something that simply that hasn't simply happened in the past. This is something that has happened in the past which we have the clear memory of. So even for example... Oh, okay. Well, then abandon secularism because they may make something more powerful than nuclear bombs and abandon science because of that, too. There's a line of argumentation in favor of that, but leaving that aside... <laughs> I mean, doesn't that seem counterintuitive to you to say we should abandon science because they're probably going to make something in the future that's far more destructive than a nuclear bomb? In fact, I'd say that there's more evidence that science is going to make something more powerful than a nuclear bomb in my lifetime and in your lifetime, then there is that if Christians take over, it's going to lead to a forced schism. Well, for example, um, through science, we uh, we developed antibiotics. Very good. Reduced our, reduced our rate of death considerably. But by right. the same so, token, so we, also created, that even we, also created, we also created... We also created the... Condi well, not just unknown consequences, though. Known consequences. So, for example... Yeah, so you're saying that, that, that you, uh, ultimately, within your ideology, there can be so much that are good or that you think is good that will lead to good that even if there's unintended consequences it's still worth doing not exactly i'm actually using this as an analogy for yours because given what you said about christian nationalism for it not really mattering whether or not god actually exists or whether the reports about christ's doings in the bible are true etc whether or not like that is actually essential president sunday has him on this one the fact that the fact that big it's actually a big i can't say it's a big win but I would say that it, it should be. It should be completely invalidating that there is now a clip out there of, of Big Papa Fascist, the Christian nationalist, saying it doesn't actually matter whether or not Jesus is God. That it is... It, I don't know. All I can say is go on back and watch my intro where I said that it doesn't really matter to them that the truth of their beliefs... Uh, that the that the the, the Christ-like behaviors, their actual beliefs don't matter, that it's just they see it as a way to power, that the power is what's important to them and not the religious aspect, that Christian nationalists are attempting to dupe uh, well-meaning and actually faithful Christians into a hate movement. And here you have it. I mean, he just says, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's true or not. What I'm here for is building a society that is coherent and uh, gives me power. I think that's actually a get from Sunday. You know, I've been a little bit critical of Sunday's approach throughout this um, throughout this debate. Uh, I've, I, you know, I feel like I've been fair. I've given him credit when he has a point, and I've tried to steel man his positions even when I think that he's made mistakes. But I think that's a big get from President Sunday from this conversation. It took a long time to get there, but getting Big Papa Fascist to admit that, yeah, it doesn't like it doesn't actually matter. My goals are to create a like stable state. Uh, that that the it's just cold power like no believer in Christianity would ever say that it doesn't actually matter if Christianity is true that in and of itself should be a, a, a huge issue the idea that their God that the truth of their God might not be true should be important to any genuine Christian unless they were just using Christianity as a tool to achieve power let's use that language thank instead. you well, Geek Prime I appreciate that a lot Geek Prime says, you're amazing, love you. Thank you so much. A good move. If we know from history that it produces or can at the very least produce results. That I'm really are, sorry, Dedurker. Just try, uh, I would try refreshing the page. That's really weird. Are detrimental to the goods that it does justify itself by. Then it stands to reason that either we need a way to evade these or there's something flawed in the system. Yeah? <clears throat> You mean through the purview of ecclesiastical authority and the safeguards which are put in? Yeah, those safeguards are put in. But you're talking about, again, this would be the same criticism towards science. You would have to use the exact same criticism here and say, because so much science is methodologically flawed, and tons of social science for certain is, and then in applied science that you're probably going to create something at some point. That's a weird one to throw in there. Oh, man, that's such a weird meme. The social science thing. 
the dude just admitted that he doesn't believe in evolution and then he does the the uh the fucking secular right wing position of like oh yeah well you know social science is super fucked up because they say gay people are okay that's a weird one that's a really weird one usually the types of people that break that out are like the um neoliberal types who are uh who who basically love the idea of like uh being able to figure out how to make you know m more chemicals with less ingredients but hate the idea that there that social science might point out uh you know that i don't know slave labor is bad for human existence and will undermine a good society you know that's usually like the the neolib neocon type position kind of weird kind of a weird one to throw in which is so fucking destructive it could wipe us all out well, not, we just abandon the pursuit altogether well maybe the methodology is fine but maybe it's a consequence of circumstance uh this thing produces something that actually results in the termination of the possibility of doing more science in the future forever if we kill ourselves because we've created a bunch of bacteria that are resistant to all of chariot says this guy's one of those e-catholics right is he confirmed in the catholic church uh he's actually a former catholic he left the catholic church to join the eastern orthodox church so he used to be a uh, e-catholic now he's an e-orthodox an e-e-orthodox e-e of our treatments or if we if we destroy our atmosphere or if we nuke ourselves out of existence um that would not be a hooray for science would it that would be oh if we had the capacity to retrospect at that point, maybe we should have uh, restrained ourselves a little bit more. Maybe yeah, the decisions right, that but, we made in hubris that were a bad the, idea. The criticism would still apply, which is if you're making that same criticism towards there could be unintended consequences, which may lead to a fourth or fifth schism or sixth schism or whatever, then you would still have to well, apply not even the a same schism. to the con yeah, okay, not even well, a schism. whatever the, I'm just saying, how about, how about full, how about full on apostasy across the board? How about the total dissolution of belief? Mm -hmm. in those things because all of their eggs that's worse than the entire decimation of humanity via science if you're a christian it ought to be if you believe in that because that's the damnation of the majority of humanity hell will souls. never prevail against the church that's what christians know What's so that? we know the gates of hell will never prevail against the church so we know for sure we well, know that there's an eschaton we well, know that's, that well, there's that's an... the... oh dude uh, into it all we... he's uh... That's so funny. That's fucking really funny. We got to understand all of this from your the being like, yeah, well, I know I'm not going to get nuked. The Bible told me so. Now, I don't got to worry about none of this shit. I'm going to go. I'm going to go fucking run my car for four days straight for no reason. Just to prove to you that at the end of the day, I'm all good. Bible says I'm fine. I don't fucking care. I'll smoke 15 cigarettes in less than two hours view though the criticism that you're making towards me actually applies to you actually if the scientific pursuits that you're after are the most capable of creating the most damaging things to society oh, possible, after those, God why God. don't you abandon science yes but the scientific pursuit will lead to this anyway because okay there's a flaw here in something he's saying and i'm going to take a little bit of time here okay he's saying science Science created the most dangerous thing of all time. Okay, but but science didn't create that. Science unraveled uh, and described the the already existing mechanisms that were written that are that are in the universe. Okay, like like science described the methods by which we could create a weapon using pre-existing forces. Um, but but largely christian guys created the nuclear bomb and christian guys dropped the nuclear bomb like science does not uh like science does not create uh new things it observes and documents um there are like and and uh, this is me steel manning science okay damn you're hearing it from me today i'm being a bit of an empiricist today oh my god a rationalist uh you saw it today of all of, i can't believe it i'm losing all my cred but i mean for real um like sci the way he's describing science is as if it's like a religion that you go to the church of science and you pray to science god and then science god um he he teamed everybody up and he he 
you know, invented the idea of nuclear forces. Nuclear forces exist and are a core to our universe. The sun, you know, is a is a giant fucking fusion device, okay? Uh, uh you know, scientists observed natural patterns, documented them, and then came to conclusions based on those observations. Um, and then, of course, from then on out, like, that knowledge is used by people with a political agenda. And I think it's, this is a fun, he is basically doing a fundamentally anti-intellectual argument, um, but it's a very strange anti-intellectual argument. He's basically saying that science is a bad religion that uncovered eldritch truths. He's describing science as if it's like a uh, Lovecraftian eldritch religion that, uh, you know, science opened the Necronomicon and now we're stuck in a world where eldritch horrors have ripped inside because somebody opened the Necronomicon. That's an interesting view to have. Uh, and, and I mean, like, I, I think I can understand, like the vague direction that he's coming from but it also is laughable that he would consider that like the pot the potential for nuclear war which would almost almost guaranteed be initiated by christians against other christians like just on a pure roll of the dice the likelihood lies that a lead a christian leader a leader of a country that is ma majority christian is who also is likely to be like claims to be a Christian, whether it's Trump or some other future person, they're likely to probably claim to be a Christian, that a Christian is most likely to use a nuclear weapon against another Christian. That That is the mutually assured destruction situation, right? Um, and, uh, 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 you know, so, and, and of course, like, there's that aspect, but also... That, like, he's trying to use the idea that science created the nuclear bomb to discredit science when we fucking, we know what the world was like for thousands of years under Christianity. It was fucking crusade after motherfucking crusade. It was bloodbath after bloodbath, witch burning after witch burning, fucking plague after plague, fucking women getting burnt at the stake for causing a plague because they had a bump on their leg and they also got caught fucking one of the priests and the priest needed to get rid of her as quick as possible so that it wouldn't be revealed that he was having sex even though he's a priest. You know, that sort of thing. And also, you know, he, she's a witch. She probably caused the plague. Like, that's the world that Christianity built for us. Of course people are going to want better answers than that when Christianity basically said, God did it. God did it. God did it to literally everything with no other, with no variance for thousands of years. And the world fucking sucked. You can't really blame people for turning to a different method of thought that then proves itself. You know, science has this cool thing, which is that it fucking works. Science is a method. Uh, you know, science isn't like a church that you go to. It's, he, he, he conceptualized it like that. There are people who, there are people who claim to be scientists who do behave that way, but science itself doesn't do that at all. Science is simply a method of observation and it proves itself over and over and over again that you can, uh, you can use your skills of observation, that you can measure certain things and you can come to conclusions that are able to be repeatable. The observation of gravity that I can that I can drop an, an item and have it hit the ground with incredible predictive force is uh, gives gives science an edge over things like Christianity, which Jesus. I mean, let's just be fucking real. Christian Christian uh, prophecy is like the craziest fucking shit. By comparison, the scientists have you beat like hell. Scientists can fucking predict a, how to get a, a, a group of people onto the moon with a pretty high success rate. Like, the, the Christians never got a dude to the moon. They could, they, their prophecies are like, yeah, there's a statue. And the top of the statue is made of gold. And then it's silver. 
and then it's bronze, and at the bottom it's clay. And Christians are like, yeah, that must be about uh, the Romans or some shit. And then science is like, hey, if we do all of this incredibly complex math, we can actually figure out a way to successfully get someone to the moon and back again. The fucking moon. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, yo, <laughs> based science, epic Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know, I'm not trying to be that type of person, but let's fucking be real here, dude. This, this argument from him is pretty fucking pathetic. Here's, here's the, here's the problem. How do I want to put this? Give me a sec. Let me, let me, let me formulate this for you. Um, given a situation in which are we going to get cigarette find yourself 16? by dint of acquiring Christian rule across the board, you create the conditions of the total evacuation of genuine Christian belief which seems like a possibility since it seems to commit you to activities that are going to like test. Oh dude, was that a cough? Uh belief in, in any of these things to an extraordinary degree as a condition. By the way, if you are watching this and enjoying, make sure that you're subscribed because I deliver you this beautiful, long form, fun, hilarious, literal hours of laughter and, and arguments and, and, and awesomeness. You should make sure that you're subscribed. And if you haven't pressed the like button, press that like button. The world to me. My show is 100% viewer supported. It's a lot. Thank you. ...of maintaining the church itself. This has happened. It has. It's called, it was called Arianism. Yeah. Where most of the church became. Well, I guess here's, I guess here's the, I guess here's the question. I guess here's the question, Andrew. If the gates of hell prevail against it, was it ever really the church? And are you certain that you're actually you're actually endorsing what is the church? Well, if the gates of hell prevail against it, I guess I would be wrong. My faith would be incorrect, and I'd have to adjust from there. But uh... hey, he, hey, he already jumped ship. Which church is it is being prevailed against? Which sec which sector? Which sect? You're jumping all around. Whichever one you honestly, I think Andrew bet poorly. It's funny that he jumped to the Orthodox Church when those guys only got six million here. He's such a big, he's such a big uh, fan of like the might makes right. You know, he should probably, uh, he should probably jump on board with the uh, Protestants at this point. You know. Um, so far it hasn't. But what if, what if, <laughs> what if there are very clear indications, um, being given in, in fairly those indications. They who live by the sword will die by the sword. If the church lives by the sword, it will die by the, church the sword. Church isn't living by the sword by. The Durker, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's causing you to get bombarded with uh, ads. I'm really sorry about that. You shouldn't be getting hit with them. Let me double check something. Let me make Making sure something didn't go off. Enforcement. In the, uh, That's not living by the sword. How do you how do you they're enforce talking, morality? They're talking specific well, you would use force, but that's yeah, not living no, by the sword. Only, but if somebody maximum, can, but if somebody that's like, if some, maximum, anybody should only ever be getting an ad once every thirty minutes. That's what that's the maximum amount of ads you should be getting. I'm really sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they're trying to punish you or something. If somebody is obstinate. A police officer. If somebody is obstinate, well, I mean, they would be though. That's what. That's how force works. Okay. Right? Well, then, are all police officers dying by the sword? Well, it, it matters. Metaphorically, a lot of them are. Yeah. What do you mean metaphorically? Uh, what do they, what do they, what do you mean? Nobody no, really carries dying. swords. No, anymore almost be, no police officers are dying by the sword, so they probably aren't living by the sword. When you're talking about that, they're specifically saying that- Oh man, this is such a funny fucking logic. Police officers must be doing the correct thing because most of them aren't being killed, which means that Jesus approves of them. Oh, that is such a fucking s fucked up and sick way of doing things. So I guess that means that, um, 
oh man, I guess that means that like he kind of like implicitly approves of the behaviors of like those child molesters in the Catholic Church because they didn't get smited. So I guess they're doing things that are okay, right? The Christian brain is such a fucking it's such a fucking dirty mess. They never think about the conclusions of their arguments. If you make your living as a killer, as a killer, as a mercenary, as a person who goes and takes other people's lives, yes. that's what you're making a living doing. Chances are pretty good that you're going to die by somebody else who makes. That's such a stupid. This is such a fucking stupid interpretation of live by the sword, die by the sword. Live by the sword is, and die by the sword is a fucking commandment from Jesus to abandon a violent lifestyle. It is a it is it is saying that you need to remove yourself from from a system of violence and 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 assume Christian meekness. Be a martyr. It doesn't. It's it's. Oh my God. Which is which is, which is what which is what the state does specifically. And if you tie Christians to the rule of the state, no. then the fall of the state is now tied to the. So, fall so we of have to distinguish. Yeah, so we have to distinguish yeah. these two things. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. If you, okay, so we have to distinguish these two things. <clears throat> Enforcement of morality is not living by the sword. That is not it in any way, even, even if I was to be like the most... Expressing your morality by violently enforcing other people to follow your rules absolutely is living by the sword. You are quite literally... Your entire life is now devoted to the sword. And it is directly in opposition to Christian beliefs. Charitable I could be to your interpretation there, right? That would be like saying that if I discipline one of my kids, it's living by the sword. That makes no sense. That's an enforcement of morality. In this particular case, I am the state, right? They, they literally are at my whim whenever exactly. I choose. Not yeah, exactly. No, because is, as, he admit, is he admitting to beating his kids? Like, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking even a little bit here. I've been joking a lot. But he says, if I discipline my kids with a reference to a sword, that seems fairly obvious that he's referring to physical discipline. Am I wrong here? Like, seriously, tell me if you think my logic is wrong here. But if he goes to the example, we're talking explicitly the context here is talking about using physical violence to enforce morality. And he says, if I discipline my kids, he's admitting to beating his kids. You know, honestly, that kind of just says everything you need to know about Christian nationalists. It really, it really does. It, that kind of sums up everything. It, we've talked about a lot of different arguments here. We've gone through a bunch of different, uh, 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 you know, I kind of laid out a prophecy, interestingly. Uh, use, you know, me in my, in my devilish science at the beginning of this, I predicted uh, almost exactly what things... Andrew would reveal about his position. But all of that aside, the 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 admitting to beating your kids on a live stream on the internet um is kind of kind of says all you need to know about Christian nationalists. Like gleefully saying that he's not only, you know, he he feels good about it. He feels like he's doing God's will. As a father it He's joked in previous debates about hitting his kids. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me even a fucking little bit. For the record, uh, this isn't just me virtue signaling. Uh, physically disciplining kids doesn't fucking work, okay? Uh, uh, it just doesn't. It's been heavily studied. It just traumatizes your kids. It doesn't help them at all. And it, treat, it teaches them to distrust you. It's wrong. Corporal punishment is wrong. It is wrong to fucking beat your kids. You're not saving their soul. You're not teaching them morality. You are only hurting them, and you are only proving that you are an incapable parent. And parents who beat their kids, I, quite frankly, 
hope that this, I hope, I really, really do hope that the cigarettes take them. I'll just put it like that. I think it's disgusting. I genuinely think it's one of the most disgusting things in the world. It displays uh, a, it is a, a raw expression of, of, uh, of, of power over a helpless being that is, that is by the mechanisms of society forced to be under your control and you take advantage of that to physically harm them because you think that their actions need to be corrected in some way, but you're too fucking stupid. Your brain is too fucking malfunctioning to think of any other way to do it except for fucking physically harming your child. Disgusting. Genuinely fucking disgusting. Uh, I think I've had enough of this debate. I, I don't need to see anything else. There's nothing more uh, like just, just, just so we can be clear. Let's go back. Let's just make sure so that we can be, so we can be fair. Let's listen again and, and hear what he has to say, just so that you guys can, can know for sure that I'm not like, uh, you know, I'm not re you know, I'm not over exaggerating here. Okay. Anyway, even, even if I was to be like the most charitable I could be to your interpretation there, right. That would be like saying that if I discipline one of my kids, it's living by the sword. That makes no. If I discipline one of my kids, that would be living by the sword. And of course, I'll state again, the context here is using physical violence. He's talking about right here, he is referring to beating his kids. And he's saying that it's a good and moral thing for him to do it. No sense. That's an enforcement of morality. In this particular case, as I, an enforcement of morality, that is what he's admitting to. I am the state, right? They they literally are at my whim whenever exactly. I choose. Not yeah, exactly. No, because exactly. As, as a father, I think you would agree, um, you would put the existence of your children over prolonging your own existence, yes? Yeah, but I think that... Of course, the, but a state doesn't do that. President Sunday dropped the ball here. And I'm sorry, I, ha I hate to, to fucking dig at him for this, but that is a huge miss. President Sunday is completely lost in the philosophy and just missed the fact that this fucking drooling, uh, whole, whole fucking lung uh, idiot just admitted to beating his kids in front of him, which is like the biggest kill shot to the Christian nationalist worldview you can possibly imagine. The Christian nationalists are the are the most fucking despicable people on this planet. They are so unbelievably weak they are so fucking disgustingly, sickeningly weak people. They love to beat their kids. They take joy in it. They boast about it to others. They live in a fucking uh, pre-medieval world that they fucking invented in their head. They're a danger to all other Christians. They're a danger to all people of all other types because they are the most sick people of all. They are power fetishists. That's it. But they launder it as a moral viewpoint. They don't believe in any of this shit. They don't believe in God. They spit in the teachings. They spit in the fucking face of, of, of the teachings of the book they supposedly believe in. They fucking jump ship from religion to religion whenever it seems them because all they want is fucking power. And interestingly, we see what they do with power, which is that they fucking beat children. Fuck this guy. Fuck these people. I don't I don't know. You can't get much more of an indictment of the Christian nationalist viewpoint than this. I feel like this has been a sort of proof uh, uh, in it, like a, a, a just a, a perfect proof of exactly how stupid, deranged and intellectually bankrupt this position is. Have you ever used, um, have you ever tried going on LibGen there real quick? Striped Kidder. Uh, paywalled papers. Um, paywalled papers, you can get around that by using things like LibGen. There's a number of other websites that you can find that will allow you to access paywalled papers. Uh, uh, basically what they do is they are organizations that utilize, uh, usually they're in a country where these laws are, are allowed and they will buy the paper and then post it for public consumption. I highly recommend doing that. Because they, the, I, I assure you, the evidence is there. And it is unfortunate that there's paywalls because that shit is gross as fuck.
but I truly find this type of shit repugnant. I, and I want to be clear to all of my viewers, there are still uh, about 275 people here seven hours into this stream. Um, seven hours into this stream. And I, I want to say, um, this is the type of, this is my enemy, okay? Uh, uh, Christian nationalism is a worldview that I oppose with at all of the power that I can muster and that I will continue to oppose. These people make me sick. I think they are genuinely evil people. And I mean that. Um, like, as evil as evil can get. They are as close to... Um, they are as close to orcs as this world has ever produced. And I know that's kind of a funny joke and people are going to go, oh, don't dehumanize your enemies. I'm sorry. We just watched this guy gleefully reference him beating his kids. And, and by the way, this is shit I encountered all the time. In the cult that I grew up in, they wholeheartedly believed in beating your children. I just, I just, I can't even, like, that is just so comically evil. The idea that there are entire groups of adults who just get around and reinforce one another fucking beating their kids. Children. Literal fucking children. And they never think about it twice. If you try in these spaces, in the fucking cult that I grew up in, which was Christian nationalists, just like these fuckers, uh, they did the same thing. And if you even questioned that shit, they would call you gay for it. They would say, oh, you're fucking, you're fucking gay. What the fuck? You're going to let your kids just like, what are you too liberal and hippie to not beat your kids? It's like, no, some people recognize that, you, that they're your children. They're your fucking flesh and blood. You love them. You come up with a better and more intelligent way to communicate to them. If you want them to do something differently, you communicate with them as a fucking human. They're a human. They're your human that you, that you fucking helped create. I don't, I don't give quarter to child abuse. And it's ironic, too, that these guys are crawling around. Fucking Andrew Wilson, big papa fucking child beater, is crawling around on the internet calling other people degenerates, saying this, that, and the other thing. I've, I've heard him go off about the fucking groomer narrative, protect our kids bullshit. He is literally the person that kids need to be protected from. Quite literally. An abusive father is categorically one of the most, like, central uh, archetypes of person that children's ne children need to be protected from. What a fucking what a fucking load of horseshit. Just a just from top to bottom, a terrible human being. To admit to it on the internet too. Crazy. Crazy that you would go out on the internet where anybody can fucking see that. Future employers, current employers, law enforcement can see you fucking admitting on the internet that you beat your kids. That's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy, man. Just think about how arrogant in that position, how deeply convinced that beating children is good. You have to be, just think of where you have to be mentally to come to that conclusion. Again, evil. I think that is as close, like for me, that is about as, you know, you want to talk about various, uh, you know, ideas of justice. I think people like this uh, being, uh, being opposed, prevented, and disempowered in every way possible is, the, is, an, is my definition of, du of justice, or at least one part of my definition of justice. I think that people like this guy, people who are, are so confident in their child beating that they're willing to admit it on the internet, these people being stripped of every single possible path to power imaginable, every one of them, not a modicum of power. People like him should be the absolute bottom of, of any hierarchy that will ever exist. He should be the lowest of the low, a, 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 a worm among humans. That is my idea of justice.
It disgusts me on a deep level. Observette said, I just want to be correct and point out that he started the sentence with for example, not defending him. I think he's disgusting, but I want to make sure we didn't misunderstand what he's saying. Let's listen to it again. We'll do it one more time. One more time. Here we go. Literally are at my whim. In this particular case, I am the state, right? That's an enforcement. If I discipline one of my interpretation there, even if I was to be like the most charitable, I could be. Even if I was to be the most charitable, okay? E to your interpretation there. Right? That would be like saying that if I discipline one of my kids, it's living by the sword. That, he's saying that would, it would be absurd for you to consider it bad if I beat one of my kids. That is what he's saying. His argument here, in no uncertain terms, is, is even if I'm the most charitable to your position, you would be insane to say that I am wrong for beating my kids. This is us. We've listened to this three times. This is us being as charitable as possible to him. That is not it in any way, even, even. And there's no, there's no doubt about it. Like we're not talking about him. He's not talking about putting them in timeout. We're, we're not, we're talking about living by the sword, which is very specifically. And, and they've been talking about it for an hour is very specifically about physical violence. He is talking explicitly about using physical violence, and he's saying, if you told me that was wrong, you would be insane. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think I have, I, I don't think that, I think that, yeah, like, I think we're being completely charitable to his, to uh, what he says here. There's, I feel like it's almost unequivocal what he's admitting to and what he's saying here. He's saying that he thinks it's insane that anybody should tell him he shouldn't beat his kids. Anyway, I don't have anything else to say about this debate. If you thought this debate was interesting, it certainly got depressing very quickly. It got really upsetting very quickly. Um, but again, what can I say? That is so, it is so characteristic of Christian nationalism, Christian futurism, Christian populism, Christian dominionism, uh, Christian revivalism, what other, whatever other fucking, uh, you know, a uh, frou-frou name they want to come up for it. They got a hundred different names for the same shit. And it's this. This is what it looks like. It looks like coming up with excuses to persecute gay people, coming up with excuses, uh, not even coming up with excuses, just explicitly and gleefully endorsing beating your children. Uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, it's, uh, it looks like endorsing, violently enforcing your Christian morals on the rest of the world. That is Christian nationalism. That is what it will always be. And we will, and I, will fight against it for as, as long as I can, as hard as I can. Anyway, if you found this analysis interesting, make sure that you're subscribed to Demon Mama because I do this kind of stuff all the time and you know you want to see it.